I, I kind of have to show, uh, kind of talk about how this game really relates to me. It's very relatable to a lot of people, but um, from my my standpoint, um, I've come to understand this game from life experiences. Life experiences. Because as you grow older, you tend to understand Silent Hill 2 a little bit better. It's just uh, with age. Um, in fact, you you may have thought you may. I mean, like we were all young on the Silent Hill forums in the community back in the day. We were all, uh, you know, maybe some of us haven't really moved on much from where we were uh, 15 years ago. We're still stuck on the same thought process, and we haven't really th changed our viewpoint on this game at all. Uh, but uh, some people they have changed a lot. I could say I've changed a lot. Um, you know why I've changed so much? Well, we were talking yesterday about... What? Self. Self. Reflection. Self. Reflection. Self. Reflection. Self. Reflection. Reflection. Hello, Jet69. And Zombizzle. Yes, self-reflection is a big theme to this game. Why? Because, well, one changes uh, from reflecting on oneself and self-improvement. And general things like that. And, you know, you shape who you are in the end. Um, you know, you don't really quite... I mean, like, you're always growing. Till the day you die, you're, you're growing. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're getting older. You're, you're, um, but you're also changing. Your thoughts change. Your opinions change. It, people think it's so crazy and so weird that, you know, I have a... I have a completely different outlook on the game, even though in the real Silent Hill experience, you said. But in the Silent Hill rule, the Silent Hill experience, you said. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, well, people change their minds sometimes. <laughs> I, um, so, you know, yeah, it's self-reflection, you know, uh, and, and constantly improving oneself, you know, even if, if it's so much as, you know, uh, as changing your opinion on something, maybe your outlook on life. Uh, maybe you were so negative about everything before, but you're hanging around different people now. And because you're hanging around different people, maybe more positive ones like the Fungo TV community. You know, a place like this where everybody knows your name. And sometimes you just want to go, like, right, you know, C1X, sometimes you just want to go where everybody knows your name. I'm adding to the nebula. I'm adding to the <laughs> So yeah, um, you hang around different people? That's enough to really, honestly, you don't even have to self-reflect. Um, when you're hanging around other people, you're bouncing, you're, you're changing based on how the person is. Um, maybe some people can relate to me that they, they feel like weird and they're awkward and they can't fit in, right? You can't fit in, right? Um, and so you, you're just kind of watching others and you, you're trying to, you're trying to, uh, see, you know, what's acceptable. And you're like, uh, what's acceptable? You know, what is it, you know, how am I going to make friends? I don't know how to make friends without, you know, kind of imitating others. I want to, I want to kind of be accepted. I have to kind of, I don't know, be somebody that someone would like. Um, that some people can relate to that because I do, um, very much. That's how I was very early on my younger years. Um, I didn't really know who I was. It was really hard for me. Um, and you feel like you're not your own person because you got to be, you know, this person that, that, that people will like and you don't, and some people, they just don't care. They just don't care who likes them or not. It's all the same once you're dead. <laughs> kind of like Eddie, right? So yeah, uh, you can kind of see how this all relates to Silent Hill too. Um, there's different kind of ways we, we go about it. Um, you know, some people self-reflect, some people change. Um, this is self-reflection right here. Some people change uh, by, I don't know, like just being around others. They're not doing it on purpose. It's just, you know, being around others, you tend to act more like them. You know, people rub off on you. We are social creatures, and as social social creatures, we we tend to 
uh, we tend to adapt and, and to our society that we live in. And uh, of course, you know, we don't want to be an outcast. Um, not all of us. Some of us don't care. Some of us have gotten to the point where we just don't care now. But, you know, that's the thing. Uh, this game is, is about, like, self-reflection and one of the ways that you can improve yourself. It's also about denial and how people just want to deny death. Uh, it's also about, you know, this kind of maybe outdated model of the, the Kubler-Ross model of the five stages of grief. And the five stages of grief are denial, which is what this game is mainly about. Bargaining. Anger. Depression. And then, you know... You, Acceptance is the final stage, but this is an outdated model. I have been told many times. I understand it's outdated But this is a fictional story and they found some poetry and I guess they wanted to write a narrative around it It makes sense uh, They just wanted to write a narrative around this ma this masterpiece of a story couldn't have happened without it um, it's Honestly, it really goes along with it and you know Silent Hill is really about perspective as well and the fact that, you know, other people, they, you know, and that's kind of the funny thing about Silent Hill. And everyone has understood that for a long time that, you know, Silent Hill kind of shapes itself. Uh, uh, it personalizes, uh, it's kind of personalized for you. And, you know, it's your, your psyche kind of manifested onto the town. And, you know, everyone sees the town in a different way. Well, what if, you know, it's kind of a metaphoric and literal thing. Like I say, Silent Hill 2 is metaphoric and literal at the same time. Figurative. Metaphorical, literal, it's all the all of it because it, and it's the, it's the genius of Silent Hill too is that it can be all those things at once um, The game the town it's about perspective and everyone sees the world in a different way but what if the town manifested your psyche and Literally and it was more obvious and more blatant than that It was literally uh, Different to everyone that's in it, within it. Um, and yeah, I, I, so yeah, there, you kind of have to, uh, go through life, understand, you have to kind of experience different, different things. And you, as you get older, you start to understand this a little bit more, but not necessarily getting older. It's getting wiser. You have to get wiser because getting older, you just look like enigma old. And then you just, I mean, there's, you gotta be wise too. <laughs> Um, it's all about getting wiser. Uh, I came to understand this. I feel like I came to understand this game more when I, uh, when I, it was only recently, uh, about, I don't know how long it's been, about a year and a half. Um, yeah, a year and a half. I moved to this area, but right before that, I, I, for about a year, I was living, um, you know, in the shared living situation. <laughs> there you go. You know what I'm talking about. You get the reference. It was a shared living situation where I actually got the experience. I, I got to see with my own eyes. And it's it's honestly, until you see it with your own eyes, you, you have to see other perspectives. And when you see a perspective, uh, quite like the one I saw, where where people like deny things that are literally right in front of them, you know, they, they will live a life of ignorance, right? And living a life of illusion. <laughs> hey! I love that song, actually. It makes me want to sing it. I don't know why, but music always pops up in my head when I'm thinking. But anyway, I'm sure you know. I'm sure you know. <laughs> oh, voice clip in Discord. Thank you, Snow Orchid. Do you want me to play it now? So, yeah, some people, they choose to live a life of illusion. Well, you know what's really interesting is that in Silent Hill 2, it's literally a, a, an illusion. <laughs> but also... It's literally right in front of them. It's just like, you know, I could look at the same thing as you. I could look at the same thing as everyone. I could, I could look at the same thing. You know, okay, what? Do I have anything to look at? No, I don't have anything to look at. Okay. <laughs> what can I look at that's a common everyday thing? Oh, here we go. You know, this looks really cool, actually. You know? You look at this DualShock 4 controller and you think, it's garbage! Well, not everyone looks at it and thinks, it's garbage. Maybe someone will see it and think, oh, fun video games. Or they'll think of a specific video game. 
the first thing they see when they look at this controller is Until Dawn. Oh, I loved Until Dawn. Oh, man, I had great times with Until Dawn. Oh, oh Joshua, right? He was really scary. And the, <laughs> he was so funny, too. <laughs> Wait. How did I think of Until Dawn? I'm looking at a DualShock 4. And that's the first thing I think of. Well, it's a different perspective because everyone's going to see something different, right? And then, you know, I'll take the DualShock 4 away and now we're talking about Until Dawn and how, how awesome it was. It was a nice little homage to horror, wasn't it? It was a QTE, kind of heavy rain. It was kind of like, you know, David Cage if he made good games. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, it was... Now we're talking about Until Dawn and we forgot all about this. Which kind of inspired the whole conversation, right? Important, because... That's perspective, right? Because someone may look at this DualShock 4 and be like, I wish it was an Xbox controller. <laughs> or maybe they'll be like, no, it is an Xbox controller. And people will be like, no, that's a DualShock 4. And I'll be like, no, it's an Xbox controller. It is if I want it to be. <laughs> See, that's kind of denial. Everyone kind of sees the world in a different way, right? And, you know, uh, you may look at a red truck driving down the road going <laughs> This reminds me of a truck I once had. Funny, isn't it? What was I gonna say about the red truck? <laughs> this truck is It's red! This truck is red! <laughs> okay, I'm crazy. So it's kind of like Liar Liar, too. You gotta, that's a nice little reference, homage to you. If you like it, then you like it. Hi, Kira, how are you doing? <laughs> well, look at that, The Lost of Evil Creator. Um, um, one, of the, one of the games that I, I feel um, kind of was a lot more creative than most Silent Hill games. Um, uh, Silent Hill inspired games, I would say. Um, and those Silent Hill inspired games kind of like uh, Most of the time they're just trying too hard to, to be Silent Hill And I think the reason why there's a lot of uh, inspired games from Silent Hill is because well Silent Hill Invigorates your creativity and imagination It, it really kind of does that and uh, it inspires and when you play Silent Hill You know you, you can interpret it any number of ways, right? Yeah, this pen is <laughs> Well, that is a good actually I wanted to make that reference so that it worked out because well You know liar liar. He lies about everything But some people think it's there. It's something that's red like this and just be like it's blue No, it's blue because I like it. I like to imagine it's blue. Okay, let me just let me just imagine it's blue I I'm happier that way you know this game we're good. We're gonna get into a part of the game today, which is kind of like about that Like the whole Brookhaven Hospital part of Silent Hill 2 talks about how you know Why why must we track him into our painful reality? If he's happy living in his own reality It's really Im important to understand that why why must we tell him the truth and have him accept it? Because there's no getting better until you accept the truth. That's why, even though it's painful, right? James killed his wife. Spoilers, everyone! Yeah, you can enjoy the game now. Decal, welcome, and Cthulhu Chan and Masta, hello. Um. I hope everyone's doing well today. I'm trying to get on the thought process I need to be on because You know uh, Until until you accept the truth, you know, James killed his wife and He has to accept that he's doing all this self-reflecting, right? But he's not really He's not really recalling the true memories. He's not accepting the truth about the past and he's self-reflecting, but he's not really thinking about the right things. And uh, he killed his wife, 
And although it may be painful to accept the fact that he did something so heartless, painful to accept, you know, your life has been miserable for the last three years while she was sick. It's painful having to think about all those terrible memories of ups and downs, roller coaster, you know, maybe it's going to get better. She looks like she's getting better. And then, you know, the next day, it's just back down to like all hope is lost again. And then, you know, maybe going to another doctor who is like, oh, I think we might have something that could treat her. And then, and then you know, the, the treatment not working out. And then, you know, uh, all the drugs and pills and drugs and pills. Drugs and pills and drugs and pills. And nothing seems to be doing any good. And it's always the same pain and suffering and emotional mood swings. And it's, it's really a selfish story in the end that James, James just wanted the suffering to end. He hated Mary and what she became when she got sick and he just wanted the pain to end. It was about his pain and it was about his emotional pain over her pain and suffering. It's selfish. Um, and that's the truth and he can't accept it. And in one ending he does, but the rest of the ending he endings he doesn't. There's only one out of like six endings or five. I don't remember. There's one, two, three, four, five. One out of five endings where he actually says outright and blatant blunt that he hated her and what she became when she got sick and he just, he wanted his life back. He hated her. And that's the truth. Though it's hard to accept it. And uh, that's kind of the hard part. That's that's what's really hard about this this game is that, well, it does help to have someone. Hey, Tui. Hey, uh, Kapup. Papa Dapa, Kapapa Dapa, Cow Papa Dapa. That's a really cool name. Yeah, because the breakdown of his psyche, everything kind of he spiraled, spiraled downhill, right? Um, because you know he he was in denial about her death, even while she was dying, and uh, while she was dying in denial, she died because he killed her. Denial, denied the you know him killing her, denied she even died, uh, denied she even got sick. She's denying everything. Like, legit denying every aspect of the truth. And as you pro progress through the Silent Hill 2, um, he starts to come to light. He starts to question things. He starts to... He stops denying little aspects of, of the truth. And and then, you know what happens? Is It, uh, it kind of snowballs. It's a snowball effect. What is Maria? Uh, she's basically that, like, that... You know, that temptation, that little voice in your head, that kind of is, is kind of a, a promise of, of, of happiness. You know, it's like, yeah, you know you want to. <laughs> you know the one that goes, Look behind you. <laughs> but then you're like, I don't want to. Um, She's basically that little voice in this head that's promising, you know, kind of, uh, uh, what is it? Complete, uh... Uh, I'm thinking of that word. Yeah, Jet69, hey. Uh, I've been on a, like, thought process that I'm, tr I'm trying to, uh... Just trying to analyze where we want to start, but, you know, um, I already did. We talked about, uh, self-reflection and, uh, how important it is. And how important that, uh, Silent Hill is, um, a manifestation of James's... Uh, psyche you're seeing an unreliable narrator's perspective. You're seeing his View of, of events, so we don't know if what we're seeing is exactly, you know true or not. We don't know what I Mean we're just seeing it through his lens his eyes and uh, that's the important thing to understand Is that it's James's perspective and that Silent Hill 2 is about perspective and being informed of other perspectives to and to better to better um, understand your own To better understand your own Mind you have to see how other people go about similar situations. It helps, right? By the way, I do want to mention um, because we're gonna get into some personal crap today I'm gonna talk about a lot of really depressing themes today But it's not until tomorrow that I'm gonna talk about the really heavy shit that I don't you know that the stuff that really wears me down Hey Drift King Yes, that's right. 
Kapapa Dapa. I really like you saying that. Yeah, born from a wish is James projecting his wish for Mary to be alive. And uh, and it's just furthering his denial um, and kind of offering him a replacement. It's like a rebound, but like a rebound with a, uh, you know, is Maria real or not? I don't know. I would say a rebound with like an imaginary friend. <laughs> oh. Hey, if it makes you feel better, James, she is real. I mean, if she, if, you know, he wants her to be. <laughs> That's the important. By the way, the dialogue is very smart and very intentional. So when she says, I am real, if you want me to be, well, that kind of suggests to me that she's not. <laughs> that James just wishes for her to be real. Um, and that you got to keep that in mind when we start this scenario. Born from a wish uh, starts off with a person that, I don't know, uh, where this person came from. But born from a wish is saying a lot. Uh, Self-reflecting, right? She's even doing it. Maria, her, you know, she's not even a real person. She's self-reflecting. Why? Because, well, it takes self-reflection to get to know yourself sometimes. She doesn't yet know herself, so she self-reflects. When I woke up, I was all alone. Everyone's gone. Is it because of those monsters? What do I do now? Do I fight and live? Or do those monsters get me? I don't have any reason to go on living. But I'm so afraid of pain. But I'm scared to die. I'm so afraid of pain. Should I run away? These are all very different things that you can do. <laughs> I don't like being alone. But But is there anyone left alive? Boy, are these some deep burning questions, aren't they? <laughs> she has like every question in the book. She doesn't know what the hell she's doing. <laughs> Why? Well, she was. She just woke up. When I woke up, I was all alone. And right now, you know, she starts off self-reflecting because she doesn't know herself. And what's uh, what I kind of have a problem with? This music's good, though. I'm gonna keep it on. Uh, welcome, Antithes. I don't have a problem with you guys getting here. No, Creepa, 1989. Dexter, Antithes. I think Maria. Why am I talking to myself? Well, because you know they have to tell a story, and this wasn't as well written as the rest of the game, but it's actually pretty smart. It is pretty smart. Yeah, they do throw, they kind of throw, they throw a little, uh, what is it? I don't know. A curveball. When they, uh, they have a poster of Lady Maria at Heaven's Night. And you look at the poster and you see a very different looking person with long black hair. Well, we, we don't really, she doesn't look like that person, the Lady Maria in the poster in Silent Hill 3. Uh, that's just the curveball to make you kind of question. You know, maybe she is a real person. She's just being transformed. That's a good theory. I think that's a good theory too. I mean, for all you know, she is a real person, but um, because of James's will to replace Mary, she is changing. Um, and like I said, this is James's perspective, right? And maybe he sees her looking like his wife, but she may, in, in fact, look nothing like his wife. Hi, Machine Kit. Hi, Thomas. 3286. Uh, who else did I miss? Oh my god, I missed so many. Um, little Poober, I did say hi. Uh, the room looks pretty dusty and dingy. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I started getting more energy when I started talking about this game, which I'm so passionate about. It gets my energy up. Yeah, I don't know, Dexter. But you know what I do know, Dexter? About, you know, her revolver having like 10 bullets or capacity? 
she only has one in the revolver and uh there's only one reason you would have one bullet and a one gun <laughs> it's to kill yourself um so that's kind of interesting Wark X, hello welcome no i do have one problem with born from a wish uh is that i don't think the director was there sato was the director for the most part uh i really don't think the voice direction was very good um i really don't think a lot of the message was conveyed properly um that's why it kind of seems stunted uh you know she acts so much better like her her acting is so much better in the in the base game but it's because of her poor delivery it do, it doesn't really come out quite right um I, yes i feel like she does have really poor delivery of her lines you know they had to get her back sometime after uh to do this scenario yeah she's uh soaked in bleach <laughs> she was just a big kurt cobain, cobain fan um i think that uh upon the rival james signed the cookies agreement <laughs> Yes, that's right, Master. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, I can unpause him now. Sam! Nine months subscribe. Take a look at that, everyone. Thank you, Sam. Nine whole months. I appreciate your support. I do. But, yeah, uh, this is a really, really, really good. Very, very good supplement to the main game. I think it's amazing because it corroborates everything I've been saying, for one. Uh, it, it's also, like I say about Silent Hill, it's about perspective. Well, this is kind of, you're being informed of different perspectives. Hi, hi Midnight Snow. Thank you for the host. I like this song, yes. Um, it kind of, yeah, it just definitely... It, it definitely goes along with everything. Um, and like I was saying yesterday, and I'm going to say it now because Mast is here to listen. Um, this game is based on, I really do think it's based on the five, uh, you know, the, the five stages of grief, uh, which is a Kubler-Ross theory. And like I say, theory, it's a theory that has been disproven as it's not accurate and it's outdated. But I bet you a million bucks a lot of uh, places still use it, even though it's uh, been disproven. Um, but this is a fictional story and they kind of saw that as a good catalyst for I guess uh, you know a psychological horror you know the five stages of grief seems you know the whole cycle of the five stages it's kind of a spiral it's kind of circles you go around in circles uh, they kind of saw that as a good way to weave a poetic story um, and it is poetic. Yes, I'm playing the latest update, which came out yesterday. Uh, midstream. So, this is actually really good looking. For the PC, it's really high definition. Like, the lighting engine has been improved. The shadows are improved. Um, Maria doesn't have any commentary on anything. That's too, that's something too. And uh, when I say this is based on like denial, the five the five uh, stages of grief, it's more so based on the first stage, which is denial. That first stage, a lot of people get hung up on it. Um, more people find comfort in just denying the truth, but you don't get better. That's the problem, and that's kind of what this game's about: overcoming denial so that you can go through the other stages and heal. Oh, don't mind me going at that theory from time to time. Uh, I feel like I've come up uh, come up too hard at it. It's more about me pointing out it's outdated rather than trying to invalidate. Oh, yeah, you see it now, Master. It's an interesting concept to base a work of fiction. Um, and they, you know, I bet you in Japan, I mean, do they even have psychologists in Japan? Like... <laughs> I mean, I thought that they just had the suicide forest. I mean, that's where you went for a... Uh... Okay, that's a little dark. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't even know if they have psycho... And I bet you a million bucks that they, they're a little behind when it comes to psychology there. 
And they're probably still kind of practicing outdated uh, thought processes. Um. I love this uh, scenery. Look at the glow from the lights, the neon lights. Flashing lights. Flashing lights, light. Oh, maybe I can get that secret pole dance. Secret, secret pole dance. Oh, come on, that's pathetic. Maria, come on, is this, is this really... Is this your pole dance, Maria? <laughs> oh, she doesn't even try. Oh, oh yeah, you're putting an effort in it now, Maria. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Maria, come on, like, why even... At this point... <laughs> All right, that wasn't really worth it. You know, 20 years of rumors just for that. <laughs> um, Wark and uh, King Cthulhu and uh, we already looky looky at that, that Maria, but we might do it again today. But, you know, I'm looking at it right now. You know, you can look at it. You just don't. We don't have to talk about it. You don't necessarily. You can look all you want. I'm not going to judge, you know. It's really dark in here though, so <laughs> not a good place to look at it. Let's go outside and look at the fog, huh? I like this music though. I want to stay in here. Oh, a kiss. They must really like kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. And something, something. <laughs> I know the lyrics. She mistook pole dance for line dance. Uh, I'm gonna go outside now. So, yeah. Um, compare this to the HD collection right now. If we could put a side by side. You know, I'm gonna do that one stream, guys. Uh, if you haven't followed, do follow. There's, there's a lot of potential. Uh, a lot of great stuff coming in the future. I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side HD collection playthrough with this. <laughs> it's gonna be really funny. Um, whoa! Whoa! Gonna, gonna reward tea. You had to just come watch, <laughs> and you brought your friends. Well, thank you, Connor. Look at the fog. It's not so blue to lie so heavy on my mind. It does look like more serious. <laughs> Trying to do it backward. Thank you, Connor. I uh, appreciate the shout out and uh, science and technology. And wow, you know what we're doing? What category we're doing today? We're doing science and psychology. This is psychological horror. I mean, like, seriously, look at this fog. Uh, this update just came out today. Uh, or yesterday, my bad. Today for some. <laughs> Look guys, they finally fixed it. They fixed it. I knew they had it in them. <laughs> Hi, Dante. Making food. I eat food. <laughs> I'll lurk for a while. Oh, hey, Joy. I'm sorry I didn't greet you earlier if I didn't. You're going to lurk? Okay. I know. I read your messages. I just didn't say hi, I don't think. I've been, like, in a lot of thought. Um, and, you know, it, it, it takes thinking. Uh, you know, self-reflection is kind of a big theme here because, well, um, really, to get better, you do have to kind of... You know, think back. 
you know so history don't repeat itself right you're like you know you've been burned by someone and you'd be like you'd be like i'll never collaborate with that person again <laughs> Um, or something like that, you know, you have to learn from your mistakes or you for forever spiral down You go around and it's like purgatory you go around in circles, you know downpour didn't understand that purgatory You just go around around in, in circles and you never get better There's nothing for me to do here She started off looking in the mirror, right? Little pooper just like James in the beginning of the game and just like Angela they're self-reflecting, but you know who doesn't self-reflect in the game? And it really shows? Eddie! But also, Laura. And Laura doesn't need to self-reflect because, well, she's young. Um, she, she doesn't have anything yet. She's still trying to... She's still trying to figure herself out. She's still learning. She's in an influ influential stage of her life. Um, and she's still becoming... She's ad uh, adapting her personality. Um, let's see. She doesn't have to self-reflect. Interesting. Yes, Angela's self-reflecting in the mirror. Uh, what she's doing is she's kind of contemplating. She, she just reached a dead end. She went to the one place she knew, uh, or the last place she kind of knew to look for her parents, and she found nothing. Where at least I, that's how I saw it. Um... And then she was just kind of like, uh, do I kill myself now or do I do it later? <laughs> do I have anywhere else left to look? Let's see. Hey, Mullenheart. Look at this construction. I like the netting. That's really cool. You know, Maria can actually crawl in here. Right? Oh, I gotta send Huey. <laughs> Huey! Go get the shiny. Huey, go get the shiny thing. That's a reference some of you may know. Um. Private. This this isn't the broken version, no, Mollenheart. Oh, by the way, uh, um, I did want to, uh, I did want to say earlier, I don't know why it took so long. <laughs> um, this kind of shows you the goal at the top left shows you, um, I do want to make this clear. It shows you how many subs we need. You could consider it subs or sub points, but subs we need to reach the emote unlock. The next one, it's at 800. Um, so you kind of see real time what our sub count is. Uh, right above us, I had to improvise something. It broke. And freaking Streamlabs lately. I, I lost sleep because of them. I'm I'm done with Streamlabs if I can find something else. But I lost sleep over this. I had to improvise something. I wanted to kind of show off how many times we hit the wheel. So level one, we haven't hit the wheel yet. We only got three subs. It shows three subs on the goal. Every every 16 subs, we, we do a wheel. Um, and it tells you how many times we've done a wheel with the level there. It says level one. And I don't remember adjusting it, but it's not cut off anymore. I'll take it. You have hot dogs! Yeah! This fog looks really good. Um, and, you know, I do say in the metaphoric sense, um, but also in a literal sense, which is Silent Hill 2 in essence. Silent Hill 2 is all metaphoric, figurative, literal, it's all of it. Um, it's like poetry, it rhymes, right? Um, I, I feel like the fog is a representation of the fog of their own minds. They're in denial, so of course they're clouded, they're fog. Uh, they got a fog in their minds. Um, so it kind of is, Silent Hill is a physical manifestation of uh, one's inner psyche. Um, so yeah, like your insecurities, your doubts, your, 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, your whatever you're denying, uh, uh, I don't know your desires. Everything's gonna be manifested onto the town um, because it, it it's kind of going along with Silent Hill One, right? Silent Hill One was Alessa's manifestation of her psyche because she was a psychic little girl, 
and Silent Hill was basically um, being controlled by her psyche and her inner emotions. Well, Silent Hill 2 decided to take it one step further. And they wanted to make it so that, you know, uh, the, the spiritual power of the town uh, now can be influenced by others. Oh my god, a mannequin! Oh, did I ever pick up the ammo? When did I first start streaming on Twitch? Um, It's, it's gonna be one year. Well, I mean, I've done Twitch before, but Animate Zach, it's gonna be one year since I came to Twitch regularly on the 23rd. So, we're gonna celebrate my one year anniversary then, I think. Or, or we could wait until the first when I got affiliate. Took me a week to get affiliate. Hello, PM, uh, PMP, CeeLo. What the hell? This thing's on me. Get off me! Hold on. Get off me! I don't like mannequins. I'll teach you to- Oh. Next one. Oh, weirdo. <laughs> Welcome and thank you. Angela, would she see smoke? You know, that's interesting, Kira. Uh, that's a really good interpretation. Uh, you know what? Maybe she does see smoke. We don't know what she sees, though. That's kind of the thing. Uh, you know, she's kind of suffering, right? Uh, Eddie's suffering. James is suffering. They're all going through similar things. But it's a personal journey in the end. Uh, what they're going through, well, only they know what they're going through. And sometimes you just can't put it in the words. And we'll never know. That's why I thought a, uh, you know, a side story of Silent Hill 2 with Angela as the main character would be fantastic. Hello, Katie MX. Welcome to the stream in chat. Um, I think that would be awesome if they did that, but it's too late now. I wouldn't want it now without Team Silent. Look at the guts, dude. Um, by the way, uh, you know, I do say all the time and I, I want to, I kind of do have to reiterate a lot of things at the beginning of a new lore run every stream. So I'm going to reiterate this. Um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of detail. Why? Because they're trying to overwhelm your senses. They want to overwhelm your subconscious. They're basically, Silent Hill is trying to get through to your subconscious the whole time. It's trying to make you feel, I don't know, alone, but not, uh, you know, like someone's aware of your presence. Uh, like it's, it's trying to make you feel uncomfortable, um, that you're not welcome. It, it's constantly doing that through stuff like this. A stop sign that is illogical and Silent Hill is illogical it just is because well you know the subconscious and psychology you know we still have yet to understand the human brain we don't know the human brain is a mystery it's it it's still being understood and why is there a stop sign here it doesn't make sense because you get to the intersection right especially with this fog well there's a stop sign right here why do we need that stop sign over there? There's a stop sign. You stop here, right? Are you supposed to stop again at the intersection? <laughs> stop in the middle of the intersection here? It's supposed to be facing this way, right? Why isn't it facing this way? Because traffic can't go through. The sign got bent. Silent Hill, if, it's, if you're asking why and you're asking a lot of questions, well, Silent Hill is getting through to you and it's, it's doing what it intends to do, I think. It's trying to get you to question these odd little details. And sometimes you won't even notice them, but you'll feel weird. It'll feel uncomfortable and you don't know why. Hey, little T-Pose. Uh, by the way, just like at the beginning of Silent Hill 2's main game, um, there's like blood that, you, you know, you, you follow a trail of guts, actually. This is more like guts. But you kind of follow this gut trail. You got to follow your guts, guys. Oh, no. Ow. Well, thank you. You got me out of that. Um, and then, you know, you eventually lead to where you need to be going. Because you... Honestly, this is really interesting that they start the game out this way. They start the game off with uh, Maria self-reflecting and not quite knowing what to do with her life. She asks every question in the book. She's like, do I run? Do I fight? Do I kill myself? What do I do? You know, she doesn't know anything. And then they, you, you're kind of tossed out into the fog. Because they're mentally fogged. You're tossed out into the fog and uh, not given any direction on where to go. Tis, tis life. Tis life. 
You got to figure out your own meaning in life, right? What is the meaning of life? You got to figure it out for yourself because everyone has a different answer. Oh, look at this. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, there's some really good detail in this, uh, in this, uh, HD enhanced edition. By the way, um, I need to make a command for it by tomorrow and I will. Um, but the enhanced edition of Silent Hill 2, uh, there, Keta Hajime has a link, I think. Hey, thanks for the clip. I didn't know you made it. Um, it's based on the PC port of the game, but the PC port was, uh, developed. It was rushed. I mean, like, rushed? I mean, th this is Konami. I mean, like, a, a bad port? Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, HD collection was, too, it took two years to make that piece of crap. And, uh, still the PC port of Silent Hill 2 was far better. It took like, I don't know, I think it was eight months they said. I'm not really sure. Eight months to make this. Um, but the enhanced edition is a mod project by... By some really passionate fans, but mostly, uh... You know, mostly a handful. Um, some... Some really passionate fans got together and they, they pulled together mod... Modders and people that are really, really good, uh, at code to figure out how to fix a lot of these issues in this engine that is a, a mysterious phenomenon. Because just as, you know, just as mysterious as this game may be, well, the engine too is a mystery. Oh, by the way, I do want to stop and greet people. There was a lot of people I didn't say hi to. Um, do pop up if I missed you. I, I can, I can, I want to say hi. So, uh, worst in, worst English, hi. Yeah, Silent Hill 2 does have a main character, worst English. Uh, we're, we're playing as the side character. It's a side story. Uh, she is a manifestation, uh, born from a wish. Maria is... I mean, like, you know, Silent Hill 2 is still interpretive, right? You can interpret a lot of things any different number of ways. Hi, Scott198412. Welcome. Thank you for the follow. And James Mayo. How's it going? Yeah, it's it's interpretive, and that's kind of the fun of it. You know, kind of coming up with your own meanings to this game and what, what it all means is the fun of it. That's the that's the game within a game. <laughs> it's like poetry, it rhymes. And it's kind of fun. Um, you know what's the what people you know, people used to read poetry. <laughs> I don't know if they do anymore. But poetry and the fun of poetry was kind of figuring out what the, what the, you know, what it meant. The interpretations of song lyrics kind of replace that. Song lyrics um, are like poetry sometimes. Well, that's Silent Hill too. It's like poetry and it's fun to interpret what, what the creators meant by everything. And there is, um, you know, parallels. So you just look for, oh, hi, Tui. I'm sorry, I didn't say hi to you. I missed you, I think. How are you doing, Tui? Yeah, it's like, um... I don't know who William Blake is. Just waking up? Me too! It took me a long time to get any energy. Um, and I don't- I'm- I'm so burnt out from yesterday. And all the issues! <laughs> yeah, Streamlabs, uh, just has not been cooperating lately. Tiger, tiger? <laughs> With a Y? Wow. What does this mean? Maria's butt? I know. Sexual frustration. <laughs> I mean, that's what the wiki would tell you, right? Mog Mokubo. Moku Mokubo. Cool name. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. I'm getting a lot of follows today. Thanks, everyone, for the follows. Misfit. Kapapadapa. Connor rated too. Uh, Thomas, Ash, Nickel, oh my god, more follows in this beginning of the stream in a long, you know, than in an, I got, more than I got in an entire stream. Uh, Christy Darkness, hi. Tiger in space. That's a good prayer. Tiger in space. Please, something. <laughs> So, we're in the Haunted Mansion. Haunted... Mansion. 
Um, so it's kind of like a, it's like the poorly hunted mansion. I think the poorly hunted mansion was kind of a callback to this. Um, kind of interesting. But here's another thing too. Maria has the same save squares with, uh, with an image of her kind of similar to James. Look at this. Uh, for all intents and purposes, well, it's similar because, you know, the save squares represent self-reflection, just like I keep talking about. Um, and what are they doing? They're reflecting back to themselves, right? Um, you basically access your memories. <laughs> um, you're creating memories and accessing them. But if you really, really don't like a memory, you can deny it and hit backspace like this and delete it. And then, you know, you don't have to. You can feel better. You don't have to feel bad anymore that you made that save. Goodbye. Denial. <laughs> I never did it. There's no evidence of that. You can't, you can't pin it on me. <laughs> mm. Let's see. Hi, Jet. Um, I did say hi earlier. Um, hey, Snork, kid. You're supposed to be the big man around here. <laughs> well, hey, Fungo. Hope the lore stream is going well today. Pretty good, Ornate Sphere. Pretty good. Insane Nix, hello. Um. But who is phone? <laughs> There's, I've got no reason to use the phone. A display of decorative plates. Not terribly interesting. But who was phone? <laughs> That's that, that would be so relevant to all the Silent Hill games. Because people call and it's just like, Daddy, <laughs> where are you? Help me. And then Harry stares at his phone and he goes, But who was phone? <laughs> um, it's, it's a painting of flowers. There's nothing inside too bad. It's a model of the earth. I've got no use for that. Ah, uh, no, that's kind of up for you to decide, Dante. Um, it does say, I think it maybe does say, I don't know if it does or not, but I think it maybe does say, um, um, it does suggest that, um, that Leonard, even though it's like, I'm not Leonard, you know, I'm not your beloved Stanley either. Well, it does suggest he has a uh, multiple personality disorder or schizophrenia. That's what it says. Uh, I don't know. One of those two. And he could be like in one of a, another personalities. I don't really know. It's up for you to decide. Neil Fitz. I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, Streamlabs could have been better today. <laughs> That's my streaming app. This is the first time I've seen the Enhanced Edition in action. Keep doing what you're doing for the franchise. Thank you, Neil. It's really nice of you to say. Uh, a way to say hide the Resident Evil. Funny. This is kind of like Walter in the do not... Uh, what does it say? Do not go out. Don't go out. The fireplace is boarded off. Do not use is written on it. Yes, I really do feel like the Born from a Wish, although it doesn't add anything. It's a nice compliment. I think it's a very nice compliment to the narrative. Because you're being informed by different perspectives. Even more pers perspectives, right? Because you do not, actually, you do not. This is interesting, right? The rebirth ending is an ending. It's a thing. But you don't really have a perspective to go off of, of someone that, that kind of believes in that. Um, well, they added that. I mean, you got someone who's kind of like the leave ending, right? Someone, no, someone that's kind of like the in water ending, right? Um, who suggests suicide, Angela, right? Over and over again. Angela is that, that suicide in, ending. Um, and he has that perspective to, in, to inform his, his own. Um, you know, Eddie's kind of like the, you know, go crazy and kill everyone. If you can't, you know, if you can't change, you know, you know, kill him. 
basically that's his mentality what ending is that well james doesn't really ever think that ending or eddie is right <laughs> he says at the end that eddie have you gone crazy he he's not going to be informed by eddie's perspective because he thinks he's crazy he's not going to do anything close to what eddie's doing um yeah just kill more people that's going to solve the problem jet 69 hey thank you so the other perspectives are, well, um, I guess you kind of have a, a small perspective from Laura. Um, that's kind of, kind of uh, gives you an idea for the leave ending, right? Because Mary talks about adopting her. Mary talks about, you know, raising her and having a normal life, I guess. So that that is kind of uh, a perspective that infers, that kind of helps them towards the leave ending. So you got the in water and leave endings. And, and people to go off of to kind of, you know, decide which ending to go up to, to get. Well, you still got the Rebirth Dog and UFO ending. You got the Maria ending. Well, the Maria ending is kind of James's own perspective. Um, That's if he decides to not go off of anyone else's perspective. And just his, his own and go just go blindly off his own desires. He's like, oh, I think I like this ending because, well, I get to replace Mary. With someone hotter. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and she better not get sick, though. Better do something about that cough, bruh. <laughs> I, I don't think Laura and James would have a normal life together, though. No, well, no, I think she's got... Ayasura, uh, I think Laura can get over, like, the grief of Mary, the loss of Mary. Um, and, and can actually, you know, children are more forgiving, believe it or not. I think that, like, James can be forgiven. I think Laura would probably forgive him pretty quickly. She understands, you know. Uh, I mean, children, I feel like, are easier to talk to. And easier to relate. You know, children, they're not judgmental at all. Because they're still kind of adapting their own personality and their own judgment. Um, so I feel like, you know, Laura would be more likely to forgive James um, than anyone else. Yeah, that's right, Sam. All the endings are canon because, well, the game is helping you figure out what you think the ending should be. You're being informed of all the different perspectives, and they're like, okay, you have all the information you need. You decide what ending is is the correct one. And they're they're kind of not actually giving you that decision. No, they're, they're kind of judging your gameplay, and um, they're analyzing, psychoanalyzing you. So, you know, they're kind of influencing your psyche, but also analyzing you. And, uh, um, kind of, like, not like Shattered Memories, no. Shattered me not blunt, and that's not, like, the only gameplay mechanic. <laughs> shattered Memories is... No. It tried to be Silent Hill 2, what, what it was doing in the background. What it was doing, and it wasn't proud, to, it, did, it wasn't like, oh, guess what we do, we're so smart. <laughs> no, they were just like... Oh yeah, by the way, you your ending is influenced by and uh you know these variables. Say hi to Ernest Baldwin. Adore. Yeah, that's right. Open up. Hello. Stop it. You're disturbing me. That's disturbing. Thank God. I finally found somebody. Can you open the door? No. But why? <sighs> Is it really necessary for me to answer all your tedious questions? Yes. Oh. I didn't know that. I want to be alone. Other people just irritate me. I just want to see another human face. Oh, I didn't know that. Do you know what's happening in this town? There's no one here. Just monsters. Yes, I know. So what? 
It has nothing to do with me. Um, no one here means there's no one to disturb me. Dante Tui? No. You want to be alone in this insane asylum? Yes, exactly. But how can you say that it's this town that's insane? Perhaps it's we who are insane. Important! Both of us. Hopelessly insane. It's important to kind of have someone to bounce your ideas, ideas off of, right? Would you leave me alone? My name... is... Maria. What's your name? Ernest. Baldwin. Oh, I missed that. Sorry, it muted. Ernest. I'll be back. Barador! Spider! L -l 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 -l. Um, sorry. <laughs> Ryukano! There's so many people here. Um, so, what's important is that, well, you know, like I say about my lore runs, is that I really enjoy these because I get to bounce my ideas off of you. Um, and I, I, I feel like I understand the game a lot more that way. Um, but here's the thing. You know, while Silent Hill 2 is about perspective, right? Um, that, that's kind of what they're doing there. Uh, they're bound, he's bouncing ideas off of her. He's suggesting to the player, um, perhaps, I bet you never thought of this, maybe we're all crazy. All of us. <laughs> You know, maybe it's not the town that's crazy. Well, here's the thing about that, too, and it kind of goes along with my belief. Uh, well, Silent Hill is a manifestation of your psyche. So, I guess if you're crazy, the town's gonna be crazy, too. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> a laugh track appropriate? appropriate? I don't know. <laughs> so, that's kind of interesting. So, yeah, Ernest Baldwin, or Hemingway, I, I muted that, sorry. <laughs> uh, Ernest is, um... Uh, that extra perspective. Uh, the one that was missing in the main game, in the base game, it compliments. Because he's the one that believes that he can make everything better by, uh, you know, Pet cemetery kind of style, you know, bringing back the dead. Uh, you know? Because, and it also brings the cult back into the, into focus, because the cult is, is kind of missing in this one. But the cold is not important. No, not at all. Uh, um, now that I think of it, you know, I said the cult without without the cult, there's no Silent Hill. I don't think that's true anymore. It's not, it's, the cult is not important. But the cult does have some influence, yeah. But it's, it's already done. Like, the cult already, you know, already did their meddling. Um, and, uh, already tainted the town and already, you know, kind of warped the spiritual power of the town and made it so that people, this can happen. Uh, so I don't understand why there has to be a cult. And I know I said that in the real Silent Hill experience, but there doesn't have to be a cult. Um, but here's the problem. Well, even though Downpour really had something against the cults, right? You know, Devin, I don't really like the cults, um, you know... If you really ask me, uh, Silent Hill 2 is the best of the series because it doesn't have anything to do with the cult. Uh, it's... Hey, Ryukino, thank you! <laughs> it's... Well, Downpour has a fund fundamental misunderstanding of psychology. Downpour is stupid. I guess you could call it that. It's stupid. <laughs> right? Alright, let me get the channel points up. I don't even have that up. <laughs> thank you, Ryukino. We'll put two uh, towards the wheel. If you guys want to support, I really appreciate any sub support. Um, I kind of changed the goal up. I'd like to see if it works. Uh, we could teach something the wheel. I don't mind when. If you if you want to do it now, I'm going to do the wheel. Right. I'm going to do the wheel after this scenario anyway. So if we do hit the goal, it's we're not going to run. We're not going to jump away from this lore run. We're going to come back to it. Um. 
You can see how, how taxing these lore runs on me, though, so I would appreciate the support, <laughs> you know, for all my efforts. I did make a lot of changes to the game, uh, uh, to the Streamlabs. I stayed up till 6 a.m. Um, even though I ended my stream, like, what? At 10 or 11 p.m.? So, yeah, I was up late. Well, thank you, Connor. Well, at least uh, knowing that you in really enjoy uh, you really enjoy the stream really helps too. Guess a follow too, just to let me know that you you might might come back. I do appreciate everyone kind of like you know bouncing. I'm bouncing ideas off of and kind of giving me something to read and go off of. I'm gonna go back up and read some messages I missed. Uh, I'm adding two to the wheel, but it's kind of different, so give me a second. All right, there we go. Should be good, right? I hate this widget, though. I I I, I want to get rid of it because it caught it, it 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 made me lose sleep really bad. All right. Uh, it should play a really loud sound when we hit the goal. <laughs> uh, you thank you, Dante. Uh, you could also uh redeem channel reward points. There's there's rewards that you can redeem. Whoa, look at the darkness. Look at the lighting engine. They fixed it in the update. This looks like fantastic. And look how eerie that is. In fact, it's really easy to just bump right into it and not even realize it's there. Oh crap! That's what it's like. I like the eerie silence too. Like there's no radio. So the radio, the lack of radio does add a, like a whole new layer of, of horror. It's just so quiet. And I think that's why that's so effective because we're used to the radio. We're used to the flashlight. And then we, we walk out into this hallway. There's a monster here we weren't even aware of. I'm gonna go back up now. They might have corrupted it. That's what I think. Um, I think uh, Alessa found a way to harness the power, the spiritual power of the town, and the cult took advantage of that and might have corrupted it. Corruption. That's a good theme. Um, and uh, they, you know, that way they, it's it's a catalyst for the future games that don't have the cult in it. That's why this game was able to exist. Um, it strikes me that Silent Hill is its own living, living, breathing thing and has been for a long time and the cult maybe just amplified that. Yeah, I like that fact. But I also like the, uh, I like the fact that Silent Hill is a neutral power and it's only influenced by your perspective. Is that going to happen to every sub? <laughs> okay, see, thank you. <laughs> Jet, thank you for the gift sub. Total of five. Well, I appreciate the support, Jack. Means a lot to me. It does. I really appreciate it. And it went out to Sif Cube, and I know Sif Cube's watching. Maybe, maybe not right now, but maybe lurking. Uh, James Mayo, thanks for the link. Yeah, definitely take a look at it. Now, finding the PC versions of this game is not easy. Um. Uh, hopefully, you can do that. I gotta fix this problem. Uh, we're trying to do no sound effects here. Oh, there we go. I get rid of that. There. <laughs> I thought I hit the wheel goal because of that sound effect. I was like, a whale? <laughs> How many subs did I get? I was like, what? I like uh, this, the subtlety and detail. Like, Silent Hill has so much detail. Everyone knows that. But like one light is on. I love that little little detail. Well, James looks like uh James really wants a sub. <laughs> sub gift hype. Hype. <laughs> sub gift hype. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Let's see. It's locked. Hmm.
she really doesn't have any commentary on anything too you have to understand like that that does infer a lot yes i love the cobwebs uh it kind of makes it uh look very abandoned um it, it definitely is i kind of understand i do really feel like i understand silent hill 2 and i understand what they were doing with this scenario it was kind of an unnecessary scenario but i feel like a lot of it was cut content I do feel like Baldwin's character was probably uh, something they, they thought of. And uh, they decided to go ahead and, uh, and put him into a game. Hmm. Damn, it's a Pineview Drive Mansion. What's that? A Pineview Drive? Um, it's it's the hell house <laughs> I used to wonder if they would make a Silent Hill game set in the 19th you know I was actually I said that HL Duggins uh, who was here when I said that I had an idea for a Silent Hill game that would be really awesome uh, that would take place like I don't know actually I think it was earlier than that like the early set settlers you know probably in the 18th uh, was that the 18th 1800s no wait that would be the 19th century. I don't know. I get that all mixed up. But I, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be interesting if it was a Silent Hill game based on like a Native American, um, um, like viewpoint. And the Native Americans, uh, you know, they had their own spiritual beliefs and you could kind of dive into that. You could use, uh, like actual Native American lore to kind of build the Silent Hill title. A game about the little baroness? You don't know about it? Lord Ransky, you don't know about it? Are you telling me you really don't know about it? <laughs> Ernest? Are you there? No. I guess not. Where'd he go? Yes, the Hayakuma Kira. I'm glad you're lurking. Uh, the Silent Hill Arcade. Yes. Um, I, I'm going to stream it. Maybe not today, but I will. I have it installed and ready to go. They actually emulated it for the PC because Silent Hill fans will do anything if it has Silent Hill in the title. They'll do anything to get their hands on it. Is that a Silent Hill fan? Did they hear Silent Hill and go crazy? Hey, come back here. You're responsible for downpour, aren't you? <laughs> oh, that was just Devin Chatsky running away. Um, It's actually fun, Vin. Well, I'm sure it's fine for what it is. It's just like a House of the Dead game. Did you know Silent Hill 3 was going to be on an on, on was going to be an on rail shooter like House of the Dead? But the team had enough pushback to say no to Konami. Did you know that? But then Konami was like, enough of this garbage! Enough! You're fired! You're fired! You're fired! Oh, especially you! Akira Yamaoka, you're a producer now. <laughs> and you're gonna run the show! Mm, okay. <laughs> That's what he was like, mm, okay. He was just thrumming on this guitar, right? He was just like... Yeah, okay, I could do that, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, hi, Purple Hellion. And that's how we got Packy Slot, right. Yeah, Chris John, I'm keeping it alive. And you gotta keep me alive with support. <laughs> Just a sub or whatever, but I'm not gonna keep asking for it. I'm gonna keep going uh, with the with this. For some reason, there's a ladder in the fireplace leading up. Along the way, I can see something that looks like a hole. Sexual frustration. Sexual frustration. Sexual frustration. Sexual frustration. Sexual frustration. No, actually, you gotta get your mind out of the gutter, guys. <laughs> the Silent Hill wiki's too caught up on sexual frustration to realize that a lot of this, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that isn't on the wiki at all. 
In fact, I'm surprised a lot of my lore runs didn't affect the wiki at all. A lot of the stuff I came up with. You won't find on the wiki. Like this, um, might be on there, but you know, I don't really go there. Um, I gotta write on board. <laughs> Hi, Emmy. Happy Saturday to everyone. We, we gotta make this a hype Saturday, though. Hype, hype Saturday. Saturday. We get the weekend. <laughs> it's the weekend. Got the red board. I got the black board. White board. White board. Board. When the white breath is found, I shall dedicate this thing. Oh, spirit of the mist, grant us fortune eternal. Is written on the back. Yes, this area is really, really interesting. And it's really, it has a lot to do with, it has everything to do. It's like, you know, um, when you kind of run into the other characters of the game, you're kind of getting a glimpse of their psyche, right? Of their Silent Hill. Their version of Silent Hill is being manifested. So it does cross over. Kind of like, you know, when you're being informed of someone's perspective, you see their world for a brief moment, right? Thank you, Slayer, for 20 bits. That's support. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, it's kind of White Claudia. I think Varador, uh, it's interpretive, but I think it is. White Claudia is a ceremonial item, but religion has changed over time. Um, and it, it isn't really the focus anymore. But White Claudia is probably in there. Um, yeah, that's right, Chris John. I think people, more and more people are understanding uh, the, uh, the entertainment value of Twitch. Um, I'm seeing a lot of, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of talent. I mean, like, a lot of talents on, on Twitch. Like, people who, you know, are just, like, amazingly talented. Um, and, you know, I'm just inferior to them. <laughs> um, there's a lot of talent on Twitch. And it's becoming, you know, people are putting on shows. It's becoming a thing. Um, you're probably going to see bigger networks. It's going to grow. You're going to see, like, it's almost going to be like TV. Replacement of TV, there's going to be networks, there's going to be channels, there's going to be, you know. There are hard channels and networks, but still. It's going to be probably a lot bigger. Um, crappy internet bin? No, it's not that. Are those punch cards? <laughs> I have to go to work. I'm clocking in another day, another dollar. Am I right? Oh, yeah, I can unpause this. That's the bits right there. Slayer with the 20. Actually, before, before we read this, we do have to interpret what this means. And we have to get to that point. So, uh, really quickly, I'm going to describe what this, what's going on here. Um, because most people have seen this and they kind of understand. I don't want to spoil anything, but, you know, uh, uh, we're going into this lore run as if everyone already knows um, everything. So I'm going to say, Ernest Baldwin lost his daughter. His daughter died. There's a lot of bargaining going on here. A lot of bargaining. And the, re and the rebirth ending is kind of that. It's bargaining. That's one of the state five stages of denial or de of grief. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Um, that's what Silent Hill 2 is mostly about, but for but because of James's perspective and the fact that he's in so much denial, it has a lot to do with denial. More more than anything. And then depression. There is a big, big emphasis on depression. Anger you see through Eddie, right? You see the anger through Eddie. Um, you see a lot of depression through Angela, uh, but more more so than more than anything, you see bargaining too. Um, but it's so subtle. The bargaining uh, is Maria. 
That's bargaining. Oh, perhaps I can make it all better if I if I leave town with Maria. I replace Mary, and then I don't have to think about Mary because, well, I'll just pretend I'm, I'm still with her. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, what happened was Ernest Baldwin is grieving. Um, and he's trying to find a, some band-aid to cover it up and, and make himself feel better. He's just trying to find comfort. Um, and he doesn't want to get over the fact that his daughter died. And she died, uh, by falling out of the attic and, uh, smashing every one of her little bones. <laughs> it was tragic. There was blood everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. Hi, uh, Purple Hellion. Um, and, uh, 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 I did say hi to you already, but, uh, where is Ari for Hollywood? Yeah, was here at the beginning. Are you still out there? And, uh, I, I saw Animate Zack. Um, who else did I miss, though? I feel like I missed, I missed some people. Uh, Chris John, I didn't really greet you. So, there, there's the five stages of grief going on here. But what, uh, Ernest, the perspective that's missing in the base game of Silent Hill 2 is that bargaining is not really seen outside of James's own perspective. You're, you see his bargaining, but you don't really see a character that's a manifestation of that. Well, that's Ernest. So, Ernest is, uh, he's like, oh, I heard. You know, he kind of tried everything, right? He probably took to every freaking solution, but then he found a... Bible, 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 Bible. Well, at least the cult's Bible. Um, but he offered a solution, and he was willing to try anything, even though it sounded pretty crazy. Um, he saw that, wow, there, you know, there is a spiritual power in this town that cult believes, uh, that the religion believes this, uh, that you can bring back the dead. I, you know, that would solve everything if I could just bring her back. In fact, that's better than anything. <laughs> if I could bring her back, I don't have to grieve. <laughs> Shiba Gear Solid, hello. Uh, DBZ Park, I think I greeted you. I don't know. I'm here. I'm just quiet. That's fine. If you just want to soak it all in, that's fine, too. I'm trying to drink more fluids. It's not working. Centurias, thank you uh, for saying hello and coming to the stream and lurking. Jimmy the Crazed. Thank you for the follow. My theory is a feeling of guilt, but the basis is very difficult to determine. Um, you know what's interesting is that, you know, no one wanted to accept my theories back in the day, um, which, you know, we're kind of close to all this. Um, but no one wanted to listen to me um, because people like the, well, people wanted to believe that Silent Hill was about guilt, which is kind of true, but not not true. It's, you know, people, it, it, it manifests monsters to those who are guilty. Um, people, you know, this whole theme of amnesia and guilt. Here's the thing, though. It's not about those two things, because those two things aren't very psychological. Those things are more like, you know, brain trauma versus emotional trauma. Uh, so it's not about guilt and amnesia. It's about denial and repression. And those two things are more psychological. I don't, you know, the other ones are more like, are more like actual trauma. <laughs> Amnesia comes from like, you know, a, a car accident. Um, guilt is more of a, I don't know, a thing that comes hand in hand with denial. You know, you want to deny something because you're guilty. You pass the blame. Um, so no, I don't really think Silent Hill's about that. It's more psychological. It is psychological horror. So yeah, people repress things they don't want to, uh, they don't want to believe is true. Um, people deny things they don't want to believe is true. They, it, you know, they, Silent Hill is, you know, if, you know, even if Silent Hill 4 says this. Silent Hill 4 says, um, he who carries too heavy of a burden, tread lightly. So what Silent Hill does, it, it kind of tends to gravitate and its power does gravitate towards people who uh, have a burden. Um, and right here, uh, Ernest does have this burden. And, uh, you know, the boards that I just picked up represent, um, you know, represent 
all the different things he he has tried to cover up his pain because that's why you got to use the boards you use the boards with the holes in them because they aren't quite the solution you know they don't cover everything up because they got holes in them so it didn't quite work but it kind of worked well if you use all those things and stack them together you can completely cover up all the pain that's the that's the point of this puzzle you cover up all the pain by stacking all the boards perfectly so the holes don't show. Um, he, he, you know. And the Swiss cheese hard nose. That only kindness can fill these holes. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um. Hey, everyone in chat. Hi, Lochner. How are you doing? Um, what else? Who I missed? I feel like I missed someone. Eternal Snow White. I'm just kind of slowed today. I'm just trying to get going. So, if we're going to analyze this, it kind of helps to understand all that I just said. <laughs> and if you missed all that I just said, you missed, I don't know, you missed a lot of really good lore. <laughs> When the white breath is found, I shall dedicate this thing. Oh, spirit of the mist, grant us fortune eternal. So this is basically saying, this I need this last thing. I need this white breath, this white chrism. This is when I when I have this, I can finally carry through with what I need to do to resurrect my daughter. And he's like, oh please. Please let this happen. Oh, tiger! Tiger! Oh, spirit of the mist! Grant this fortune eternal. It's like, I sure hope this works. I thought about Silent Hill exiting without the cult. The problem here is Valtiel, he did possess Walter, right? He's the idea of Silent Hill embodied into a character. Yeah, and that their explanation was, well, if Walt, if Valtiel is uh, one of the uh, gods of Silent Hill, well, he can be possessed with that, that god, and uh, that would make sense as to why um, he's able to uh, do the things Silent Hill can do. Um, there's a lot to talk about. When the Dark Grail is found, I shall dedicate this thing. You who deny death, grant us fortune eternal. So it says, you who deny death. Uh, so basically it's saying, uh, Ernest denies death. He's denying the death of his, wa uh, of his daughter. And, uh, you know, oh, please let these things work. Every one of these says that. When the crimson words are found, I shall dedicate this thing. Oh, you gods, deep in slumber. Grant us fortune eternal. Um, you know, it's like, you know, the gods can help. You know, uh, you kind of seek um, a higher power. Um, you know, you, you ever heard people say that they kind of find religion as a crutch? I mean, I don't believe that, but I've heard that one a lot. Um, it's like, ah, I don't believe in religion. I'm atheist. And, uh, you know, religion's just a crutch for weak people. Well... That's kind of what this is about. You know, he's using it as a crutch. Um, well research. Thank you, Chris John. I've had enough time to really research it. <laughs> Nihilist? I'm a catalyst. White breath equals fog equals for forgetting things. I think just when he says, um, spirits of the mist. He's talking about like the the spiritual power, obviously. I mean, white breath equals foggy equals forgetting things, though. So. I'm trying to think about that. Well, hmm. I don't really I can't really tell you. That's I mean, I can't really make sense of that myself. 
But the colors do kind of represent something. Yeah, we do find a memo that says the colors do represent different things. Um, possible. Because the fog is kind of like a representation of their clouded minds, right? Um, what's it saying there again? I also do feel like, I mean, this is off topic, but you know, just a side note. Um, I do feel like the fog is also a representation of that spiritual power. And the reason why the fog is one of the most important things, as uh, they do as they do say, um, is because the fog, you know, has to kind of feel organic. It's kind of like an entity of itself. It, it moves around you. It kind of feels organic. It feels like a presence. And it kind of, you know, it is a representation of the of the of the towns, of the town too. Um, it's kind of a characterization. Uh, I guess no, I guess you can't really call it a characterization. Maybe. Does the sleeping gods thing come up anywhere else? Um, not really. But the gods do. Uh, you know, they just need to be awoken. Here's the thing, the uh, the cult. Uh, they they had access. They know they knew just how to use it. The spiritual power of the gods. Uh, they they knew just how oh, you know the 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 verses to recite the you know the rituals to conduct. They knew just how to tap into it. Um, and that's what the book of crimson words or whatever the crimson ceremony book. We do find that at the end of the game. Um, in the main base game. Uh, we we also find the. Uh, the chalice, which is one of the items here. We also find the white chrism. So these are all items in the base game that that kind of leads to the ritual ending. Um, the Fog by John Carpenter had a mind of its own. Yeah, I think that's what they were going for. Kill Papa Dapa. Um, the Fog, even though it's a B movie, um, John Carpenter not his best. It 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 is probably an inspiration. Hmm. Let's read this thing. This thing's pretty deep, too. So now that you understand Ernest Baldwin and what he's trying to do, you understand why this riddle, like I tell you, it's like poetry, it rhymes. This riddle, uh, and all the riddles in the game, it does seem that way. Snower can help me figure that out with the, with the, the yesterday during the, that riddle with the box. Um, they all have something to do with someone. Um, it helps in, inform the story a little bit. Um, and I feel like there is, you got to put some importance to the riddles, especially if they're found somewhere within the vicinity of a person. Because um, the riddles do have something something to do with someone. You got to put a little bit more weight on them. Um, tried to? Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's right, Farodor. They did. In the beginning of the movie, they, they were, they were uh, I guess, cultists trying to wake God. And what came out was a, was a fog. There you go. Atheists always practice witchcraft sooner than later. Um, Buddha, da 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 da. Okay, God, Darwin theory. Oh my God, you're, you're overwhelming me, Snow Orchid. Who are you, P? <laughs> so much stuff you just threw at me. Uh, don't throw shade at the fog. Now you're throwing shade, master. You're throwing shade. Oh, uh, out there, fog was just the extension of the ghost ability, I think. That's pretty good. I like that. Looks like cross section of a tree trunk. Why? What do you think that is, little pooper? Or a fingerprint? Yeah. Interesting. You know what's interesting about my fingerprint? It kind of looks like a spiral. Don't it? That's the. I think that's the point of it. He's in denial. He's trying to cover up his depression, and he's going around in circles. Because tis thou which leadeth thee to purgatory. Tis thou which leadeth thee to purgatory. Tis thou which leadeth thee to purgatory. <laughs> he who is not bold, be, uh, bold enough to stare out into the abyss. I don't know. I don't remember that line. But, you know, <laughs> we'll get there, at, you know, at the end. At the end of this day, of this lore run today. I'll talk about it more, but yeah, it's, it's basically a, a representation of purgatory and doubt and denial. It's just, you go around in circles like the spiral writing key. 
and why it's called the spiral writing key because this <laughs> when you're in denial you never get better you just compl you, you're always covering up the you know you're not getting to the root of the problem you're covering up the problem which is always going to be a problem because it's always going to resurface that's psychology it's always going to resurface until you get to the root of the problem you know like that virus that trojan i once had you know that trojan that kept <laughs> because i didn't delete the executable where you know that was spawning the other executables that was rewriting my whole hard drive you know <laughs> You gotta get to the root kit. <laughs> um, the lungs was a uh, tree branches design when you see an x-ray. Um, yeah, but I don't know what that has to do with it. Oh, did I miss something? Oh, fish, fish goal 69. Thank you for that follow. I might have to get more water. I don't know. But I'm going to get through this puzzle. Uh, we're going to get through this whole scenario before I take a break. I think. Um, hey, fish. Welcome to the chat. It's good to meet you. Good to meet you. I'm Fungo. <laughs> and if you're here, maybe spectating, not really knowing who I am, and you're a fan of Silent Hill, uh, do check out the real Silent Hill experience, which was kind of my my passion project. Uh, you know, because I felt like everyone misunderstood Silent Hill. That's kind of why I wanted to make it. And, uh, you know what's really funny is that, um, well, there's a lot of things I misunderstood about Silent Hill around the time of writing that. Um, wish, wish I could kind of patch it up. You know, you don't fully understand Silent Hill until you've, you've experienced it quite a few times. Uh, and you have to experience life. But also you have to talk about it a lot and kind of bounce ideas off people. Yes, water is a major theme in Silent Hill too. It's like, you know, um, skipping stones, right? Cut of a tree, borrowed door. It's, you know, I think it's more metaphoric. But, you know, it could be literally, you know, the cut of a tree. It looks like zebra stripes to me. <laughs> so poor. It looks like zebra stripes. So here we go. This is interesting because this this wording right here, and they are genius when it comes to the wording of everything. Um, in Silent Hill 2, they purposefully, and it seems meticulously, select their dialogue so that it kind of goes any way. There's any number of ways it could be taken. Um, so this right here is definitely, like most things, metaphoric and uh, literal. Hey, James. You know what else has water as a theme downpour? That's actually, you know, that's actually a really good joke. I should have just said that, honestly. <laughs> it's like, and to your water theory, I say, downpour. <laughs> you can end all conversations that way. There's a square depression in the center of the tombstone. You get it? Depression. So both. Depression that Ernest is dealing with. And a depression. But also, look at this. And above that is a carefully carved epitaph. <laughs> Along with you died joy. All that remains is despair and a future of meaningless tomorrows. But I will never give up. One, to see your beautiful smile again. One, to beg the blessings of the gods. I wait for that day. When the boards cover up all, all sadness too will be covered. But until my dreams return to re reality, I will have to swallow all the pain. So what he's doing and what it says here, it's very poetic. What he's doing and what it says here is that he's basically like, I'm willing to deal with this pain and prolong the pain as long as it takes until I get what I want, which is unrealistic. So he's only prolonging the recovery process because he's like holding out, holding out for this stupid, stupid thing that he doesn't even know is going to work. But he's putting all his faith into something ridiculous. Well, is it ridiculous? Not to him. 
There's a key firmly embedded in the stone beneath the depression. Oh, I get it. Depression. <laughs> no matter how I try, can't pull it out. No matter how hard I try, I cannot pull it out. That's what she said? <laughs> oh, okay, I don't know what that was about. Um, so that's interesting. I love this. This is poetic. You know what they were masters of more than anything are the riddles and it's too bad. It's too bad people always hated riddles because as an art form, Silent Hill 2, it's going to be, it's going to be unique. Um, they were masters. They were really good at poetry and you got to go oh, a lot to Jeremy Blaustein, but you know, Hiroyuki Owaku was the writer, uh, for a lot of the puzzles, I think. Yes, uh, no, the circles represent, represent the eternal purgatory he's putting himself through, Dexter. He's, he's like, I'm willing to put myself through more, you know, all this pain and sorrow for as long as it takes until I get what I want. And if I, I can't accept the fact that it won't work. This is, this has to work, and I'm not even thinking about any, any possible way it won't. And that's why Ernest is kind of bound. He's bound to this, this world, this, this mansion as a spirit. You know, they do say spirits are kind of tied because of deep-rooted emotions. They're kind of tied to a place, uh, because, uh, of an unfinished business is a, you know, you've heard that one, right? Spirits are kind of like, you know, bound. Uh, they're, they haunt places where they, you know, they can't pass on to the afterlife because they have unfinished business. Well, that's what's going on here. So we got to figure this out. And I don't know it by heart. Here I am covering up the sadness. Hey, Salento. I don't know if I greeted you, Salento, but hello. It's nice to have you. Right. Right. You can look at it that way, too, Dexter. I really like you bouncing that idea off me and helping me kind of, you know, I like that. I want to say it. Um... You know, like, like the rings on the tree, too. You know, it kind of suggests life experience, life age. Each ring is like a different season, different year. Um, you know, the more rings a tree has, uh, you know, the you know you can kind of infer how long the tree's been around. Sometimes hundreds of years. Well, you know, that's kind of another common theme with this game is that you learn with, with time. Time heals all. Things will never be forgotten, you know, you know, with time, things have been forgotten. It does talk about that stuff a lot. Time. That's, that's the really, honestly, sometimes some things can't be really cured right now. Some things just take time. And you just got to deal with it until, you know, it's whatever it is that's bothering you has, uh, you know, kind of run its course. Oh, I was hoping. <laughs> uh, open, uh, open holes on the boards of or overlapping. I can still see the other side, which means I'm still a little depressed. I would like to raise this question one more time, purely to find all flaws in a little theory of mine. How Baldwin can know that Maria must know there is nothing beyond the door where he is, and at the end, and about the monsters, if he's not pu puppeteered. Maria released he was a ghost. Um, I don't think he's puppeteered. But I, I don't know how to help you with that one. I don't really agree with the theory. Mm. Unless I'm misunderstanding. I read it earlier, but I didn't say anything. Let's see. Um... I mean, I guess we have to see eye to eye, right? In order to really kind of uh, work on that theory. 
I think that we're going the right direction with this. Yeah, I know. If I just take the white chrism and turn it sideways, this ritual isn't working. <laughs> what is wrong with this Bible? This is no Bible. No Bible. No Bible. It's supposed to offer solutions. You know, maybe if I turn the book upside down. Maybe I should just throw it in the garbage. <laughs> Turn it to the left. Oh, there's still a hole showing. I'm still depressed. No matter how I try to work these things together, I'm still sad. And that's kind of the point of this. You're supposed to be... You know what? When I first uh, tried to solve this puzzle, it was a real... It was like, you know, my math emo is like... Math. I was, it, it was a, oh my god, it, it, it was hours of this crap, just try, I, I was like, this isn't working, no matter how many times I rotate the boards and put them into the depression, it doesn't cover it up, well, <laughs> isn't that the point, though, that's funny, isn't that kind of what the, the story is trying to tell you, <laughs> no matter how much you try to cover it up, well, it's never really gonna completely cover it up, is it? But uh, what I ended up having to do, because it wasn't working, was I ended up cutting out, uh, you know, like pieces of paper with all these holes. And uh, physically putting them together, and that didn't help either. <laughs> I did all that work, and it didn't help me. <laughs> oh. It was like a waste of time. Because, you know what? Well, how is that any different than what I'm doing right now? Um... Yeah, you did the same thing. I think we talked about this last time I talked, uh, 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 the first lore run. Of groceries, hello! I'm not really quite sure. Let's turn this one upside down then. Wait, we did that, didn't we? I don't know. Sometimes you think it's just easier to make a physical puzzle and, uh, solve it that way. But, you know, the point of this puzzle is that it's not easy. That, metaphorically, getting over, you know, grieving and getting over and getting better after someone, you know, a major loss after a death, after you lost someone, it's, it's not easy. And that's kind of the important thing here. Hi, Joy. Welcome back. Archon Valerius, hello. Hope you guys are liking the fact that you can see the sub goal now. Uh, or at least the, the goal towards another emote. Kind of obviously Enigma and uh, Ravenheart kind of use it. Um, and it, I think it works for them. And like it kind of has a nice uh, kind of idea. You get a nice idea of, I, I don't know, like of where I'm at, and it's pretty high, I would say. Uh, I'd say I'm, I'm very fortunate to have all of you here right now, but you're not making this any better. <laughs> you don't, you don't cover up my depression. Help me, guys. Ah! Yeah, it's easier to understand when you see that, yeah. Um, but you know, the wheel is more convoluted and complicated than ever, I know. It has a matrix thing going on. Um, but if you need understanding of it, it's basically, well, we have 10 subs until we, we do a, we do break away for a wheel, and we have a very, very, uh, I don't know, a diverse wheel with a lot of things on it. Oh, turn it upside down? Didn't I do this? Oh my god, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have to look up the solution, I think. Perhaps I put it ah, I put it in the wrong order. The red one. Okay. So maybe if I use the the cult Bible first. <laughs> you know, it's like how many how many different you know ways do I have to go about this to get it to work? <laughs> it's like I know I'm missing the white chrism. That's what I need. Let's see. Um I think it's the black one, the blackboard first. Let's try that.
Joy to the world. Wii U. And it doesn't matter between these two, it doesn't matter. Um, I have a feeling it was this one, right? They really hid this this uh, solution, didn't they? They did a good job. Because uh, they made it... It must have taken a lot of, a lot of time, a long time to really think about this. Because, well, they made it so that there's not more than one solution. There's only... Like, literally, there's only one solution. So, they had to probably... Uh, I mean, like... I don't know how they figured that one out. Upside down? No. You gotta look at the boards and where the holes lie, but it doesn't help as much as you may think. You know, this one, this one might be it. Just put it in as is. Oh, there are four solutions. Interesting. Never mind. Well, I thought that they figured out a way to just get one. I don't know how you knew that, do we? We did it! Now we can move on. <laughs> when the three boards overlapped, the key came free. I got the Acacia key. Oh man, yeah, my key. Oh yeah, it's gonna be the best key ever. Better be. Engraved with an Acacia flower. Found emb embedded in a stone slab. Yeah, I, I hope this unlocks a treasure chest. <laughs> uh, because if you turn them all in four different ways, it's still overlapped. Well, you, yeah, I guess there are more than... Yeah, there's more than one solution. I mean, you could put them in in any number of ways, yeah. Alright, we can move on now. So I got the Borley Haunted Mansion man. <laughs> Borley, might as well call it that. Borley Haunted Mansion. Wow, this is a mansion. What a mansion! Okay. Why is it that Silent Hill characters can't run upstairs? They always slow down. That's the one thing, you know, if I had to find the flaw, um, mechanically. Silent Hill 2 and 3 are, are mass, like, perfect in, in terms of gameplay, but that one thing is so irritating. <laughs> that they can't run upstairs. I'll show you what I mean if you missed it. She's doing it right now. I'm not even running up. All right. Okay, she did it. Is she gonna run up the stairs perfectly now? Oh yeah, she ran up the stairs perfectly when I tried to show you. Never mind. Mm. Your apartment's this big? I that I would love that. <laughs> Um, we don't need any fun facts around here, Vin. <laughs> I'm gonna get angry at you. No, Kapapa Dapa, the acacia is a red herring. Okay, so I was gonna talk about it, but everyone's so caught up in this acacia thing. Silent Hill 2 likes to throw, like, curveballs at you. Things to mislead you from what's really relevant. It's kind of genius in that regard. It's genius in that... Uh, Acacia is not important. That the true message is, is kind of, you're being misled. So that you miss the true message. I'll show you when, when we get there. But Silent Hill 2 does it over and over again with the memos. This is pretty. The curtains and everything. Um, now notice she doesn't really have much commentary because well, she's still trying to discover herself as a person Maria was just born. I mean give it time. She doesn't just give her some time. She was literally just born like today or yesterday She doesn't know who she is yet give her time. Oh matches Oh 
I was about to say, don't give these to Angela. Uh, I got matches. Only two or three matches are left, found in kids' room. Uh, is Maria Benjamin Button? <laughs> she ages backwards. Small bed for a child. Oh, at least she knows that much. The shelf is filled with fairy tales and other children's literature. I'm sure I've never read this, but somehow it seems familiar. See, this is interesting because you know she is born from James's wish, um, and that you're you're still kind of you're seeing James's perspective in this scenario. You're still seeing the the game through James's lens, right? Um, because James is nearby, you know she's about to encounter him. You know you're still you're seeing his influence onto the town. His influence on the town. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting when you think of it that way. Um, in the city, made the ritual work. Did I miss a part of it? <laughs> you just kind of start with and. You can't start a sentence with and, that's improper grammar. Um, the ritual itself is not real. The desire through the city makes the ritual real. Therefore, the cult is rather a poor understanding of the city or even a departure from the fact of the city. Wow, I like that. That that threw me for a loop. I liked it. What was what were you trying to say though through that? <laughs> uh born <laughs> I tried Varador. Uh born you were you were trolling me. All right. There's more stuff and this is really cool. She's kind of what she's you know the reason why the the kids fairy tales were familiar to her is because well, I bet you uh Mary read uh, fairy tales to Laura. You know, she did want to adopt her and stuff, right? She is a child. She probably read stories to her. When she, you know. It just makes sense. Weird question. Who starts roaming the city first? James the Monsters, Maria, or Pyramid Head? James? That was an easy one. <laughs> I like easy questions. A doll is sitting on the chair. Now that I look closer, it's filthy. Whoever lived here must have really loved this thing. So that informs a little bit of the story. Um, just trying to tell you, Ernest really loved. Well, here's the thing. Ernest really loved his daughter. Who really loved this doll. And he loved his daughter just enough to still have the room intact. You know? But she says it's filthy too. Which shows that he hasn't really come in here to clean. It's it's gathering dust. It's getting dirty. Um, because he's avoiding it. Because it brings back painful memories. So he doesn't even want to touch the room. You know, when my grandma passed away. It was really hard. But, you know, this seems out of place, right? Out of nowhere. But... My my grandfather, he could not bear to part with her stuff. He literally did not change the room. He didn't, like, all her stuff just stayed. But he neglected it all. Um, And he just let it all go, and he just couldn't part with it. But, you know, he didn't want to get better. Because he just couldn't, he couldn't, uh, you know, just take the pain. You know, the feeling of loneliness when all her, when all my grandma's stuff, you know, that, that feeling of just, of, uh, the lack of presence. That's probably why, you know, for like years he kept, uh, the answering mas machine message that she recorded. Years. Kept it on the answering machine. You know, that's not, that's not getting any better, honestly. And people would tell him, you need to change that. You probably should change the answering machine message because every time you it goes off, you hear her voice. And you're just reminded of the painful, painful loss. You know? You have to kind of move forward. If you if you you're stuck in purg purgatory if you just if you don't wanna take that extra step forward towards recovery. So Silent Hill is not a purgatory, okay? 
I know Silent Hill Downpour tried to make it into a purgatory, but it's not. Thank you, Sheepy Liz, for the follow. No, it's only a purgatory if you're in denial, which Silent Hill 2 is about. Stuffed animals line the top of the shelf. Nothing very interesting. Oh! Is this a teddy bear? It's not very well made, but it's sort of cute anyway. I bet Laura would love it. She loves bears. Laura? Who am I talking about? And this is really cool. There she is starting to recollect memories. You know, that seemed kind of like Mary's, right? But here's the thing. Here's the important thing. I really don't think it's Mary. It's James's recollection of Mary being manifested, right? It's not actually Mary, okay? I don't think it is. How does she know Laura? Remember yesterday? I had some kind of pushback when I said, I think James has always known Laura. Like, he's known Laura for a long time. He, he has known Laura, but he... he He's repressing her because she brings back those painful memories of Mary when she was sick. Um, how would she know Laura? If that's the case. If she's James's manifestation. So there's some more proof right there. I don't think she's getting actually, she's actually getting Mary's memories. Uh, I feel like she's exclusively James's, um... His recollection. You know, remember Silent Hill 1? It kind of goes along with Silent Hill 1 and uh, Lisa. You remember Lisa? Here, I can help you remember her. Yeah, I, I know, it's like we're talking about Silent Hill 2. And it's always about Silent Hill 2, Silent Hill, Silent Hill 2, 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 but why is it called Silent Hill 2 if it's the only Silent Hill? I don't get it. <laughs> Let me help you remember her. I get it now. I'm the same as them. I just didn't know it before. Jay, Harry, help me. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm mean. <laughs> oh boy, we don't want to think about sad things, but you know, sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to think about those sad things. But what is Lisa? In Silent Hill 1. What is Lisa? This is important. Lisa... ...is a manifestation... ...of Alessa's memory of her. Silent Hill 2. What is Maria? It's like poetry. It rhymes. A manifestation of James's memory of her. Of Mary. So, it's kind of the same intention here. <laughs> I'm all choked up. I don't know if I can... This is the suffering, Jack. <laughs> now I know what it feels to pain. Like playing the suffering and having it crash on you, like that's the worst thing anyone could ask for. You know, it's a technical difficulties is a streamer's nightmare. How do I get this to stop? <laughs> Can we pretend that that didn't happen in Silent Hill 1? It makes me feel better. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
Oh, let me tell you, I laughed when I first heard that. I was like, that, what the hell was that? <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, she just fell out the window. Don't move her. What happened? <laughs> oh, so basically what's happening, what, what you got informed that you just kind of got informed of, of, uh, a terrible accident. Um, trying to, trying to kind of, uh, in a subtle way, give you the audio of what happened when she died. We're always talking about that. That is Silent Hill. Mm. The Suffering is a good game that has really good creature designs. That's kind of like Silent Hill. Like the monster designs are kind of like Silent Hill. Oh, yeah, I have everything uh, muted right now, but you know by all means don't stop, you know, you know th Just because it's muted. It doesn't mean you know, I don't want support um, You know and gift subs or whatever just you know, you're not gonna be interrupting anything if you do I don't know. I was just like if you got the wrong idea or something um, And I do really appreciate all any and all support. It's a lot of work, you know doing these lore runs. I Can't see anything if only I had some light Oh, I get it. It's it's one of those metaphoric and literal things, isn't it? I gotta shine a light on the truth. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I'm in the dark, and I gotta shine a light. I mean, they think deeply into this stuff. They, You know, you have to meticulously design a game. It takes a long time to design an area. It takes a long time, you know, so of course you're gonna want to kind of plan it out first, right? You're gonna really want to plan out everything so it fits your me your meta narrative, fits your narrative, meta narrative, whatever it is. As long as it, you know, if if you have that time to plan it out, why not kind of uh you know, be poetic with it? Um, and I feel like that's kind of what they do with Silent Hill. Does Maria understand who she is at the end of the expansion? The artificially artificiality of her existence. Um, yeah, she does, Varador. Good question. Yeah, Maria does. She is told. Ernest does say, you, you do know you're the same as me, right? And he starts to go on. He's like, you know, we're, we, we're, we're not real. And she's like, I don't care what you think. She cuts him off and she doesn't want to hear it. So, you know, just like everyone else, she's dealing with denial, too. You know, that common theme, even Maria's in it. It's crazy. And, you know, she's she's even, ha you know, contemplating, contemplating suicide. Maybe she's losing her sight, losing her mind. <laughs> Wish somebody would tell her she's fine. Um... She does contemplate suicide even because you know what when you are you have a diff you have diff there are different ways to kind of deal with the truth You know you can deny it, but you know, there's also the fact that you can kind of cover it up with something that That's not gonna help it. You know, you could Kill yourself so you don't have to deal with the pain. I'm not saying do it. I'm just saying that's one of the things you could I don't know accept it and then get better well, she has that kind of process at the end. There's something below the chair. Is this a birthday card? Oh, my dearest daddy! Happy birthday! <laughs> From Amy Baldwin! Is that what a child sounds like? <laughs> oh. oh my god, it's Amy's birthday! Oh wait, no. It's the other way around. It's Ernest's birthday! It's Ernest's birthday today. We didn't even know. We gotta go wish him a happy birthday. Um. And in, in this, she copies the main character. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm going back up. There were some messages I missed. No, I didn't miss them. Never mind. 
Over here, I can see more. Um, Guess for stones. <laughs> for stones. Well, that was interesting. A lit candle provides some light uh, in the area. See, look, the intentional dialogue. It provides some light. Sheds light. You know, it, it seems just like too on purpose to me. And, uh, I guess we're going back to Ernest. Give it. <laughs> Ghost! <laughs> They do exist. <laughs> Interesting. Ah! <laughs> That's a good jump scare. You know, I should have done one of those jump scare sounds, like the brink. <laughs> Damn, that's not what I meant to D. Oh, I don't know what you're singing. Is it the same song <laughs> that I was singing? Mommy, why you no wake up? <laughs> oh God. Oh, here we go, Acacia. This is a really good memo that really kind of proves my point. It is freaking overwhelming <laughs> to say the least. It jumps all over the place like most uh, Silent Hill fan theories, right? <laughs> oh. They don't, they're not self-aware. <laughs> Most Silent Hill fans are not self-aware. They don't understand that they're just jumping all over the place and no one can follow them but themselves. Um, I've seen a lot of theories just, oh, I, I cannot follow you, buddy. Um, well, why don't we, you know, learn how to write an essay. It does help. <laughs> um, by three days gracing. <laughs> Yeah, silent jump scares are the best. I, I don't know why movies push that sound, you know? Rink! You know, they're so much more effective. You know, Hereditary did that. Uh, Hereditary had a silent jump scare that was really effective. Um, it It's something that, like, you know, uh, just wait. You'll notice it. Just just keep looking. You'll see it. <laughs> and then when you see it, you're like, oh, God. It's just silent. Uh, hereditary is great. Ah, I woke you up, licorice and shreddies. Gotta talk about something you care about. <laughs> okay. There's a book here. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Oh, are you... Who's going to bed, Jet? Oh, I thought him, because this is usually when you do. Alright, Jet, well, you have a good sleep. Maybe catch up on everything, um... You know, that... that Kind of takes place afterwards. You can catch up on the lore uh, in the highlight or the VOD. This stuff is going on YouTube. It's going to be real good. Um, so this memo, this memo is so great. It represents Silent Hill fan theories. <laughs> it really does. I love the theory because of the, the silent jump scares really made me think of Silent Hill in that way. I don't know why more movies don't do that. Like that, that movie, there, it shouldn't be like a rare phenomenon to get a good horror movie that isn't just novelty um but it is there's a book here it looks like a plant encyclopedia acacia get ready for some acacia acacia lore <laughs> Yeah, you want to learn, you want to learn all about Acacia And where it all came from Yeah, it's like reading the Wikipedia
A genus of evergreen trees of the Mimosa tribe of the pea family. Its tiny flowers are yellow or white and grow in clusters. Common varieties include the gum tree. The acacia tree is a potent symbol in many religions across the world. In Christianity, it represents eternal life and morality. In ancient Egypt, it was re represented purity and rebirth, while in ancient Babylonia, it was thought of as the tree of goddess Ishtar and was a symbol of life. It was also a holy, holy tree in the ancient Jew Jews who built the sacred Ark of the Covenant from it and for whom it signified a... Hold on. Oh! This is it. Here's what you need to be looking at. <laughs> that last part I didn't read yet. What, what the hell did I just read? <laughs> a peaceful death and a release from grief. That's all that memo's about. The other stuff is irrelevant. We could talk all day about it. It's irrelevant and I don't want to. There's nothing interesting inside or above the fireplace. There's a clock here. Did you know there's an indie game about Centralia? Yes, I played it. Centralia's good! <laughs> Let me tell you, it's good. I love that memo though, because, you know, like, we'll see it again and again in other memos. That memo is fantastic. Uh, I just love the way it's written. You know, it jumps around. It goes from this to that, to this to this. It's not even clear on what dates and times and places. It's just like all over the place. It sounds like a Silent Hill fan theory. Um, but really what it's trying to say is just some, it's trying to tell you without telling you that Ernest wants a peaceful relief. He wants a, he wants a relief from grief. He, he wants, that's what he wants. That's all it's trying to tell you. And, you know, the game doesn't really tell you that. No, it doesn't. You know, you, you, you really learn at the end. Oh, yeah, thank you for following Firehawk. Hawk. Firehawk89. Sorry, what indie game? In a uh, flor floriography, the language of flowers, acacia blossoms mean concealed love. Yeah, I'm sure acacia is important in terms of uh, what it represents. I mean, I'm sure that all that does really kind of tie in really well uh, with like, you know, all that stuff at the end. Release from grief, peaceful death, rebirth. It all ties in with all that. Rebirth, peaceful death, release from grief. Just mostly grief, release. He needs that, that release. <laughs> No, we're talking about sex and death, right? We always talk about this stuff. <laughs> because, well, it's it's impossible to talk about death without also talking about sex, because it's a cycle. Can I get a 69? <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> that seemed out of nowhere. Um... That, that's what I was referring to. Oh. There's nothing here I can use now. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Well, I remember the, the last lore run I did was just filled with non-stop. That right there. That right there. Joy. Joy, you did it. Yeah, prove my point. I appreciate it. 69. <laughs> Thank you for the support. I really do appreciate it. That was the last lore run, and I think a lot of stuff got lost in that. It's just like, you know, that's the thing. I'm here to kind of untie the knots. You know, there, there's all the stuff that kind of is misleading. To be misleading on purpose, so you don't really it, easily find out what this game's about. And then here I am, I got all those knots in my, in my last lore run. That, uh, that kind of confused the point. Like, everything I said got lost because of that. No, I'm not saying anything bad, Joy. I do appreciate it. The alert, the, that's why we have, that's why we have the, uh, sound commands, like, muted. <laughs> Let's talk about this for a while. 
<laughs> well, thank you, Sanosuke. I know you're out there now. And I know you're doing that just to spite me. <laughs> All right. Oh, Blender 3's here. Hi. I think I was going the right way, actually. So, more cutscene, I guess. Yeah, this scenario is really, really short, but you wouldn't think so, would you? <laughs> I mean, like, with how long I've been playing it. No, it is short. You can beat it in, like, five minutes. No kidding. It's very short. But... Doesn't this just show that there's a lot to it? It doesn't add a lot, no, but there is a lot to it. Cutscene. You know a little girl named Amy? Why do you ask me that? This letter. To my dearest daddy. It's from a girl named Amy Baldwin. Your daddy? Yes. Where'd you find that? Up in the attic. Oh. What a fool. No. Oh. It's too late. So he's confronted with the truth. I finally understand why. Which is interesting because he's acting like it's new information. Well, why she was there. You know whether or not he knew about the birthday present is up for interpretation though. Which he, which he fell. Ernest, Amy. She isn't dead. Lord Ransky, yes. I'm sorry I reminded you. No need to apologize. You didn't remind me. I've never forgotten. Maria? Of course you've never forgotten. You're hung up on it. We forget. And some things we can never forget. Some things we can never forget. And some things we forget. I'm not sure which one is sadder. Why is that important? It's been ten years, but I still... Ernest, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Silent Hill 2 over and over again talks about forgetting things and never forgetting things. That letter. I'll leave it here. Thanks. I could see a crack. Oh, you, you missed it. Plumber's crack. Maria? So, you must be... That's why. That's why you could see me. Huh? So, perhaps that means that I can hope for a miracle as well. What do you mean? Tell you what, this music is comfy though. In the apartment next door, there's a bottle containing a white liquid. It's all really weirdly written, I agree. I don't know exactly where it is, but I know it's in there somewhere. I must have it. You... want me to get it for you? Please. Why don't you just get it yourself? If I could, believe me, I would. But I... Wait. I'll open the stairway door. Ernest, do you really believe it will work? 
You're a loony, Ernest. I don't know. Well, that's okay. I don't mind fighting for an impossible cause. Anyway, she's <laughs> just giving up and doing nothing. Oh, that dialogue's important. Thank you. Holy crap. She says, You know what you're doing is a lost cause that's not gonna work and you're crazy, right? And then she's like, well, I guess it beats giving up. It's at least it's something. And that's kind of important because that's what he, that's kind of basically it. I mean, like, he, what else can you do when, you know, someone, someone dies and you don't want to accept it. You just, uh, you spiral downwards. Uh, you gotta have something to hold off for. Something. At least it's something. And it's not nothing. Um, and, uh, yes, the dialogue is weirdly written, but it's still pretty well written. Like, there's, it just goes on too long. I, I wonder if the scenes do go on for a while because, uh, uh, because they wanted to extend it for content. Um, but it's not like, it's not short and to the point, like the, like this main story, um, that's very short and to the point. It's all like, oh, let's talk for a while. <laughs> um, and the dialogue's oddly, um, kind of like delivered. Um, it's, I think it didn't have the right direction. Uh, I feel like Sato did, you know, see Sato was kind of like, had to go out to the studio to direct the vo voice acting. Uh, Sato was the director for the most part when the when it came to voice acting. Well, I don't think he was really there to to direct the voice acting of this scenario. Amy's present to her father, Ernest. Found with the birthday card. I think I'll leave this here. Oh yes, oh, it's his birthday. Um, Russell's dreams. I see that. See that chat, Funko chat. What? Who else is fighting for an impossible cause, Dexter? <laughs> Sexual frustration, white liquid rebirth. See, that's why people people get hung up on the sex thing, and then they 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 can't think about anything else. And people, you know what I think, honestly? I I know I said I, I this is kind of rude, and I know. But I think that, you know, what people do, because Silent Hill is so interpretive, is they like to inject uh, what they want, that, you know, kind of relate, that they relate to. They like to inject their own problems onto the, the meta-narrative and story. So, you know, of course it's going to be sexually, fr fr uh, you know, it's going to be about sexual frustration if, uh, if you're injecting your own sexual frustration into the story. Because it's really... Really, there aren't any really big themes of sexual frustration in any of the Silent Hill games. It's just Masahiro Ito does uh, do a lot of sex and death with his art and design. Um, and I think he was a big influence on that. You know, you could look at a monster and be like, that's sexual. I know it is. I mean, flesh lips? You know, it's, it's just designed because it looks like it wants to give you a blowjob. <laughs> Oh, how I could use a blowjob right now. <laughs> so that's that's basically what's going on. Amy's present to her father, Ernest. Oh, I read that. The bookshelf is lined with complete editions of difficult-looking books. I'm not interested in any of that. I'm not interested in difficult-looking books, too. I mean, like... I've had enough of the Bible. Bible. <laughs> Bible. Bible. So here's a Bible. Okay. Uh, part of one. Lost memories. I have the strongest trust. You may even call it faith. Is this Ernest who wrote this? <laughs> so yeah, he has this strong trust and faith. It's kind of speaking for him. In the miracle called Resurrection of the Dead. Hey, they stole this from Pet Cemetery. Hey, Crow Reynolds. Upon the hill where 
the light descended, the beast intoned his song. With words of blood, drops of mist, and the vessel of night, the grave became an open field. The people wept in fear and joy at the reunion, but my faith in the salvation of Exuchopaba did not waver. It is also spoken of in the ancient legends. The original worshippers did not believe that death was the end, but that it was simply the path by which the deceased returned to nature. They also believed the process was reversible. I think this memo is just talking about 69. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, like, if I really wanted to believe that, I guess. It talked about, you know, sex and death. <laughs> There you go, sex and death. There's something imprinted towards the bottom of the page. Did Ernest write this? What could it mean? Blood equals red, mist equals white, night equals black. Yeah. But how, how does this help anyone? Well, you take this, take this, it's like a riddle. Take this and convert those words to the colors. A memo that you have to read back through. Upon the hill where the light descended, the beast intoned his song. With words of red, so with words from the crimson ceremony, drops from the white chrism, and the vessel of the holy chalice, the grave became an open field. Oh, so it's saying you could resurrect the dead with those three items. That's and Exuchopaba is one of the. Uh, you can you can put that into the lore. I think I think Exuchopaba is supposed to be like one of the cult. Gods, the one responsible probably for, um, probably the red god, the the one that's responsible for resurrection, death, and stuff. But then again, it, it is just a um, it is just a um, uh, it is just something to blame and something to kind of uh, take responsibility for something you can't do yourself. Like the crutch thing I said. You don't feel strong enough. I can't do it. Well, like Suchapaba is like really good about this stuff. Um, so I'm going to go back up and read this stuff. Um, I do wonder if people get distracted by thinking everything is to do with sexual frustration. Since you're, Yeah, that's what I was saying. Since when you're trying to find some deeper meaning in an art form, the easiest thing to relate to is humanity and its desire for procreation. Sex is just a theory. Yep. See, Silent Hill is based on that relatability, which is why Silent Hill 2, people like to, uh, they'd like to inject a little bit more into it, even though, like, they already relate to it, which is why they keep coming back to it. There's a lot of themes to relate to in this game. Um, and, and people feel like they're kind of, they're so alone, because in, in essence, you are, you are so alone in your, in your thoughts and feelings. Um, and, the, and no one will quite understand what it is you go through, even from a day-to-day -day basis, you know. Um... And you're like, oh, Silent Hill gets me. So you're like, well, obviously Silent Hill's about sexual frustration because I could sure use some. <laughs> that's, you know, that's kind of, kind of, in a nutshell, and very, I guess, blatant, what I think. Oh, God, bugs. Okay. Hey, Duke Estrada, I hope you're enjoying lunch. And Sigma and Dean, hello, I don't know if I greeted you. I don't think I did. Exude Chilpaba sounds like an Aztec deity. I think that's kind of the inspiration, yeah. Oh god, I can't read this memo with you here. Man, it's really hard to accept the death of Amy Baldwin, isn't it? I mean, it seems like everything's trying to keep you from getting what you need, what you want, to bring her back, and you could, you could get over this pain! Oh, isn't that... You think that was intentional? 
that th this is here and that there are enemies around that attack you when you try to read it. There's some kind of plate on the floor. Amy Baldwin. She was loved too much by God. And I hope the tiger too. Seven years was not enough time. Tiger. I know that I know. Ernest, if only you believed in the tiger, you could bring her back that way. Yeah, the tiger can do anything. Okay. We're, we're taking it too far. The tiger is becoming our, our little deity, isn't it? <laughs> the tiger in space is also a reference to sexual frustration. <laughs> Which is really funny. The great leap into the void. The sexual frustration. <laughs> Gotta fill those holes, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Of depression. Uh, you got, you gotta. Jump, always jumping in the halls. Um, keep out of haunted mansion. There, it's telling you that Ernest is a spirit. Oh yeah, we didn't go back to talk to Ernest. What? Whoops. We're gonna go back to talk to him because he does have more dialogue. There's no anti-tiger. Yes, there is. You gotta have- with good, you must also have bad. With sex, you must also have death. <laughs> but of course, you know, when you're having sex, you don't want to be thinking about death. That's really weird. But, you know, then again, you know, since those both happen to, uh, center- the same centers of the brain, um, this is why you have, you know, like, um, Interesting kinks and fetishes uh, That like autoerotic asphy asphyxiation is one of those um, bondage and stuff You think miracles really can happen This is Silent Hill Yeah, maybe that's the problem miracles can happen yeah you think too much. I'm from here. This is my town. And this is my TV overlay! You think miracles really can happen? With a TV overlay! This is Silent Hill. Miracles can happen! Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Even better with a slow TV overlay zoom! You think too much. I'm from here. This is my town. Oh boy, I really need to clean the screen off though. I can't really see the game. God, this is like the first uh, TV I had. It's so dark. Like the tube was going out in it. Oh boy, this is nostalgia. Yeah, Licorice, I was thinking the same thing. Ernest is the mayor. Oh, God, I hate that theory. Little Poober, I hate that theory. I hate a lot of theories, okay? I'm going to work because I'm super essential. Stop being so essential, Licorice. But yes, I'm glad you are. Enjoy work. Oh, how did I get over here? Hey, we don't use this scene very often. <laughs> And now I think I know why. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, and staying safe during this whole, uh, you know, uh, economic situation. You could say also the, the outbreak. Um, um, I don't think I've heard any 
bad news as far as you, you know my community goes, but you know. Bro Reynolds, you're vaping with me. I do care a lot about all of you. I do. Oh yeah. Get it. Yes, Galump friend. <laughs> Anthony Bray, happy Saturday to you too. Um, so we got to what? Uh, oh my god. I have a sense of orientation now. I know where I am. Oh my god. Right? This is in the main game. Oh, here's a map too, even. Well, if she takes the map, isn't that a continuity error? Doesn't that mean that you'd be a rip, break, ripping a... You'd just be ripping a hole in the space and time! Because <laughs> I picked up the map in my other game. Oh, no! Um, with, uh, with me having to work tonight, isn't bad news for the community? Yes, it is. We like having you around, Licorice. But, you know, are you off Sunday? Tomorrow, I'm gonna be doing some more. So, not all is lost. I have three-day stream for everybody, so everyone can make it. So, up here on the, on the top floor is, uh, kind of pointless. But we can take a look and see if any rooms, uh, can be entered. But I don't think they can. Right? Perfect emo joy. Oh my god, a room full of mannequins. Is this, uh, something we could use? It's a safe, but I don't feel it. <laughs> oh my god. What happens if Maria dies? Wouldn't that be a, um, uh, time paradox? That's what it's called. If, if I, if Maria dies in this playthrough, it's a paradox! Um. Or, wait a second. She she dies plenty of times. Never mind. It's not a paradox because well, she already dies a bunch and comes back. So what what's the big deal? <laughs> I like this. Disgusting! Exclamation mark! Disgusting! <laughs> I'll allow it right now. I'll allow it. Actually, it's been unmuted. Seriously. Um, uh, now, now the town will just make a new one. Yep. Every time she comes back, she's bigger and better. Of doing something so disgusting. Hmm. I think she's thinking about it. <laughs> ah! I, I can't read anything! <laughs> I have to read. I want to read. I can see the apartment next door from the window. Well, of course, it wouldn't be unlocked yet. It's a safe, but I, I don't know how to open it. Maria doesn't even try. God, Maria. She needs a big man. <laughs> around here she's bigger and better every time that's right looky looky evan swift 88 welcome to the chat it's locked Okay, just as I thought. Oh, wait. Well, this is rather pointless. That you can go in here. No point to this. Hey, Tatito. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to uh, the stream. We're doing the lore run very heavy on the analysis, you know. Uh, this should take me to the alley that runs to the park. But first, I'd better take care of my promise to Ernest. Otherwise, I would not have his full perspective to inform my own. I, you know, I should have put that there. Because <laughs> Maria is kind of influenced by Ernest. 
Canine Dreams, hello. Well, it's good to see all of you. Welcome. K9, you like never chat, but it's good to see you. Maybe this is why uh, Devin Shatsky said he hated locked doors so much. <laughs> it's like, God! <laughs> oh, Sanasuke! 31 bits, thank you. Uh, bought 10 to do 69. Oh my God, you could do 69 over and over again. I wouldn't mind. Just keep spamming it. <laughs> Maybe you could do it 69 times. Um... I gotta drink more water. Yes, yeah, good to see you. Health drink. What'd she say about this? Just white chrism? Something is written on, on the desk, but it's too dark to read and I don't care. <laughs> I got the white liquid. Yeah, she really just doesn't care. And there's the save point from the base game. Uh, let's go back then. I, I know all the doors are locked. Hey, Keys, welcome. I like to see that, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of people now. Uh, a lot of, lot of the regulars. Four hours late again. That's fine. I mean, Saturday, I wanted to sleep in more. Honestly, I really did. I didn't get much. But I started like I said I would at the time I said I would. But it was a rough start because of uh, Streamlabs mostly. But also, I was sluggish. I had to get energy up. Uh, I, I should mention that we have not yet gotten the wheel. Um, and I wouldn't mind it after this scenario. You know, if you if you throw some gift subs, maybe if you uh, share a resub, uh, there's got to be some coming up. Um, uh, I, that will put points to the wheel. A Twitch Prime sub or a regular sub? Continuous sub. That works too. I will add it to the wheel if you continue one. Uh, it would mean a lot if you commit. That commitment. Um, but no one likes commitment. <laughs> um, tired, but I want to see the end of the scenario. I know how you feel, Joy. <laughs> but you don't have to be here if you want to sleep. All right. The scenario is the end is coming. Yes, the end is near. Okay. Thank you, Maria. That's the only item I couldn't get myself. By the time I found out about it, I could no longer leave this house. So long. So yes, poor. But will Maria, the gods are here. You know it too. You were born in this town. Yeah, so what? I'm not sure God is the right word. It, God is not the right word. It's the tiger. The tiger in space. Do you believe in fate? Not really. That's fine, then. Tiger in the sky. Ernest, I like that. Can I open this? You believe in fate? He's throwing all these questions at me. There's nothing beyond here. Yes, I know. I know. See, she says I know, but she still wants to open the door. So... That says a lot. What if I had said I believed in fate? What if I said something that different? Guy. He's a bad man. Bargaining. James. Is she going through the five stages here? Oh my god. Let me think about it. Yeah, she does have like a line that kind of goes along with the five stages of grief.
the Nile. Arginine. Yes. I know. Yeah, that James, he's a bad man. I know. He's looking for the you. That isn't you. Because he's kind? Because he's kind. <laughs> know something? Yes. Maria, you're... Anyway, that's just what you think. Yes, you're... You don't really know I don't anything. care. That's fine. She doesn't want to hear the truth. Okay. So denial there. Oh, and this part's good. How does Ernest know about James? Probably because he's a manifestation of James's spirit. I don't know. Oh my God. Are those OJ Simpson's gloves? They are, aren't they? I love that. She is confronted with the truth. Everything, you know, she's that, you know, it's like you could consider that as a revelation. What just happened with the vertigo effect. She had a revelation or, or, uh, you can consider it as his spirit was rushing out and he was released. But either way, she knew the room was going to be empty. That's, that's kind of the thing. Uh, it was his birthday present, the driver. It was a pair of gloves. Yeah, Amy really just wanted to frame her father for the murder <laughs> of O.J. Simpson's murder. This scene right here is really so poetic. And the fog looks gorgeous. She is so- I like this shot right here, too. This shot is fantastic because it kind of shows how clouded her mind is, too. It's very metaphoric. Like, this shot really shows you a good view of the fog. She is so clouded. And she does contemplate suicide. But she- she's- she chooses. She chooses, knowing what she knows, she chooses to deny it and continue what she's doing. It's not necessary. It could be fate. They throw a lot of questions at you. Mary? No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? My name is Maria. Sign of Doom was filmed for the live studio audience. <laughs> um, so, you know, isn't it kind of like perfect when it comes to complimenting the, uh, the main story? Because even Maria, you know, a manifestation of James's is kind of going through the same kind of denial. It's perfect. Um, she releases Ernest from his pain. She knows James is bad, but continues to go meet him. 
she knows Ernest isn't behind the door, still opens it. When he tries to tell her she's not real, she says, I don't care, and cuts him off. Still, I wouldn't throw away that gun. It's, yeah, I don't know what happened. Did Laura ever find that gun? <laughs> yeah, this side story is fantastic. Whoa! <laughs> Felt that McNasty. That's a lot of support today. Your lore ones are the absolute best. I appreciate it, Felt McNasty. Um, nice to see you. I appreciate that kind of support. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> yeah, oh my K9, thank you. I really appreciate those five subs. I mean like holy crap, thank you. I, I hope some of the new people here today got some. Oh uh, we got we got a lot of new people for this lore run. Uh, yeah, E.M. Ragunner, Ragunner, you got it, M. Ragunner, uh, Soul Kit Channel, Dolomore, Melanie K, Stone 503, 503, so there's still some that could use to give some, <laughs> imagine if James had found the gun, had to kill Mario with it at the end, full circle, yeah, that gun never gets found. Oh, right here. Uh, whoa, <laughs> I was like, why didn't he... Why does it make a sound every time? <laughs> they just deleted that. Zanasuke, what? That was, I didn't know. What? This theory I've been kicking around uh, is, well, is Lorda real? <laughs> no. I think Laura knows who James is, and I think James also knows who Laura like he's already met her um this dialogue here makes kind of a lot more sense if you look at it that way that Laura is not real no <laughs> no that that James is fully aware of who she is they have met uh you know because he would go see Mary and he'd have this stone look on his face when going to see her he'd be dead you know he would be just overwhelmed in grief and he you know of course remembering Laura um you know would bring back you know negative memories so you know he kind of repressed Laura along with Mary um and what he did and the fact that she even got sick he repressed he never really even talks about how long she was sick you you know when you hear him talk about Mary was sick uh and died you think that she just got sick and died and it wasn't that long it was like a week or two no, she was sick for three years. Um, she only met Laura last year, which means that, you know, within a year, they have known each other. He, he had to have, he killed Mary. It only makes sense that he would have, you know, bumped into her at some point in time. And all the dialogue makes more sense too. If you think of it that way, that he's just repressing Laura. Um, along with the bad memories that come along with remembering Laura. Uh, Laura could be a tool used to inflict more guilt. Yeah, I don't think Laura's real. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I don't entertain like any theory that says that she's just there, uh, manifested or like, she's just, she's not really real. And uh, I, I, I don't entertain any of that because I do know, I, I do really feel like she is real. I mean, there's a lot to suggest she is, but um, you know, this game is interpretive and whatever you want to think uh, there are there he dreamed up and imagined a letter right what's to say he didn't dream up and imagine everything but you know the other letter that mentions Laura and and James and and Mary's talking about how he wanted to adopt her for all you know that could be imagined too um uh she's she's just isn't seeing the monsters right uh the reason why brass petals yeah, that's right. I did a Twitch Sings Purple Hellion in uh, Hollywood. You, did you miss it? Oh, the category? 
It, it says Silent Hill 2, though. Uh, can you guys confirm that for me? Um, but anyway, brass pedals, yeah. What I was saying earlier is that, of course, she wouldn't see the monsters. No. She's not gonna see the monsters because, well, if, if this theory, I feel like, is legit and holds water, um, people are talking a lot. I'm just trying to catch up while also explain myself. Um, you know, if this theory does, and it does hold water, if, if it is true, like, what Silent Hill basically is doing is it's manifesting, you know, James's psyche upon the real world. So it's, it's a game about perspective. So you're seeing the game through James's lens. You're seeing it through his point of view. He's an unreliable narrator, and yes, um, you can't really take anything, uh, you see, you know, you have to kind of take everything with a grain of salt and just kind of interpret it. Um, uh, if that does hold water, um, you know, um, brass pedals, uh, then she wouldn't see the monsters. Um, hold on. I gotta, I gotta lead up to it better. She's gonna see just the normal town, uh, because, well, what's happening is everyone's kind of going through these stages of grief. Um, five stages of grief, and everyone's in a, a form of denial, and and uh, she um, doesn't really have. Uh, she hasn't really been confronted with it, anything yet. She doesn't. She's not grieving. She's the only character that really isn't. Um, besides Maria, which we don't know if, if she's real or not. So yeah. Laura isn't going to be seeing monsters because the monsters, while well, they're James's. All the monsters, including Pyramid Head, are James's monsters. Um, and everyone kind of sees their own thing in Silent Hill. Like, you see Eddie, who, who said he did see monsters, but they crossed over. And perspectives do cross over. It's a metaphoric and literal thing. They, like, you do you inform, get informed of someone's perspective, you start to see eye to eye with them. So it's kind of that metaphoric, literal thing going on. You see eye to eye th with them and you kind of understand them better and then you kind of see their monsters. <laughs> and it's like, I don't need your baggage, man. Um, <laughs> and then you dump them. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going back up to catch up on chat. Give me a second. Sorry, guys. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Lord, I like, uh, I definitely like your guys' interpretations of everything, though. Uh, Emmy, um, uh, it's all about repression, Emmy. It's, it's kind of that psychological repression. He, it's easier to pretend it never happened or it happened a different way, um, than to accept the truth. And what you're doing when you do that is you're prolonging the inevitable and you're just you're never getting better and you're always going to feel bad and uh, you're never going to ever be able to heal. You're just uh, adding salt to the wound and continue. You're just, you know, basically instead of dressing the wound, you know, you just keep stabbing it um, whenever you recall events or, or, or memories that you don't want to recall. Uh, I mean, Eddie just sees her in the bowling alley. Whereas Maria won't even go in. And that's another thing that kind of supports my theory, Regulus Pastor, that Maria um, is basically a manifestation of James's, and for all you know, she isn't even really there at all. Um, but, you know, everything's kind of manifested into the real world. That is my theory. So I do believe she's manifested, but only James, you know, James, you know, wanted, wanted to replace Mary, and it's easier to kind of, like, rebound and with someone that kind of looks like Mary. Oh, okay, Sanosuke, you have a good sleep. Thank you so much for the support, Sanosuke. And uh, hanging out. It's easier to kind of rebound and replace someone than get over the loss of that person. And, you know, that's why re rebounding exists. That's why after a relationship, you bounce out, you, you bounce in with someone else that's just as bad. Um, and you don't wind up with someone that's probably better for you. Um... Yes, it's basically his inner desires. If it's manifest, if Silent Hill is manifesting someone's psyche, right? Um, of course, you know, and manifesting that person's psyche. 
um you know uh it's gonna it's gonna manifest their in their desires um like you know we talk about it all the time sexual frustration sexual frustration sexual frustration <laughs> One of those those things, um, you know, but also it's going to manifest your doubts, your insecurities, your conscience is going to be displayed real time, you know, like that sub goal there, uh, that uh, that that live subscriber count, which I did turn the conversation around now, didn't I? <laughs> I I just looked at it and I'm like, holy crap, 719, that's that's a lot, <laughs> holy crap. So yes, uh, so if you really are hungry and you really desire pizza, well, you just go to the bowling alley with Eddie, where you can just sit there and eat pizza. <laughs> um, that is a plug, kind of, Vorpal Map, but mo I'm more kind of blown away. It's over 700. <laughs> Maybe we can get it to over 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't ask for that. Well, listen to the best music. I'm listening to Fog. <laughs> the relaxing sounds of Fog. Order now! That's right. The relaxing sounds of Fog. Order now today! Our agents are standing by. God, I want pizza, too. Man, I want pizza. So, we're gonna wait. Okay, what happened? I guess my stream deck was messed up. <laughs> so. All right, I screwed that transition up. <laughs> I was gonna do something else, but all right. So going into this, um, yeah, you want a wheel, Chris John. I know you do. Going into this with the thought process that I think James fu is fully aware of who Laura is, but he never gave her the time of day. Because every time he saw her, he was just reminded of that life that he dreamed of with Mary that he could never have, you know, having children. He gave all that away. He, I mean, that was all kind of, he didn't give it away. It was, it was pretty much thrown out the window the second Mary got sick. His desire to have children. So, of course, you know, looking at Laura, he's just reminded of how, how grief-stricken he is and how his life is just terrible and he wants to, he wants to be happy and he just, uh, Mary, what happened to Mary? And, you know, he just gets all sad again. So, you know, he's repressing Mary along with the thoughts of, of Laura. And, you know, later she does say, huh, you know my name? I mean, like, right there, it kind of makes you think, oh, oh, they're just meeting, you know, he, that's proof right there that, that Laura, you know, and James have never really met. No, uh, when she, you know, she says, huh, you know my name, as if it's like a big deal, you know, for her to get that kind of attention from James that now it's like, wow, I, I was always ignored and kind of pushed away and just like, you know, he, he never even cared or bothered to learn my name. And she was kind of like blown away by that. Like, but maybe, maybe he is really starting to care about me. So look at it. I like that theory. And I think I'm going to go with it for now until the game changes and uh, breaks my theory. So let's go. You! It was you, wasn't it? You're the one who stepped on my hand. I don't know. Maybe I did. What's a little girl like you doing here, anyway? Huh? Are you blind or something? So the huh, are you blind or something, What's it's like, letter? you know me. None of your business. You know, for all you know, and I really do kind of... You didn't love Mary anyway. You didn't love Mary anyway. She seems How to you know, know him. Mary's name? But, you know, just... Being told about someone is not enough. You could be told about someone, but you could meet them and, and not really know anything in the end. It's not until you meet someone you know them. So, you know, she says, are you, you know, I really do kind of support, also if that theory works, then I also support the theory that uh, they arrived together. You know, he, he apparently Mary's in the car. He just can't see her. She's in the passenger seat. 
she and he says there's nothing in the passenger seat uh it, it is his perspective and uh Edo did try to say she was in the car not in the trunk though yeah she's not in the trunk so i guess maybe laura and him arrived together and she just ran off ahead of him so whatever she did this or or not i mean like people do ask how she got to silent hill and what she's doing running around in the in silent hill like this it seems kind of weird don't know it this game is interpretive and i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't you know claim anything i'm saying is fact none of it is but i really do feel confident i i've always been really good about you know Throwing away theories that don't hold water, that don't aren't really supported by any in-game evidence or or in inference. I throw those out, and I'm really good about keeping the ones that really you know that that really do hold water and, and can work. Um And she's picking on him, right? Like like she knows him. Yeah. Just the normal wall. The graffiti looks like it was done by a child. You know, he's so oblivious to who she is. You know, huh, you know my name, what a revelation, you know. You know, it, this is a big deal. It's like, hey guys. You learn, you actually cared to remember my name, that's a big deal. You know, sometimes, you know, you will f run into people like that. Who, who really don't give a crap about, about you and don't, even after like months and months of working with a person or something. You work with them and they won't even, they still don't know your name. Uh, you know, so that's what it's about. So this is that park. Mary, are you here? Yeah, good idea. You think so? Hanging around by Eddie's van in the FMV trailer. Yeah. But, uh, it doesn't really mean anything. In fact, uh, I actually analyzed that scene before before the lore run. Um, I think what's happening is she and him ran into each other. He's, like, sitting there on the ground looking at a map, and it looks like maybe she ran into him, and he was, like, lost and kind of asking her for directions or something. And she just kind of kicks him. Um, you know, like, are you stupid? Come all the way to Silent Hill. You don't know where the bowling alley is. You don't know where the best pizza is. <laughs> Laura had to teach him how to sit there and eat pizza correctly. <laughs> Even with all the monsters around. Um, how would you respond? I probably would just give him a weird look and go back to what I was doing. <laughs> well, thanks for asking, Dexter. Can't believe James kidnapped the girl and brought her to Silent Hill. I guess I don't know. I mean, that 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 whole thing about her arriving to Silent Hill with James. There's nothing that really supports that, so I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna really feed into that. But you know what's really kind of cool is you know we talked about the monuments yesterday um there's a bunch of monuments that um what's it's they're kind of it's irony here uh w this game does talk a lot about there is a parallel a common theme between all the monuments and that common theme is uh this remembering well always remember well that's what monuments are for but always will be remembered but here's the ironic part is that they're deteriorating and what the meaning behind them is is lost so, in fact, you know, they are forgotten. <laughs> so, that's the irony. Um, so here's one. Yeah, like Keta Hajime said, uh, Laura has definitely seen James before. Because, well, she and her were at the same hospital, and he was constantly at the hospital trying to get her help and trying to find out how to help her. And, you know, like, there's a lot of he tried everything he says it and uh you know why wouldn't he have run into laura there's another thing they had the same nurse 
Of course he's gonna go to the nurse. How was Mary today? You know, like, that's kind of a way to distance yourself from the pain of visiting Mary is to, you know, contact her doctor or nurse and be like, how's she doing? <laughs> um, I suppose the, the little girl, she does not remember the name. He, and she remembers him for sure, of course. She's got, you know, kids remember. Holy crap, they do. Uh, all right. Yeah, Chris John. I like that. Yes, the monuments are big, but no, the most important thing is how they talk. This is interesting. So, the ironic part, we're gonna get to it. The punchline. Here we go. Patrick Chester, son of Edward. He fought and died for the people. For liberty! And for all our tomorrows! His memory lives on! You see the problem? You see a problem here? The monument has broken down to the point where we'll never even know if he had arms. <laughs> Did he even have a head? I don't know. Did it- is he riding the horse with only three legs? <laughs> the- Did the horse have a head? Well, his memory may not actually be living on. He has deteriorated, and this is kind of a common theme too, time. He has deteriorated over time. And just like the stone monument at the beginning of the game that has the scratches and the words are blanked out, and you kind of have to read between the lines, which is kind of important for the beginning of the game. You have to read between the lines, which is how you understand Silent Hill 2 better. Uh, it has deteriorated to the point where, like, the meaning of that monument is, is pretty much lost if you can't read between the lines, if you can't understand how to fill in the blanks. Uh, and it does say at the end, uh, something like, you know, it, it seems to be for the best that the villagers seem to have forgotten or moved on from the area, which is kind of interesting. It's best that they have moved on. And that's kind of the theme of Silent Hill 2. Actually, I just connected that. The monument is a first impression, and first impressions are the most important thing. And so, you know, they talked about that. And the monument says at the very end, it's for the best they have moved past that. Bad history. Moving, because that's the point of this game. James is stuck in the cycle of purgatory, in denial, unwilling to accept the truth looking for solutions right and uh well until it, perhaps it's for the best that he move on so that's kind of pretty cool there's a lot of uh, it's like poetry it rhymes there's a lot of that let's look at other monuments and i am reading your messages guys i'm just not out loud all the time yeah just just want to be sure that you know um amazing comments funk i i will just clap because you got to have guts to play this dark grim game it is hard my oh my masseuse <laughs> wow four months of support well thank you masseuse uh i'm super late but i can enjoy this run while it lasts it's not over yet no <laughs> it's not over yet <laughs> It is a hard game to to law run because it's a it, I have to think about things I don't want to think about in my past um you know to really get the point across I have to think about the things that I don't want to think about and it's hard that's kind of interesting you know um that I have to recall those things you know for that relatability you guys can understand me better um why I think the way I do I guess um destroyed by weather vandals yeah well it was just time dexter but yeah i mean like that's possible well thank you monsieur um monsieur <laughs> oh thank you so much but yes uh there are more monuments and in, in fact i i don't know if the uh, i think the other one's accessible now but we'll look uh there's one about jennifer carroll and you know there's all these big names right 
It's like, you know, I know their names, but you know, the whole meaning. What is what is missing? The moral, like the, the actual moral of the story in these monuments, you don't really know. Um You know that 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 Patrick Chester guy. It's like, well, what did he do? He he died, but what did he do? <laughs> well that is what I'm talking about. That has been lost. In fact, you know, if you can't read a monument and uh, be informed of what it was that he should be remembered for, well, that I guess that monument's not very good, is it? <laughs> um. Yes, that's right, Emmy. This is like uh, shattered memories. It's playing me more than I'm playing it. Yeah, I think that you know a lot of aspects of this game too. Adm Tukowski, by the way, welcome. Uh, you know, even Team Silent probably didn't figure out, you know, like, the answer to. They just thought, so maybe some things they just thought were cool or, or kind of like, you know, fit really well. And Perhaps Patrick Chester was just one of those names they just, like, threw in there because it sounded like something important. And it even says, you know, like, it's kind you know, it says, what, son of Edward? And it's like, who the hell is Edward, you know? That, the Edward, that's kind of another thing. It's like, his father, all you know now is, like, all you know now is just his name. Not anything about what Edward did. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's kind of interesting, the monuments and how they weathered over time. And the memory has been, it's ironic. Will never be forgotten, but in fact, forgotten. And, you know, this, this is a common theme in Silent Hill too, because, well... It's trying to encourage James, and James also wants this. It's trying to encourage James to remember the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But he he he's unwilling. Because every time he gets close to, you know, actually trying to accept it, it hurts, and he goes backwards. Um, and he does that time and time again in the game, too. Like how Maria dies... And he still is unwilling to accept she's dead, and she comes right back. She dies again, comes right back. It's just like that denial. Right? Makes sense? All right, we're gonna watch this wonderful cutscene. Give me a break and uh, I, I, movie time. Popcorn, everyone! Get some popcorn here! Popcorn! Mary? No, you're not. Do I look like your girlfriend? No, my late wife. I can't believe it. You could be her twin. Your face, your voice, just your hair and clothes are different. My name is Maria. I don't look like a uh, ghost, do I? See? Feel how warm I am? Ooh. You're really not Mary. <laughs> I told you, I'm Maria. I mean, Sorry. She, she's totally a manifestation confused. of his sexual frustration. <laughs> I'm looking for Mary. Have you seen her? She's so seductive and easy. Didn't you say she died? Oh yeah, three years ago. But I got a letter from her. She says she was waiting in our special place and that's here anyway i haven't seen her yeah it's a Kelsey. Here? only special place i would love it if dlc just not uh you know didn't exist um hey you're right though born from a wish wouldn't have happened i guess See, he's starting to remember things, right? Well, there's the hotel. And it's painful. Too, That's guess. why I saw Grainy. The one on the lake? I wonder if it's still there. The Lakeview Hotel? Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, to think about. So it. the hotel was your special place, huh? I'll bet it was. Don't get so mad. I was just joking. Anyway, it's not that way. It's this way. I know, like if I I like that. I bet it was. <laughs> You're coming with me? 
You were gonna just leave me? No, but... With all these monsters around? No, I just... I'm all alone here. Everyone what a girl. Gone. Like him easy. I look like Mary, don't I? You loved her, right? Boy! <laughs> <laughs> you hated her. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. So it's okay? Yeah, fine. She is fierce. That, that, that's a good way to explain it. Um, You know, he's looking for a replacement for Mary. You know, like this is like his plan B. It kind of manifested. She kind of came out of nowhere, born from a wish. Um, And, you know, she's also, she I don't know, she came sporting. Christina Aguilera's wardrobe from 1999 Teen Summer Choice Awards. Wow! Maria, you look phenomenal! Smoking. But if you look closely there in the bottom left, it, it's a pixel on your screen. <laughs> Her tattoo? <clears throat> Stop covering. I'm looking at it. Um, it's a butterfly, and butterflies are kind of a theme of Silent Hill 1 as well. Um, butterflies, in fact, represent rebirth in a lot of religions, uh, a lot of spiritual beliefs. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, a lot of people know that. Um, because, well, I mean, what do they do? They are a caterpillar transformed into that, and that's kind of like, you know, a phenomenon. Swing <laughs> like that. Yomi itch boy, hello. The fog is really one of the most important things. I can't see the environments clearly. This is fantastic. I love it. So, so good. There's another monument. And, uh, unfortunately. If only two more people would have died. <laughs> because we could have had uh, 69. Yeah, baby. 69 who died of illness. The 69 who died of illness. And now sleep beneath the lake. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's if only two more die. Uh, so yeah, it's talking about memory. But here's the thing: we know later, but we don't know. But later, it's further explained in the little Baroness memo. But here's the thing about that memo: because well, where he is, it's outside time and space. It's illogical. It's not really supposed to be there. A prison that is from the 18th, 1800s that. It's not even on, on the map. It, it's just not supposed to be there. So when you find that memo, how do you know that's even a legit memo? The little Baroness. I mean, like, of course, Konami made it canon. <laughs> All the memos pretty much were made canon later. Um, But we don't know, just looking at this monument, what this is even about. I don't know what it's about. So the memory... It's iron it, irony. That's all that is. It's like the memory is gone. Because I don't know what the hell that's talking about. Who died? Why? Who? What? Hmm. What happened? Um, did the tiger take him? Oh. They're with the tiger now. Do you know uh, what the heck is the statue of the two guys shaking hands? Where is that, Yomi Ichimoy? Because I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I was looking around for monuments yesterday. I didn't see him. I didn't see that one. Um. Yeah, moths, I think, uh, could be. Yeah, whatever you want. Uh, Inveneron. Oh, wait, no, it was Duke. Duke Estrada. By the way, welcome. Inveneron, Duke Estrada. Water ending. Do you know what the heck the statue... Uh, oh, yeah, I've read that. I do that a lot. Um. Here's another statue or monument that's important. Important in that, like, the moral... That it's not important. <laughs> That's, it's it's important in that it's not and that the memory it's the irony of it so yeah I guess so. oh my god monsieur you're right okay going back to that other monument 
Oh my god, the in water ending would make 69. <laughs> dip, with an tempo. Yeah, that's right, in the in water ending. And it's gotta be canon. It's gotta be canon. <laughs> All right. It would be uh, 69. We know what happened to them then. Here it is. Victim of persecution by the Puritans. Jennifer Carroll lived with pride and honor. What happened here shall never be forgotten. What happened? <laughs> I'm lost because I don't know what happened. Lost? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess she was burned. You know, see, that's the interesting thing. And if you can read between the lines, yes. If you can read between the lines and, and uh, gather information using inference, which this game relies on. Yes. You have to piece together all the little tiny details through the game. You kind of get more of the story. But the monument alone, kind of, it, it's defeating the purpose of the monument. <laughs> And remembering you could say it will be remembered forever but will it be <laughs> if especially if there's no one around to care there's no one around okay like who's gonna be here to remember this stuff so we're gonna go now wait there's maybe another monument I don't know although it's nearest to where you find Maria on, on the shore of the park are you sure about that <laughs> um Puns, right? I'm running around, just not sure. <laughs> I love that thought process, Dexter, because that's what, what they're trying to do, I think. That's my thought. They're trying to make you think, this person has to be important. So that you focus on it a little too much, and then, you know, it kind of... Uh, that that way it can kind of uh, get away with kind of like you know th you know throwing things at you here and there that you're gonna totally miss it's like throwing the balls it's a curveball and you miss the one that you should catch uh, I'm looking okay you can oh you can't I can't find it hey notes wait is that notes yeah it is I was like, where have you been? <laughs> I keep running into her. <laughs> I'm like, Ugh, get out of my way. I have to find stuff. Oh, hot dogs, baby. Pretzels. Get your pretzels here. I'm looking. Wait, maybe we could look in the cl Oh my god. It could be like downpour. <laughs> you could look through that thing. The scope. Hey, Agent Smith. Welcome. Bazinga, I keep running into her. Wait, you talking about this one? You said there. I'm looking, okay? Shaking hands, I'm looking. Get back a little, I'm looking. Junkyard dog, hello. Get your junkyard dogs here! Too far back? Am I too far back? I, I, I'm not aware of what you're talking Is it over here? Like, up on there? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going back up. See, that's kind of, um, just the further what I was talking about, Dexter. Just, you know, I didn't mean to sound rude if I did. Um, uh, the, you know, they do that with Walter Sullivan time and time again, too. Walter Sullivan in Silent Hill 2 is not important. Junkyard dog. <laughs> Holy crap. You just gave out five gift subs. Well, thank you so much, Junkyard. <laughs> Holy crap. Five subs went out, guys.
from the junkyard dog thank you so much i appreciate it i wonder how many how many gift subs have you actually given now i want i missed that i want to go back out and kind of was that okay you've done five before but that that's that's yeah that's not too common from you i appreciate it uh forest ttam uh cx strife matsui 1323 three item you two and huey freeman 32 and <laughs> I, that's so funny that um, the people here in the chat, like Agent Smith and Yomi Ichimoy, didn't get any. I was like, it always goes out to the most random people sometimes. But if you're out there, you get got to thank Junkyard Dog. Um, yes, get your Junkyard Dogs here. <laughs> Is there a real life person called Jonathan Carroll? He's a fiction writer. Yeah, I imagine that might have something to do with it. I don't know. Oh, what's that? You've been running around with your wife notes and daughter? A good Silent Hill night? Well, you're going to have it. Yes. It's going to be a good Silent Hill night. Oh, I see. I just saw your message, Junkyard. Something is wrong here. I don't see enough badges. Yeah, it didn't go out to them. <laughs> That's funny. I was just thinking the same thing. All right. I'm going to go back to the game. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I am. It looks like I've made no progress. If you if you were here at the end of the stream yesterday, and you're just getting here today, you're like, wait a second. He literally has been standing in the same spot since yesterday? No, I mean, like, a lot has happened between, but... <laughs> I didn't see that thing, though. I really didn't see that thing you were talking about. And, uh, well, I, I'm always happy to learn learn more, Yomi Ichimoy. But I didn't see it. And I tried to follow your directions, but I, I don't really have time. Especially if you can't interact with it. But yeah, like I was saying, um, uh, the the Walter Sullivan before Silent Hill 4 the room became into existence uh, was more so just the red herring. Um, but also it kind of is another perspective to help you inform your own, um, which this game does, you know, it's all about. Uh, he killed himself with a spoon, which shows, you know, if you really want to kill yourself, James, you just have to have a, you just you use anything to do it. <laughs> That's what it's trying to say. Oh my God, yes, we're doing it. It's going to happen. That's right. This lore run, we're going to get the real canonical ending. We all know is the true ending of Silent Hill. We all know it. Don't be in denial. <laughs> Don't be in denial about it. Um, which so you can play Heavy Rain for PC now? Ain't that cool? Really? Hmm. Uh, I never really had any, you know, any reason to go back to it. Which is why, uh, you know, I probably wouldn't get it. That's right, the dog ending. <laughs> We're gonna get this ending. What? What, Maria? Don't you want to dance along? <laughs> what, you don't want to dance with me? What's your problem, Maria? What's your problem, Maria? You won't do the pole dance. I just remembered, I just realized something. This is the highlight of every stream. This is the highlight of my streams. This, this is what I do now. Maria! You know a dog's behind all this, right? It's the dog. Okay, 
Okay, I'm done. <laughs> We're getting the dog key. Yep, yeah, baby. I got the dog key from the doghouse. <laughs> I said I was done. <laughs> we we kind of jumped the gun on the dog ending. Well, we got it. <laughs> That's pretty much it. All right. I got to go back up. I saw a new name. I got to say hi. And I didn't read your message, so I feel rude. Let's go back up. It was a while ago. <laughs> wow, where, where, where are you? Holy crap, I missed it. Maybe I'm looking too far. Misfit, that's one. Misfit, hi, welcome. Uh, there it is, Clayton uh, Mattisheck 2000. You finally got to catch a stream. Clayton, right? Well, thank you so much for being here. I hope everyone's gonna, uh, well, you gonna, you know it's gonna be a great stream now. <laughs> Dog ending. Yeah, Maria's just judging me. Judging me. Hi, Omar Sheriff. How are you doing? <laughs> Misfit, welcome. I'm just kind of wandering around in the fog. Lost. 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 Dry cleaners. <laughs> it's like, hey, Vinny, let's take him to the dry cleaners. Yeah, let's waste him. <laughs> um, it's really hard to see where I'm going with this fog, and that, that's good. The update number five of the enhanced edition is like, it's, I don't know how they did it in such a short amount of time. They improved the game so much. Oh my god, what's this? What's this road? Was that a glitch or is that the texture of the road? Is it really that bad? It looks like a dirty JPEG. <laughs> well, at least they're not clean. You know, it, it could be the HD edition. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the, the streets, you know? It could be this piece of crap! <laughs> and it's not, so... But it looks like a really bad, dirty JPEG. Well, maybe that's the next thing they're gonna do. It's time for a uh, uh, a texture upscale project or something. So clean or pure? Not at all. No. No, it's, it could use some Photoshop. Like, you know, maybe, you know, soften it a little. Make it look like a cartoon that's out of place. <laughs> this is this is kind of cool. So we're gonna get we're gonna try to get a bunch of endings this lore run. So we're collecting we're kind of playing the game in such a way that we could uh, get whatever ending uh, we can get. Uh, like I'm gonna try to get. I know I can get at least three endings. At the very end, I could change it up and get all the endings. But I can get three. There's five. Uh, the UFO ending. It's not, I don't think it's possible. I think there's six, actually. We, yeah, there's six. So we can get three... Hold on a second. Yeah, we can get three endings in one run. But if we're, if we do it just right, if we play the game just right, we can get, um, a fourth ending, uh, where we can kind of influence that ending just by, you know, little things like listening to the audio tapes at the end. You can listen to the hallway conversation. And those little things can really uh, change your whole ending. It's better so much. Guys, this is your favorite game. Book of Lost Memories. <laughs> Wait, Book of Memories. Yeah. We have to... See, I'm in denial. I, I like to pretend that game doesn't exist. Um... But every time I look at this, I, I think of it. So, yeah, time for Book of Memories. Did I make, didn't I make that a lore run? Or I mean like a channel point thing? Yeah, wheelchair points you could spend <laughs> to get me to play it. Right? Didn't I do that? Yeah, I did. I'm going back up because I did miss that. What, what were you linking there with the Rosewater Park handshake? Oh, you got a link for me. Thank you. 
Head ahead, Jime, with the goods. We're going to take a look at it so I, I can see what it means or what it is. How did I miss it? I guess it is there. I, I forgot about it. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I remember it, but I forgot about it because, well, that's kind of the point. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that what I think of that monument that you just pointed out, it's two headless people ha doing a handshake. But the point of it is, what is that about? Yeah, I think because they are headless, well, we don't know what they look like. We don't know their names. Their memories have been lost. Uh, like how uh, the book of lost memories, we got to read this. <laughs> Hi, Quesadilla, Crow Reynolds. Hello, you two. It's from, oh, thank you, Yomi Ichmoy. I didn't see it when you posted it. Uh, burn it with fire. Uh, I got a book, Lost Memories. Weird glitch. I love, love these memos. Actually, I love all the memos in this game. I like to consider Silent Hill 2 as a digital, uh, what would you call it? It's poetry, but in like a, a playable form. <laughs> Interesting, right? It's kind of like poetry because they're, you know, everything kind of connects in some way. Everything has a common theme they share. Um, it's like when you meet someone, shake their hand, immediately forget their name. Lost memories. Thank you, Super Snoop. Welcome. <laughs> Yeah, that happens all the time. You meet someone and you forget all about the, that meeting. Um, yeah, books, right? We get to read. Um, maybe they're shaking hands because they're bonding over the fact that they don't have heads. Yeah. The name comes from the legend of the people whose land was stolen from them. They called this place, the place of the silent spirits. What do you guys think? How about a reboot called the place of the silent spirits instead of Silent Hill? It just rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> oh, by spirits, they meant not only their dead relatives, but also the, the spirits that they believed inhabited the trees, rocks, and water around them. This memo is kind of important in telling you about the spiritual power um, that this place is is a sacred place, like they say in the Mary says it in the videotape. Um, interactive poetry, right? That's what I meant to say. Silent Hill 2 is my favorite of all the original team, team Silent games. It's, it is a masterpiece, so much, at least to me, yeah. So, so this is uh, important in that it's telling you that uh, the place, see there are, it's forgotten. It's talking about how things, you know, see that who, who, who owned the land before, who, who was warring with this land? Well, we don't know that, that stuff, you know, the details are missing. Um, and it does kind of end. You got to look for, uh, in these, a lot of these memos, it's the last line, like poetry. It's that punchline, like comedy. It's like. The last, last line, or one of them, that's what all this is leading up to. So you got to think of that as that is the true intention is usually the last line or two. Um, you know, like the Acacia memo in the Book of Memories. It's that last few words, the last line. So it all leads up to the punchline. You know, when you're like... <laughs> But really, you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. According to legend, this was where the holiest ceremonies took place. As ancient astronaut theorists say, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, everyone. But it was not the ancestors of those who live in this town that first stole the land from these people. There were others who came before. In those days, this town went by another name. But the name is now hopelessly lost in the veils of time. All we know now is that there was another name. 
and that for some reason, the town was once abandoned by its residents. So, yeah. It's also going along, it's that common theme. It's going along with that whole, everything was forgotten. <laughs> See, time heals all. That is a phrase that is a saying. That's, that's kind of what it's going on. Uh, time heals. And you just gotta give it time sometimes, you know? Some things you can't help now, but you just gotta give it time. That's why sometimes it's best to not jump the gun and just, you know, things will get better. You'd be like, oh, my life is terrible. I just killed myself. You know, I can't take another week of this. You know? Sometimes it's like... You could just gotta wait a week and then you'd be better. <laughs> so... It's like, you know, everything... All we know now is that it had a different name. And it was abandoned. That's all we know. So we wrote this long memo, this gigantic book, just to tell you that. <laughs> Let's take a look at the signs and stuff. Oh, here we go. Silent Hill Historical Society. Maybe Konami lost the original name. <laughs> I like how you wrote it. The original name of the town, like the source code for two. <laughs> Good joke. <laughs> Any joke that, you know, against Konami is a joke for me. Silent Hill Historical Society. It says the early days of Ihona. <laughs> I don't know what's. Oh, Toluca. I don't know where I got Ihona. Um, the stories of the truth. Does it really. Say the stories of the truth. <laughs> Wait, no. It does say that. What is the stories? <laughs> what accent are we doing now? Stories of the truth, y'all. Um, there's a lot of typos on the signs in Silent Hill. You will notice. I love this one. But it's blocked off, so you can't take a look at it because it's not important in two. It's used in one and three, but not in two. And they just, they blocked it off because they thought that would be a great idea. <laughs> the Lakeside Amusement Park. The Lakeside Amusement Park. Three miles away, but there's no hookers. And there's no boobies. And there's no women. And, but it says, Come on! Funny. <laughs> Shiny. <laughs> what? <laughs> night? Oh, night. Party. Party time. I don't know what it's talking about, really. Come on. Funny, shiny night party. <laughs> Sorry. I love the English, too. Some, some of them have English. <laughs> The local lake. Keep the nature. I know, right? Oh my god! <laughs> I forgot all about that. Uh, wow. Oh my god, Maria. Jesus. <laughs> Watch out. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. Oh my god, yes. You're at. H.L. Duggins are deemed plus one to the wheel. I will get around to it, H.L. Thank you for redeeming that. That was 10,000. Oh my god, I realized they're pretty expensive. Well. I should definitely thank you, you guys more for doing so. Quiet cocktails, quiet cocktails. Shh. They're quiet. <laughs> I don't... You know, you do see advertisements to shops in Silent Hill a lot. And I like that kind of theory. I do like the theory that, you know, this is where the in-water ending. Um, this is where he drives off. Uh, in the in-water ending. You see the tire skid marks. You know, this is this is showing a lot of movement. You, you wouldn't see this unless someone was recklessly 
driving with reckless abandon into a Toluca Lake. Um, that's some serious skid marks. Right off where the boat launches. But, you know, that's not unusual, I'm sure. But, you know, I like it. Perhaps this is where he decided to do it. Um, I won't kill Maria. I almost did, though. Almost. Patient pa patent plates. Hold on, I just realized I have that paused. Oh, really? It didn't even pop up an alert. Those are five subs from earlier from Junkyard Dog. I appreciate it. And now that we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and add plus one to the wheel. Well. Funny, sh funny, shiny, night. Wait, what was it? Funny, shiny, night party. <laughs> I got to make that my, uh, my advertisement. It's it's popped out in another window. I forgot you could I didn't know how you do that, but I got it. I was trying to figure out how you do that. There we go. Updated. It's so much easier when you can do that. Alright, done. What's done is done, HL Duggins. I appreciate you hanging around here though. Um I'm glad you're you're showing up to the streams now. And Zombie Monkey, I appreciate that follow. Wait. Boats to Lakeside Amusement Park and Lakeview Hotel. Hmm. Huh, ad, don't know how to wheel. Call now. And you can teach it to a wheel. Uh, I'm gonna make my way uh, down uh, this road on. Oh my god, I saw that. I saw your legs thicken though. Alright. I'm gonna head down the other side of the road to kind of observe. We do spend a lot of time, like, observing everything in this game. Giga Computer. Huh? I love this one. And he doesn't mention it because it's not important. Um. God! On my way! No, don't hurt Maria. I'm gonna get the Maria ending and you know it. You know, spending all this quality time with Maria. Uh, we're probably gonna lead towards- we're, we're, li we're heading towards that. But you can kind of make it, yeah, because, uh, you know, you can kind of influence the ending. Uh, and we should probably def, we have to put more weight on that. If we want any other ending, um, I have to take, well, I've been taking a lot of damage. I don't know. I'm going to go back up. I've missed a message or two. I want my toy, <laughs> Chris John. That was way up. I didn't need to go that far back. Oh. I thought I missed a lot. I guess I... Wait, my chatbot's not keeping up. Damn. I have to skip over. Oh, Comfort Zone comic. Hello. I'm very sorry for this question. Is a little bit on the, on the side. But why run Silent Hill 4 over Silent Hill 2? If it's too long, then skip the question, of course. I chose Silent Hill 4, and I do run 2. I just don't do it as frequently. Um, I, I mostly because I had to install this enhanced edition um, And when you install a mod like this you can't run it and you can only have one instance of the game installed at a time And I don't know how to change that. I, I'm not very I Don't know how to do that how to do two copies of this game on my computer So four is just easier and four is a uh, more RNG I like the RNG and I like the randomness of it and yes comfort zone comic I hope you're doing really well Parking and rear. Does it say that? Yes, it does. Baby. ADHD kids. <laughs> <laughs> Super store. <laughs> Super store. Um, discount prices. Baby gift registry. Parking in the rear. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's, it's really pervert. Hi, real feather. I saw you earlier. I didn't say hi. Well, hello. How are you doing? What are you up to? Besides watching. Let's see. Silent Hill Fresh Meats. That is one of the shops. I like that cutout image of a cow. <laughs> really weird Photoshop or something. Mm hmm. Big dog. Oh, wait. That's not a dog. Sound effects and alerts are turned off. Yes, they are. Oh my god! 
Okay. You always throw stuff at me when I'm trying to read. Busy. Um. Playing RuneScape. Ah. See, you know I never played either of those games. <laughs> hmm. So here we go. Lakeview Hotel. And it just says Toluca. It's kind of weird. A weird... I guess, artist rendition of the hotel. And it kind of fell down, that's, hmm. I wonder if that's why they did it. Um, you, you can't observe the dialogue, or the, the flavor text, but here's the thing. Maybe they wanted it to kind of stand out by making it fall to the ground and lean. Because the Lakeview Hotel, that's where he wants to go, right? So you may think going this direction, you're going the right way. You'll be like, oh yeah, we're almost there. And we get to go to the hotel, and we might get a room, and with Maria. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, whoa. <laughs> Possibilities are limitless right now. But then you get here, and you're like, ah, of course. The bridge is ruined. I can't get to the hotel from here. Of course. I mean, this would have been just too perfect. <laughs> I murmur Sam. Oh my god, a dead body. <laughs> the reaction. Oh my god. What happened here? Wow. Hey, a map. There's a map here. Wait, a jump scare? Oh, you got my jump scare. Thank you. Yeah, that that's a really cool, um, I guess detail where the monsters pop out at you like that i think they were just coming up with ways to be more original with monster intro introductions um because it's def definitely unexpected uh in the night version of silent hill you can see monsters falling off the rooftops so too perfect too perfects oh come on chris john <laughs> candy the king oh no someone spilled all the jam and then fell asleep that's what i like the thing <laughs> They're just sleeping. So, this is interesting. I'll take it. So, I guess, apparently, according to this map, I want to look at it again. I don't know why he... Why... What's up with this map? Well, what he's doing is he's... Well, it's a common theme. He's being informed of the perspective of others. You know, he's learning from others where he needs to go. And why... It's circled, and why it seems to be so important? Because there's pizza! And in a town full of monsters? You could ball and eat pizza. And why not? <laughs> why not, indeed? Oh, yeah. And I tried to read the text before, but I can't. Um, someone did write it down, but... Something. Last time I, I saw it. Well, I can take a look. Let's take a closer look. Heaven's night. Cowgirls. We've uncovered. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. And then it says something like, mm. What? Oh, I better look here. Better. I can see better. We, uh, what? <laughs> I don't know if it's meant to be red. I don't know. <laughs> can you see that? Oh, yeah, that's right. The secret pole dance. That's what it's trying to, it's telling you the secret code. Oh. But, uh, you know, we gotta move on. We don't have all day. You know, this isn't a leisure leisurely stroll. We gotta get through some really good stuff. Uh, but also some really hard stuff. The stomach. So it's just advertising other, other shops. All the walkthroughs that I watch people miss the body and randomly found the bowling alley. Um, I always run straight to the bowling alley, but, you know, I have to break that habit. You know, between speedruns and lore runs, 
Uh, I have to kind of give this a little bit more of a look. Get a look closer at it. Oh no, another monster. Oh my god, I hit. God! James, you have some great aim. <laughs> I don't know how I shot it three times perfectly. I have to go for uh, a 10 star rank of this game too. I gotta, I gotta get it because I've gotten Silent Hill 1, I got Silent Hill 3, and now we gotta get 2. Jack's in. Beauty Rest. Well, that sounds good. Um, air conditioning? Oh, nice. Radio, TV. Hi-Fi. Hi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've un uncovered. Pete's Bullet Rama 9 Rod from here. Food and drink. I told you. Nine Rod. I don't know. Whoa, look at that. A resub. Or a sub. A four month streak. Oh, nice. Goliath 17. I I have the sounds turned off. Uh, but I can read that. Can you do a Silent Hill 2 story analysis on the bullet casings ejecting from the gun? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, no! <laughs> Tech, Texon, gas, Southvale, gas station. So, um, I guess the most interesting thing I saw, and thank you for the sub again, Goliath. We got, what, five away from a wheel? We've hit it twice? Holy crap. Most interesting thing I saw was the bowling alley. Shit. It's the Silent Hill Tavern. Do not pass. Well, I broke the rules. <laughs> All right, we're going in the bowling alley for some extra story. Yeah, uh, that is, but that is a detail that not many games do with the bullet casings. Yeah, the bullet casings, like, if you look at it, just look closely. So you can see it. There you go. Here's a lore run. Did you like it? I'll wait here. I hate bowling. I didn't come here to play, you know. Hurry back, okay? I really like uh, uh, how they fixed the lighting engine in update number five of the enhanced edition. I mean, like the darkness looks like almost like the PS2 version now. So what'd you do? Robbery? Murder? Nah, nothing like that. Huh? You're just a gutless fatso. What'd you have to say that for? I thought you said the cops were out for you. No, I just ran because I was scared. I don't know what the cops are doing. But if you did something bad, why don't you just say That's her innocent gone? mind right there. Well, I guess I ran away. And when she's, <laughs> she's thinking no of good. running around like playing. Listen. Nobody will ever forgive me. Did you find the lady you're looking for? What's her name? Mary? Lam! <laughs> she's looking she's fine she's looking for Mary too. Ah oh, man, this is where you can kick kick back this music. Yeah, uh, so Maria avoided confrontation with any other character. Why? Well, perhaps because they wanted to leave it up for interpretation whether or not she is real. And, uh, you know, encountering any other, you know, they would have to... I mean, it would be too obvious if they didn't talk to her 
or acknowledge her uh, in a scene, it would just be too up. It would be like, I don't know. It'd be like, yeah, I see where this is going. I'm enjoying this music. I like this kind of detail though. You see where the shelf has been pressed up, uh, pressed up against the back wall or the paint kind of has uh, deteriorated. Uh, the, the metal has kind of rubbed off onto the wall. Like no other game does detail like this. And uh, like, you know, it, it everything kind of really sh shows. Um, it kind of, uh, what is it? It kind of is believable. It shows it shows signs of age and uh, wear and tear. Uh, by the way, I saw a bunch of new names in the chat. Well, Lochner, welcome. But also, um, the chat's moving faster. Uh, is it mosquitoes? What toppings on pizza? I think it's just pepperoni. Um, mosquitoes, welcome to the stream and chat. Um, but I want to—I don't want to mute this. Um, but I did see another name, but it's so far back now. Oh no, maybe I didn't. <laughs> Silent Hill Pizza order now. So you—you you know that was also is something you get uh, interpret. Like, where did he get pizza? <laughs> where do you get fresh pizza in Silent Hill? Well, that's the thing. Well, thank you. Good RNG, Evan Swift. <laughs> this isn't a, a speed run that I, I wish I, you know, I'm so glad I'm not doing right now. Ooh. Silent Hill 4, the room is, is torture sometimes. And my pizza that is being delivered to be delicious. You just said that to make me jealous. But thank you for redeeming wheelchair points. Everyone's talking food now. Stop. Emmy, hope no one uh, has a mold allergy. You'd get it. Yeah, you'd get it here. Um, and whether or not this this bowling alley has been abandoned for many years and has deteriorated, uh, I, I highly doubt it has. It really looks like this. I, I think that James's perspective uh, is really influencing the town. And uh, because of his depression and the state of his psyche, he is, uh, well, his theme is water. And mold and damage um, because it's just falling apart and you know water cold water and you know just like this this look right here is is a really good way to kind of show the state of someone's psyche if they're depressed if they're very depressed Deadpool the Merc well I'm glad you're chilling and thank you for being here uh, welcome to the chat getting a lot of new names today upscale the music Chris John <laughs> I've never heard that. That's really good. I like it. Yes, the Silent Hill H uh, Enhanced Edition upscaled the music. I like that photo right there. Uh, I don't know. It looks like Eddie, honestly. It looks like a child Eddie. As a child. Wearing a striped shirt. But we know it's not him because Eddie, well, Eddie could have bleached his hair. But, you know, dark hair. And it is my belief that, yeah, um, and you know, maybe it does have to do with Eddie. Um, you know, I feel like the area in which you encounter, um, a character does help to, it's trying to infer the character a little bit better. Um, that's, you know, like the riddles in a character's vicinity. The riddles kind of are trying to tell a little bit more about the character. Yeah, we gotta get to Heaven's Night. Thank you, Tukowski. I'm enjoying this music way too much. <laughs> and hi, Frenchie, by the way. Uh, did I say French? I think I did say hi, Frenchie. Eddie? Welcome and enjoy. Um, you're James. We met in the apartment building? Yeah, I remember. But, uh... Are you alone here, Eddie? Oh, it has uh, other toppings, guys. No. I, 
think it's like a supreme yeah it has like green peppers it has sausage bye bye wait come back eddie let's go after her huh laura but why laura is that her name that's what she said this town is full of monsters. Oh my god, the static. Oh, pizza? I talked over it. Sorry. He said, he said it. He said it faster than me. Slow it down. Forget you. Forget you. Man, James doesn't know how to have fun, does he? <laughs> he doesn't know how to have fun. James, maybe it's good to kind of. Sit there and eat pizza once in a while? <laughs> no way, Chris John. See? Enigma's an inspiration. <laughs> That's proof. Here we go. Does he say anything else? Let's see. Who is that girl, anyhow? I don't know. All I know is her name. I swear. Who is that girl? Which is interesting because like he, he should know who she is, you know in my theory My theory is that he He has met her, but you know recalling re Recollecting her Is painful it brings back it brings up painful memories I'm stuck everywhere. I'm stuck. I can't pick up. I can't bowl What is this game sucks. <laughs> it should have a mini game here. That's all we really want. Maybe in the remake. They should remake Silent Hill too, don't you think? They should remake it and we could do it like they could put a bowling mini game here. But you know modern remakes, right? They would cut like half the game. <laughs> like and just like not really add anything. Just like less content. That's remakes. There's a bowl, the bowling alley or the the bowling balls and pins are just everywhere. Wonder what happens if we try to go back. No, I guess not much. Who is that girl anyhow? You know how know. um other All scenes have two name. I swear. Have two revisit cutscenes, right? All the all the scenes have two. What if you approach him from the other side? Who is that girl anyhow? I guess not this Who one. Who is that girl? <laughs> I can do this. Um Maria ha hates bowling. It doesn't work. Cuz the yeah, you can't do mini games. I'm hungry too, Eternal Snow White. You see this pizza and it makes you hungry. Who is that girl? He's just sitting there asking him the same questions over and over again. That shows how patient. You know, maybe he'd make a good Twitch streamer. <laughs> Who is that girl anyhow? I don't... Who is that girl anyhow? Who is know. that girl anyhow? Oh, I her name. I is swear. she real? <laughs> um, isn't there art on the inside of the pizza box? Yes, there is. That's what I'm trying to get a good look at, but not really. You can't. Uh, but yeah, someone did a camera hack. I should do a stream like that. I should do a camera hack stream, but it's not all too important You know, and I don't want to look at it anymore because it makes me hungry <laughs> He's been nibbling on that pizza still on the first slice god I I can move through pizza. Let me tell you I can Did a little girl run out of here? Yeah, she was too fast for me. Aren't you gonna go after her? Oh, yeah. Did she really chase after Laura? Like, why? <laughs> no, I think that that's kind of... They're, they're trying to keep the, you know, Maria. She's enigmatic. The enigmatic Maria. They're trying to keep her that way. You know, whether or not she had an encounter with Laura, it's up for you to decide. But I doubt it. I doubt Laura even saw her.
No, dead end. Yeah, Dexter, I can hack the, the game. She went through there. I'm a hacksaw. Is there any other way? Yeah, there is. Right through there. James, you can't make it through there. <laughs> this was filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I, you can't. James, come on. Stop looking at the stupid... Can you make it through there? <laughs> James, you just gotta flatten yourself. <laughs> like James, a cartoon. You can't or make it through there. You know, a cat could get through that. Well, obviously, but you know. <laughs> what? I'm. Free will? Oh, she has free will. I don't think she does. Do you believe in fate? You know, Ernest asked her that. It's like, you have a plan. You have. I can't. I kind of think that's what they're trying to say. That she is uh, brought into this world by James and she has a purpose. And, you know. And she fulfills that. It's no good. It's locked. Man. James. Copping a look. That's what he's doing. He's copping a look. <laughs> um, should have copped the field too. I had to charge this. Okay. Wow, I just realized on camera my sunburn's bad. Here we go. Wait, what if I try to go back through the crag? No? Still can't? James. <laughs> no, I don't want I don't want to see that. All right, we're going now, I guess. More heavenly music that's gonna make me not want to uh, move. Just stay here. Well, it's Heaven's Night. That's perfect then. But here's some dialogue, like the flavored text, very randomly. And out of nowhere, it just happens sometimes. He will just start to, um, he will start to think. And uh, when he when he thinks about the past, it dread it, it, you know, like these painful memories come back to him. So he kind of brushes it off, but you know he's he's personal, and then he becomes more relatable and he's more personal. And uh, we you know very little is known about James. We don't really learn much about him. Um, there are a few instances where he starts to think about things. By the way, hello Abs. I hope you're doing really awesome. Wait, don't keep all the keys in the same place. That's right. She's um, yeah, she she she's just making sure that if uh, I guess she's ever. Oh my god. Ugh. And uh, here's another thing that you know this is very important too. So you know this is another topic I wanted to touch on. Silent Hill is about those first impressions, right? Uh, well, a lot of the flavored text, once you play through it, it never, you can't see it again. If you move, it's gone. And I, I hit the stick. Oops, gone. I just tapped the stick by accident. So, why it does that, I can tell you why it does this, is because they are, they don't want you to think about it. They want you to read through it, and then when you're like, wait, Wait a second. What was that again? You go back to it. Too bad. Because they it's all about your your what, the impression it made on you the first time you read it. If it if it, if you needed to go back to it, well too bad. They don't want you thinking about it too much. Oh, it's Ping. She says hi. And what this did say is liquor bottles 
you know, I did turn to drinking. You know, uh, you know, I, I drank a fair bit, in, in fact. And then he says, But I don't want to think about that now. Because he started to re recollect those memories, those painful memories. And uh, he was like, forget about it. Liquor bottles, there's nothing else of interest. So he's just like, forget about it. Yes, ping, 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 chan ping, ping. Meow. Meow. He's just like comfy. Like, <laughs> hey, Oh, she just wants me. But you, she'll get plenty. I'll be in bad comatose after this stream. And she will have plenty of time to spend with me. <laughs> So, yes, thank you for using all the ping emotes, holy crap. Ping is a celebrity and she probably doesn't even know it. Ping, do you know that? <laughs> I know, Ping never meows, so that was a rare thing. Well, she talks to me. I mean, like, she never really meows when I'm holding her. But she always looks up at me and meows all the time and she talks to me. And I think, I swear, Ping is the smartest cat I have ever, ever seen. She is smart. Like, I'm, su I'm surprised by her sometimes. Mmm, paradise. <laughs> Won't you take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the guys are pretty? And, uh, that's Heaven's Night. Oh, man, I want this. I want this sign. I'll, I'll put it up in the room. Actually, perf it'd be perfect right there. It, it, it looked like the lighting I have now. <laughs> now it's purple. <laughs> um, Ping is like 10, going on 11. So how about that pole dance? Just a regular stage. There's nothing strange about it. This is an American Silent Hill Cole. And hello, Cole Azure. And Funky Dada Chica. And Vorpal Matt. Well, you've been here. Ah, uh, even Ping is excited about the lore run. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Come on, you have to check it. You have to check it like 30 times. Oh, no. 300 times? 69 times. That's right. 69 times. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That I lost count. Shh. Yeah, you have to check it exactly sixty-nine for that um that secret pole dance. I'm I'm still holding out for it. Every tips and tricks guide in the world would not be wrong. No. <laughs> um. No, it's not gonna happen, is it? What if you, you talk to her? No, don't back up. What do you feel? You have to go back and forth. You have to suggest it to her, right? Be like, pole dance? Mm, pole dance. <laughs> she doesn't know. You have to kind of suggest. You got to look at it, right? You look at her. You look at the pole. And then you go, hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Maria, hey! Hey, Maria! Maria! Hey! What do you say? Yeah? What do you say to the pole dance, Maria? Oh! Oh! Shit! I, I was like really hoping. <laughs> Whoa, I gotta subscribe! Musky, musico. Oh, sorry. I said it right the first time. Mosquitoes, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. That puts us at 12 out of 16 on the sub goal. Four away. I really thought for a second it was going to happen. She stepped forward. I'm sure you got all excited too. All right, we're out of here. And uh, where's Maria? Oh, God! <laughs> Teleport. She scared me. Um. Oh god, you clip ping! <laughs> Dexter, thank you. 
I hope the whole, uh, do you, do you just get it off the Discord when you see it, Katahajime? I hope it's not a big pain in the butt. Hmm. Or do they message it to you? What's the uptime? Seven hours and nine minutes. And actually ten. Ten minutes. Just ten minutes. Yes, best best pizza analysis. You can't get it better. You can't get it anywhere else. And over there. Also this. <laughs> I had the alerts paused and I forgot. <laughs> well, there's no reason to kind of run around town anymore. Now it's time to end this. Actually, no, we're not even close. Brookhaven Hospital? I thought it was Brookhaven. Or is it, it, maybe it is. No, they changed it. Uh, so it was the typo. They had Brookhaven Hospital. Um, they corrected it in Silent Hill 3 and in, in, in this enhanced edition which uh, Which they did make some creative changes that I don't agree with well, that's when I do agree with Because uh, it look obviously team silent made a mistake So they changed the L to an R I Thought it said no perking wait. This is one of those things they fixed Where's the no perking? Oh, it is here. No perking permit. Perking permit only. Permit perking only. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Oh, now you're you're back with your popcorn. Perfect. Uh, well, there's no. Well, we don't really have too many cutscenes now. We have to wait a while. Hey, void if red. Oh god, I'm voided. Voided. Check the information table for the map. You mean this one? Um. By the way, there is a scene here. Another one. Where are you planning to go? But we haven't found Laura yet. <laughs> I just got here and I'm already trying to leave. I'm like, uh, let's get out of here. I don't like it. It's scary. So here's a scene. Or here's a couple memos. Uh, remember I talked about, you know, uh, perspective. I always talk about it. But... This is also informing you of people who are all dealing with grief and uh, they uh, uh, are more mentally ill. Uh, a lot of people who, you know, different perspectives and how they're going about it and they just wind up in the insane asylum. James, do you want to go there? Maybe that's what you need. You need to just wind up here. It seems to be about the patients hospitalized here. Jack Davis. He has attempted suicide three times in the past for reasons unknown. Although he is normally a model patient who follows doctors and nurses' orders, he must be watched closely due to the, his past pattern of sudden and violent suicide attempts. Huh, interesting. Well, this is not like many other characters in the game. In fact, uh, well... Uh, you know, maybe uh, it's relatable. That's another that's something that's important. It's relatable. This is relatable At least the James yeah a little bit it could relate to Eddie Eddie could relate to this Even uh, Angela could relate to this. It's all about that relatability Thanks, that's Dexter. You have a good night An R is missing uh, I'll check it out Dexter. Yeah, I'll check it Joseph Barkin. His illness seems to be rooted in the fact that he believes he is guilty of causing his daughter's death. I, I relate to that. Oh man, I thought he was. They were talking about James for a second, right? Um, 
But it kind of sounds like Ernest Baldwin, right? Yeah, it's not Ernest. It sounds like Ernest, right? His symptoms suggest a psychotic break and paranoid delusions. Huh, Eddie could relate to this. Psychotic break. Paranoid delusions. That sounds like Eddie. Normally calm, but has a tendency towards violence when excited. So yeah, there's that relatability between all the characters. But what's interesting is that they're, di so, so they're different. The, this isn't like Eddie. This isn't like James. This isn't like Angela. Each of the characters kind of have their own things going on. Joshua Lewis. History of hospitalization as well as numerous assault, battery, and other violent offenses. He has a strong persecution complex and a tendency to solve things through violence. Extreme caution is necessary. It kind of escalates, too. Like, between all the characters, it's like... Bad. Badder. Bad to the bone. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to uh, describe it. So it's like, you know... It's kind of showing you that there's no black or white when it comes to, you know, the, you know, personalities. There's no black or white when it comes to the grieving process. Everyone, there's this vast amount of gray, you know? Uh, so, yeah, goes from, you know, three different levels here where these characters go from, eh, you know, kind of crazy to extremely crazy. And I think that's the point there. That there's no black or white about it. Different kinds of memos are hanging up, but there's nothing of particular interest. Nothing of interest. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Um, you didn't do that pole dance, and I'm still mad about it, so I'm gonna hold it against you. Um. Oh! <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I copped the feel. <laughs> Something is written on it. The potential for this illness. <clears throat> I want to be a doctor here. The potential for this illness exists in all people. And under the right circumstances, any man or woman would be driven like him to the other side. Interesting. There's a, a, a literal and met, uh, a metaphorical kind of thing going on here. You know, the other side being that kind of, I guess that, that, that. I mean, that happy place, right? <laughs> the other side being that happy place where you feel comfortable and you don't want to deal with reality. Uh, but also the other side kind of sounds familiar, right? Oh, yeah, the other side, like the other world, right? The nightmare, or as some people say. I forget, what is it they say? Oh, yeah. The other... <laughs> uh, I mean, the it's the <laughs> world. Um, it's bleeping me. Uh, I don't know what's going on. The okay, the other side perhaps may not be the best way to phrase it. After all, there is no wall between here and there. It lies on the borders where reality and unreality intersect. It is a place both close and distant. So, you know, it goes from in the first page being kind of like, oh, I, I think I know what they're talking about, too. Now I don't know what they're talking about. Some say it isn't even an illness. Uh, I cannot agree with them. I'm a doctor, not a philosopher or even a psychiatrist. <laughs> but sometimes I have to ask myself this question. It's true to us. His imaginings are nothing but the inventions of a busy mind. But to him, there simply is no other reality. Furthermore, he is happy there. So why, I ask myself, why in the name of healing him, must we drag him painfully into the world of our own reality?
Uh, does that go without words? I don't have to say, do I? Um, it's it's like you know this guy's insane, right? Well, this person's happy, but it, they're it, they're not getting better. That's why they're still here. <laughs> That's why they're still here, because they're you know like you have to heal them for them to get better. You you have to bring them back to the painful reality. It's it all relates to James, and it's it's all it's all like poetry. It rhymes. Something else is written by hand. I got the key from Joseph. It's probably, it's probably the key to that box. Wait, Joseph. Ah, let's go back to that other memo, actually. Different types of papers and documents, but there's nothing of interest for me. Interesting wording. I never, I never noticed this wording. You know, like, it's it's really showing. It's really showing that, like, this is not for me. Because he's so used to, you know, medical reports and stuff from Mary. That he tailored it to himself for me. That's so interesting. There's nothing of interest for me. Yeah, there's nothing here for me. It's like, you know, he's so used to this stuff. I love it. See, Silent Hill 2 is just that genius. It is. Like, you know, they really meticulously uh, think about this, like, really, the small, subtle details. Alright, so Jack, or Joseph. Let's take a look again at Joseph. Which is, maybe some people would do this. His illness uh, rooted in the fact that he's guilty for causing his daughter's death. He has... Now think of the box. He, You can connect Joseph to the box. And it says, Luis. The box's name is the Luis box. It says, I'll... Take care of you forever? Or I'll, I'll protect you forever? You know, Luis could have been the, the name of his daughter. So... Yeah, Joseph could have, uh, maybe the hair in the box is, is his daughter's hair. You know, this game is about people who can't let go of, uh, people who died and, and they can't, they're grieving. And they're not, they're not getting to that stage of acceptance. Uh, and it makes sense that he has one strand of her hair. And it's so important to him, he locked it up to the point, there's four locks. He, he went through great lengths Great, great lengths to protect that hair. That strand of hair. Which sounds crazy, but, you know, he rationalized it. And, uh, you know, it's the only thing he has left of his daughter. Interesting. That makes sense. A lot of sense. It's And also, what's really interesting is how this is about perspective. James instantly just assumes the box is empty after you open it the box is empty and then he's like oh wait there's hair to him it's unimportant he doesn't understand the importance of it um to somebody else there we go we learned something about joseph today joseph cannot let go of his daughter his daughter's name was probably louise he named the box after his daughter and the box has his hair and it has four freaking locks on it Which shows how important he, he he how much he values it We're gonna go find that box here pretty soon. I Know all these doors are locked or jammed. So we're just gonna Yeah We're gonna go up uh, In fact, I may just to avoid getting the Maria ending which is fine if we do I may put I may go put her in the room now. I want to avoid that. There are multiple scenes depending on whether or not Maria is with you. Well, I can't really do it now, so we'll we'll just do those different. We'll do it now. We'll do we'll go this way. Oh my god! Oh my god! Rip! <laughs> 
Well, you know what? Screw Maria. I don't need her. <laughs> Holy crap! Well, we didn't really move forward very, very much. But I mean, like, it's not really that far back. <laughs> wow. Insane, isn't it? F. I didn't think I'd turn around and she'd be the one to get the bullet. <laughs> um, you don't run fast enough, James. You laughing at me, Christian? You laughing at me? Well, I'm gonna go on break. <laughs> I'm gonna go on break. <sighs> This lore run is long enough already. Oh god. <laughs> uh, Maria, why are you? Why? Maria, why? We could at least see what this message said now. So, yeah, good thing. <laughs> right, good thing. And thank you, Eternal Snow White. Let's not skip it this time. I'm gonna get through it quick. Oh, really? Oh, wait. Liquor bottles, so I don't need that right now. It's not that I don't drink. In fact, I drink a fair bit. To get away from the pain, the loneliness. But the drinking never changes anything. Anyway, I don't need that now. I there's a pole dance I have to go watch. <laughs> um, thank you, Hollywood. And much love to you. Er, you all. See, he, he does he does say there. He definitely does say. Um, he's tried everything. And even drinking. He turned to alcohol and it didn't help. So that's what he's saying. You know, you know, the pain, nothing makes it better. That's what he's saying. Oh, there was a first aid in there. I could take that. You know, I'm gonna need it because I use all my health. Hey! Hey! If you're not gonna do a pole dance, then at least don't get in my way. <laughs> you know, you had another chance. That was your second chance. Hey! Is it Anaya? Anaya? Or Aya? I'm not sure. Well, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. All right, are the alerts? Okay. I've got my big bottle of mango green tea, Fiji water. Oh, I've never heard of that. Wait, they have a green tea? You're, you're making that up, right? Let's get the map and look at it this time. Oh, okay. It says Brookhaven Hospital. So it's the correct spelling there. That's also proof that, well, it's not Brookhaven. Uh, I did. So it's Anaya. No, Anaya. Ain Aya Ainaya. Did I say it right the second time? <laughs> I probably said it wrong this time. Um let's see. But thank you. Yeah, welcome to the chat. Uh meanwhile he's probably hammered, saying he doesn't need alcohol anymore. Oh I don't eat it anymore. <laughs> it's like you know those cartoons. You know, he's sitting there, he's drunk, and he's he's drinking his alcohol, and then he sees Pyramid Head, like, dragging the big-ass sword, and just drags, and walks on by, and he's just like, Whoa, I really gotta quit drinking. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna keep moving, because Maria, well, that didn't take long, did it? We got here pretty the locker won't open. But what's on the inside is not what matters. <laughs> it's what's on the outside that counts. Mm -hmm. I like to think that's uh, the slutty swimsuit model Lisa from Silent Hill 1. <laughs> There's something inside the lab jacket. Examination room key. Yeah, still in the description. Don't know who I am is who I am is. Yeah, people ask me what that... Did I mean to do that? 
It's a Silent Hill reference. There's a magazine here. Won't do me any good right now. I've read plenty of those. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I read plenty of those waiting in the, you know, hospital room. In the waiting room. I wonder if that's what it's trying to say. Isled. Destiny's Child? Is that what that says? <laughs> is that a Destiny's Child poster? Oh, is that Pamela and and oh, hold on a second. Maria, you're covering this other poster. Oh my god. I think she's naked though. Maria, if you're not gonna take your clothes off, at least be let me see this picture. <laughs> uh there's no way to really move her. Locker won't open. Locker won't open. No. Shotgun in the locker. Nice. Doesn't look like there's anything useful here. One open. One open. Oh, wait. He said something else. Oh, there's a bag here. There's nothing inside. Look at the lighting. I just realized the lighting is really good. Like, you know, uh, there's self shadows. Like, he he, asked, he actually cast. Like, you could see on their model. On, on Maria's model. You can see better this way. Uh, like, he, she casts a shadow upon herself. Uh, see on the left side of her? It's dark because the flashlight isn't touching it. Um, and uh, that wasn't a thing until this update um, or the last one. But this enhanced edition fixed the lighting. Hey, Exterior Emma and Sagaku. What's up, you two? Also, I like the, you know, I, you, everything looks like Eddie. But another person with a striped shirt right here who looks kind of like Eddie. That's Eddie and his best friend. Is that a Coke? Oh man, that could really go for some Coca-Cola right now. You know what's even better than that? Orange soda. Orange. Live wire. Oh, it's so good. I love it. <laughs> I can't really read anything though. Hey! Oh, look, it's Jack! <laughs> what? But, you know what's really funny? The common theme here between the two rooms, you got the- We, we just came out of the, uh, the men's locker room. Now we're in the women's locker room. Well, the men's locker room had a bunch of, you know, women, you know, seductive, um, well, the women's locker room has this. <laughs> Looks like a boy band, you know, uh, person in a boy band or Aaron Carter. But it, it kind of actually really looks like, you know what it looks like to me? And I think I know what it is too. But I think it I think it looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. I think that's what it's supposed to be a, uh, a um, an homage to. Leo, uh, from, you know, Jack from the Titanic. Leo DiCaprio. Um... But, you know, I, I think it's actually James's model. Someone did mention that. I really do think it's James's model. Look at his face. Look, look, I gotta do that. That thing with, with his face. I don't know. Isn't it kind of like... Like, I don't know. If I can... Like that? Close? I don't know. Does it look like that? Kind of? I don't know. I can't get his face like that. But it looks like it. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I missed yesterday's stream. Had to do a lot of stuff that... By the time I was free, I was really tired. God, let me tell you about tired. Um, I'm tired now, but that's fine. I understand. I don't expect people to make every stream. Maria, I'm gonna go now. <laughs> Let's go downstairs. But it's good to see you today. It's what, what you're doing today that matters. I wonder what Team Silent and voice actors would think of the Enhanced Edition. Ah, oh, I'm sure they would be fine with it. It captures the intention for the most part. But there are some questionable changes. Examination room key. By the way, welcome, Goliath. And, uh, Catalytic Geisha, hey.
Oh my god. Stop scaring me. Just seeing if there's anything important. I like the detail of every room. So much detail. Shotgun. There is a memo here. Oh, rotary phone. Third floor patient wing hall. 7335. Silent Hill 3 OST cover look before Heather. Yeah, taking off his shirt, baby. See, if he did, just didn't, just had the jacket on. Right? It'd be hot. <laughs> um, you know, take off the inner shirts. He's like wearing two inner shirts too, isn't he? I don't know why they chose that. He must be, it must be cold in Silent Hill. And then Maria's walking around, you know, like with all their skin showing. They're wearing them quite a, quite different clothing. <laughs> Um, yes, hi, hi. Natural energy, even without tea and energy drinks and live wear, though, it's true. Um, but I, I've never been more tired. <laughs> the ghost! <laughs> Aaron Carter? Could have been Aaron Carter. Marty, how are you doing? Sex strife! Sex strife? <laughs> CX Drive! What's up? Yes, it's good to see you. Papa. Yeah, uh, you people still call me Papa Fungo. You and Catalytic Geisha. It, it stop, you know, like that was way back and, and I didn't really reference it too many times. Some you know, that's interesting. You got that, you know, you kinda as a streamer, we've been building this kind of bond. This kind of like thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I got my own names that it's kind of interesting, you know, like my community calls me, you know, refers to me as Papa, whereas you, you kind of look at, uh, Enigma's community where they kind of refer to him as what, what boss or something or wait, no, I shouldn't know this, but it's something that you had to have been, had to have been there for, I guess. And then it took off. It's not boss. What was it again? It's not something you, a coach or something. Well, there's a bunch of other, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, you got it, Void. There you go. Yeah, it's coach. So you know. Memo hanging in the refrigerator. Food only. Do not store drugs. Are the drugs in there? The drugs? Yeah, there you go. See, everyone knows. I, I knew, but like, you know, where that came from, I don't know. All right, now it's unlocked. Ellie Cat! I know, I, I guess I'll always be Papa. And and the fact that I am actually older, I think like I'm usually pretty pretty much, I'm, I think I am older than most of you. Uh, you can call me Papa, I guess. And now you know. Uh, I said that one day as a joke and, and it kind of caught on. Just call me, I said, call me Papa Fungo, and then that's, you know, people are like, okay. <laughs> yeah, Ali Cat, you were there. See, the VIPs, you, you see that little VIP badge, you know. They've been here a while, usually. Um, yes, Daddy, <laughs> Purple Hellion. I can't believe it's almost been a year and then, uh, what the I guess you could say we, we could celebrate it on the first my one-year anniversary on Twitch um, I wouldn't celebrate it when I created my account that would that would be like wow you've been streaming that long <laughs> I mean I have but yeah I'll always be Papa Funko to, to Geisha you CX Strife and many others but hey if you don't, man, I don't understand. I mean, I don't mind if you want to call me Papa, but you know, <laughs> just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> oh, this. Ow. And What's also, wrong? that's that's the pet name I, I like during myself. sex. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. I said that during a scene. <laughs> Who's your daddy? 
What does he do? I got the bent needle. And I pricked myself. But the teddy bear is just too cute. I won the cuddle. Just the normal stuffed animal. There's nothing else. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Mr. Daddy Fung. Yeah, I also said Daddy Fung. Yeah, call me Daddy Fungo, Papa Fungo, whatever you want. <laughs> Twitch con in here. People are yelling Papa. I think people would probably be too shy meeting me that, you know, I don't know if people would be able to to greet me that way right away. Um, But it could happen. You don't know. One day. Are we on the right floor? No, we gotta put her in her room. We gotta put her in her place, okay? Maybe we could even get a room together. <laughs> Hot. Senior Fungo. <laughs> Maybe if you go way, way back, you you call me Senior Fungo. Um. Yeah, Cheers is gone. I posted on my Discord. Why? <laughs> During the stream, actually. Here we go. <laughs> Have a good sleep, uh, Mumei Nanashi. Sleep well. <laughs> Wait a minute. <coughs> I'm kind of tired. It's just a hangover. Is it? You should rest. Mm. <clears throat> so comfy. I'm gonna go look for her. For Laura. I'll be back as soon as I can. Do it, James. It's obvious that she's, uh... She's suggesting something. I got the roof key. No, you want some action, James. <coughs> I'll be okay soon. Did you find Laura? <clears throat> James, I want to ask you something. What if... What if you can't find Mary? What will you do? I haven't thought about that. Important! He hasn't even considered the possibility that his wife is not dead. <laughs> Right? I mean, I, I guess cheer. But yeah, he hasn't even considered that. And that's like really odd, isn't it? Like he knows, he says, he told Angela, he told everyone like his, his wife died. And he's like, but you know, I got a letter from her. And it's like, what if you don't find her? I haven't thought about that. <laughs> he, he's really expecting to find his wife who is dead. Um, this is where the game gets scary now. That he's looking for Laura when he says he's going to go look for her. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he really does seem to, uh, well, because he, she let on. She kind of let on that he, she knows a lot about Mary. She might be able to help him find Mary. That's kind of what it's about. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had someone play this for the first time. They played on beginner. Beginner sucks. The gameplay sucks. Hey, uh, they thought the game was all right. Yeah, it's it's not bad. The game doesn't need to be hard to be good. Uh, these games do not rely on difficulty to be scary. It's psycholog It's it's psychological horror. Which, you know, good psychological horror should not be difficult to, uh, to be scary. 
And you know, it is it is a lot scarier. I will admit it's a lot scarier when it's when the monsters are like like I don't know, like just jetting off right at you. You know, they move a lot faster. That's a little subtle detail. Uh difficulty does change their movement speed. Um their attacks are different. Sometimes there's new attacks. A lot of different uh subtle details for difficulty. Yep, but I don't pick it up yet. There's something stuck in the drainage drainage pipe. The hole is too small. Can't get my hand inside the reach. It. Well, maybe you should lube. Maybe he should lube it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe. Oh wait, hold on. Maybe if I had a long, narrow tool of some kind. <laughs> 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 hmm. <laughs> Too funny. Um. Sexual frustration, obviously. One, one, two, three. No, three. There you go. Finger the hole. Do not clip. Why do you title "Do Not Clip" and I said "Don't clip"? You take the time and energy to type "Do Not Clip." Oh. Oh. Silent Hill the sitcom. It makes it so much better, trust me. <laughs> Live studio audience fixes everything. Not that there was anything that needed fixing. Wait. There's something on the wall. Louise! <laughs> I'll take care of you forever! Here's my destiny! <laughs> Man, this guy's obviously insane. Yeah. So, yeah, this is Joseph's box, we learn. Um, it, it, it's a really good theory, I think, that, you know, Joseph, who it says in a memo, lost his daughter. Uh, he is also grieving, he is in denial, and he's holding on. He's holding on to the past and not moving on, which is why he's in a mental asylum. <laughs> he's not getting better, so he's not getting out of here. Um, he named the box. The reason why the box is so damn important is because it has a hair of his daughter's. Off his daughter's head, which is the only thing he has left of her, besides maybe memories. Which shows, which explains why this, this is so important to someone. I never thought about that before. Why this is so important to Joseph is because of that. Because of that. Why he would, like, go out of, out of his way to lock it up to this extreme, you know, like, there's so many locks and chains and bars and ropes and... What? <laughs> but it kind of is a metaphoric uh, and literal representation of someone who just absolutely cannot let go of something so minute, so unimportant. Uh, something as unimportant as a strand of hair. And let me tell you, I got plenty of hair uh, clogging up my drains. I don't need more of that. <laughs> um, so we got two locks, two keys, and thank you. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, earlier... Uh, Aenea, um, thank you so much for the compliment. Yeah, you got gifted a sub as well as a lot of other people, CX Drive. Um, so yeah, that box is interesting because like he right away dismisses it as nothing. But he's like, oh, it's hair. And then he finds use for it. He finds use for a hair, which is usually... Not very important. What? What do I have have left to do? I guess I have a key. I have one key. Oh, I didn't go to the roof yet. Let's go to the roof. Oh, the roof. We get to read that diary. <laughs> and a lot of people in the Silent Hill community did try to theorize. You know, I try to theorize, but it didn't work for me. Uh, it didn't work. <laughs> I dismiss it. Uh, they try to say, "Oh, that's Mary's journal diary." 
Oh, Mary stayed in Brookhaven Hospital. Yeah. No, she's... This is, this is home for the mentally ill. Brookhaven Hospital. She was terminally ill. She would not be in Brookhaven. Okay. Uh, I generally cracked out loud to that. <laughs> nice, the extra. I wish you all a great stream. I need to catch some sleep. Be well, everyone. Well, Masuda, well, thank you so much for popping in and, and gifting some subs and, and being here for... Well, it wasn't really that short of a time. It was about like... You, you were here a good long while. Um, and I do really appreciate it. I'll see you again. Uh, I have yet a lot of this game to finish, and I'm not going to get through the whole game this weekend. No, I've decided to go ahead and just split it up. And that kind of, like, leaves little room for me to kind of play other games, of course, because of this lore run. But uh, I feel like this lore run's pretty important, and I probably won't do a lore run more than, like, a once a year of a game. Like, you know, Silent Hill 2 gets one, one lore run a year, you know? Um, because it's really taxing. It's, it's a lot of work. I get so... I lose sleep and so tiring. Um, but it's, it's, you know, something that needs to be said. A lot of this stuff isn't even on the wiki. So, <laughs> thank you, Fran. I appreciate it. Glomp back to everyone. I don't know how I'd glomp you all, but, you know. There are two of me. So I can at least tackle two of you. <laughs> There's a, something on the floor. Is it a diary? Oh my god, the sub points went up in front of my eyes. Holy crap. 730, or did it go down? I don't know. But it changed. <laughs> 730 sub points. That's crazy. I'll try to catch the run when I can for sure. Well, maybe next weekend you can catch the later parts of it. Uh, but that means I have to really re re explain a lot of stuff. But that's fine. I have to do it every day anyway. <laughs> so, no big deal. Um, let's see. Let's read this. This is good. Because, well, perspective. You get another person's perspective. You don't even know who this person is. It's not important who this person is. In fact, if it was important who this person was, I'm sure they would connect it in some way to someone. And they would tell you. Like they did with Joseph and his box, right? They would somehow connect the name if it's important. So it's not important. It's just, you know, the story is what's important. You, you know, when you look at someone's diary, you kind of get a... It's very delayed. What's delayed? Oh, the lore run or what? I don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, when you get a hold of someone's diary, it's really the most... Uh, it's the it's really the best Most intimate way to get into someone's psychology into someone's psyche and really understand them even though it is impossible To understand what this person is going through because it's a personal experience even on in a diary It's impossible to understand what this person is going through because they do not describe in detail Uh, if the do you have the Frinker face um, extension Sunder ninety nine? If you do, uh, sometimes that happens to me as well. But sometimes it happens right before my computer t uh, crashes. So um, it could be one extreme or the other. <laughs> oh, the sub goal? It's delayed. Yeah, it's two minutes. It says, but it it's probably more delayed, a lot more. But it also the sub points change. It could be it, it, like in the next minute, it could change. Because, you know, subs drop off uh, at any mo moment in time. Exactly 30 days. And exactly on the on the dot, 30 days when it got gifted or the sub got gifted or the sub, you know, started. Right. So, this is uh, the really the best way to get into someone's psyche, uh, to get into someone's mind space and kind of really try to understand them. But... It's, you know, of course, it's a personal journey. What they're going through is only, you know, you can only, un only, they, only they know what they're going through. And, you know, this is the thing. It's all about, you know, there's a lot in common between all these perspectives, too. You know, they're all kind of going through this grieving process. The uh, Kubler-Russ model of the five, the five stages of grieving, of grief. You know, denial, anger, uh, 
you know, um, what's the other one? Um, 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 um. I, I know it earlier, but, you know, now I'm starting to wear myself out. Um, need more food. Bargaining. So it's like, you know, you get to see those five stages through another perspective, and there's no black or white. It's, you know, there's plenty of gray, and everyone, there's so many different perspectives here in the Brookhaven Hospital. Here we go. I got someone's diary. Maybe there'll be some dirty stories. <laughs> May night. Rain. Stared out the window all day. Peaceful here. Nothing to do. Still not allowed to go outside. May 10th. Still raining. Talked with the doctor a little. Would they have saved me if I didn't have a family to feed? I know I'm pathetic. Weak. Not everyone can be strong. May 11th. Rain again. The meds made me feel sick today. If, if I'm only better when I'm drugged, then who am I anyway? May 12th. Rain, as usual. So you get it? You get this theme of rain, water, and depression? That's interesting. See, uh, that's why rain, rain, rain always starts with rain because, you know, this water kind of represents... This person's depressed, obviously. I mean, it shows. But this is like a big, big look into a perspective of someone who is just absolutely and completely depressed. Um, and you don't really see too many perspectives of depression. You don't. And it, and it leads up perfectly to what I think is the depression stage of the game, where it kind of goes through that stage, where the denial is not so much the focus, it's depression. So it kind of works out. May 12th, rain as usual. I don't want to cause any more trouble for anyone, but I'm a, I'm a bother either way. Can it really be a, such a sin to run instead of fight? Some people may say so, but they don't have to live in my shoes. That's actually, that goes along with what I was just saying. It's a personal journey. Only he or she, but I think it's he, only he knows what he is going through, which is interesting that it says so in the diary. It may be selfish, but it's, it's what I want. It's too hard like this. It's just too hard. May 13th. It's clear outside. Oh, has the depression lifted? It was rainy, 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 and now it's clear outside? The doctors told me I've been released. That I've got to go home. I... The diary ends here. There are no more entries. What was the diary doing up here? <laughs> I just realized something. I was like, maybe this is maybe this is why they put up a fence on the roof. And he does ask why why is what is the diary doing up here? Well, maybe the person was up here right before they jumped off the top of the building and killed themselves because, well, the doctor said you can go home now. But it's hard. <laughs> That's what happened. It's hard. Jumps. And that, and I realized, like, this is kind of extreme, right? Like, all the, all the, all the fencing everywhere. And this fence doesn't make sense here. It's the imagery that's important. All this fencing everywhere. That's why. I just kind of realized, you know, maybe that's why. 
They put up the fence. But the diary, why would it still be here? Well, it, it's not supposed to make any sense anyway. So. Whoa, no. Oh, no. Oh, shit, I skipped it. <laughs> oh, well, we don't care about Pyramid Head. We don't want to see him here. God, why is the skip button a pause? Oh, I mean, like, it's weird. Pyramid Head sucks anyway. Um, but there's no way to continue anyway. Uh, the game does not have an autosave. So, I don't think I have a save right before it. For a moment, it looked like, uh, there was a child in the corner. Uh, there was Pyramid Head, child. Pyramid Head didn't give him his tongue. No, no song. I wanted to see that tongue, but it skipped. Um, I don't know why... Is this, this is something that has always baffled me. By the way, welcome back, Snow Orchid. I don't know if you left, but you were quiet. I don't know if, th this has always boggled my mind, but select is pause. And it's always, it's been like that on the PlayStation 2 as well. Select is pause and pause is select. It's always backwards. And that always confused me. And I have no idea why they did that, if that was on purpose, or it was just, whoops. I don't get it. So that that's why you may see me do this right before I go into the menu. I do that every time. I do this. <laughs> every time. Something is written on the wall. If Joseph looks calm, he could be taken out of his cell. Joseph! Oh! Joseph is the one who made the box, who locked- had all the box with Louise, you know, uh, all the four locks on it and stuff, with the hair. Joseph is the one who lost his daughter, who is kind of violent, and, uh, is delusional. He's the one that's like Eddie. He's the one who, uh, is delusional and, uh, psychotic. Hey, Ra White Raven, what's up? Sure, if he looks calm, I'm sure it's going to be fine. <laughs> when you were, uh, uh, sweeping the camera to show the fencing, a corner looked like a child. He was so quick that that was what my mind processed it as. Yeah, that was Pyramid Head's, uh, pointy Pyramid Head. <laughs> Just a little, little bit of it. On, but you know that now. Let's see. Ooh. Now, I like this, uh, like, you know, Silent Hill 2 is art. It's, it's a Bob Ross painting. Um, all the, all the tracks that kind of lead, that lead to this door. This door. Which we can infer, and there is a lot of inference to Joseph I'd never noticed before, by the way. Well, that's nice, White Raven. A lot of inference about Joseph that I never noticed. But, uh, yeah, this cell is Joseph's cell. Uh, this is his cell. And all the tracks lead to it because it's, you know, like a good painting that that focal point is is very important. And uh, it's not it's not like you're going to get lost here. I mean, like none of the doors open They're They're all jammed or locked. It, they don't care because, well, it's it's kind of putting more importance on this door. Um, you're not going to get lost. But then again, maybe, you know, players would turn around and leave and not think to come back here. This this must happen often. What's that exterior? Uh Uh yeah, Regulus Pass there has an interesting point. Yeah, so there is a lot of relatability between James and Joseph. Which is very interesting, because, like, right away when I started reading that character description, it says, Feels like he's responsible for causing his daughter's death. Well, that's describing James, pretty much. And then it talks about how, uh, the person- I can go into the menu. Is this one? No. Which one is it? Wow, there's a lot of them. One of these two. This one? 
No, we read that one. Number and print. Oh, you know what? Well, it. Hmm. Is it no? Louise. I wonder if it's one that doesn't copy to your memos. Hmm. It would be here. I guess this one? No, it wouldn't be that one. I don't know. Uh, that too, yeah. It's interpretive. They could probably make a Silent Hill game centered around Joseph. Uh, yeah, they could. Um, I like that, you know, you see traces of Joseph all over the hospital. They don't confuse it with other other patients. You know why? Because they can keep it more focused that way. And uh, it's it's kind of um, that perspective of Joseph and, uh, you know, his his presence throughout the hospital. It all can be traced. Interesting. Um, and for all you know, uh, it's the person who wrote the carbon paper. For all you know, it's the patient that escaped. Oh yeah, you know what? I think it is. I think Joseph is the same patient that wrote this, the patient that stole the key to the historical society, the patient that escaped from the hospital, and buried it behind the praying woman. It's probably Joseph and you're getting to see his progression into this complete insanity. You notice like, you know, his, um, you know, his writing's a little different too. Like the Louise. I mean, like here, he uses prop proper capitalization, um, you know, uh, pretty good grammar, I guess. But then, you know, the four might have been a mistake. I don't know. But it's kind of like four locks, four. So, you know, if it's showing his uh, de-evolution, his, his spiral downward, you know, that that's interesting. I, I You know what? That's a new theory uh, of mine. I think I, I will say that that... That every memo in the hospital is probably Joseph. The criminal, Louise, all that. It's probably Joseph. And it's showing his spiral downward. And this is Joseph too. Because this is his cell. There's something written on the wall. Turn, turn, turn. The numbers, Duke. <laughs> the colors. No. Better not forget them. So I'll write them down here. The other one. My secret name. <laughs> uh, I get crazy. You know, you gotta get crazier and crazier. But that one, if you notice, like, the grammar is still all right. Like, it's it's proper capitalization and all that. It kind of It kind of shows me... As the game progresses, you kind of get a glimpse of... He starts, like, getting all wacky. Um, that's really cool. My new theory. Joseph is the one who left pretty much every memo. Maybe not the doctor's ones, of course. Did I get the shotgun? I think I did. I think I did, yeah. I got it. I love the shotgun. Um... It's tough to use, but can attack opponents in a group. White Chrism. Lost Memories. We gotta get the, uh, holding chat for the, uh, Rebirth Ending. Rebirth Ending. You gotta get the Lost Memories book. You gotta get the... Well, we got White Chrism, Lost Memories. Book of Crimson Ceremony, which is at the end of the game, and the Holy Chalice. The Holy Chalice is in the Horse Historical Society. So, we're gonna get that one. Bent Needle, we got that. Purple Bull Key, we, we're missing one key. Got the Dog Key. Uh, and I wanna kill myself. Yeah, I wanna kill myself. Now you're getting to see how I play Silent Hill too. I want to kill myself. Um, hey, that letter. I can't use my letter. Examine. Oh, 
Oh my god, Mary. Now I really want to kill myself. Ugh, Mary. <sighs> so, yeah. <laughs> We go, we go here? No. Is it this one? Oh, no, we don't check on here. <laughs> James must prepare for the ritual of the Holy Assumption. Yeah, he's like, uh, Henry. Or no, Walter. That's Walter. Don't assume! It makes an ass out of you and me, exterior. Let's see. M1, no. This one? No. We've been in there. Oh yeah, we didn't explore this this hallway. Whoops, I never explored it. Lapis eye key. Shotgun shells. Lapis eye. Lapis lazuli. An eye carved. An eye is carved into the top of the key. The iris part. Is made of lapis lazuli. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to represent. Kind of looks like an eye. Um. Hmm. No, I just realized. Um, you know, there's an eye key. There's an ear key. I wonder if that's a thing. Like a, you know, the common themes between all of them. Purple bowl key. Can't examine. How does that make sense as a key? I really don't understand. So, there we go. We got two of the keys. Now we have to deal with two of the locks, and then we're done. With this gigantic puzzle. Oh, there better be gold in that box. Oh, God. Oh, God. Move your ass, James. Oh god! Uh, apparently there is, I found out from the HD collection, that there is a block attack, but I'm gonna die trying, trying to get it to work. Let's try it. There is a, a block in this game. <coughs> but HD collection is using beta code. Oh god! And uh, I, it's easier to pull off in the HD collection, it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, they hit each other! Oh god, no. Not, no. Um... What? What'd I miss? Oh god! Jeez, they do a lot of damage. 9447217151, well thank you. God, I use up all my health. I always like, what's that number all about? Um, hello Antithes, welcome back. Oh, that's cool, Antithes. Maybe, maybe it's a good luck charm. Maybe that's what it represents. Yeah, they're aggro and normal, but you should see them on hard. They are unstoppable. It really takes off. Yeah, you could charge up. Charging. I can almost see like the the motion blur. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Turn, turn, turn. Two, seven. One. Five. There we go. Someone must have really cared for what was what's in this box. I mean, you, I mean, normally you'd be thinking, "Oh, this this is this has got to be good." And then when you open it, I mean, it's like kind of a it's kind of a blow when you see that it's empty, uh, and you're like, "I don't know what to do now." Uh, Gasil or Gasil, um, Gasil, I think it is Gasil. Uh, you press run button before getting hit in PC to block, I believe. 
That's what I did. But you get to time it perfectly, so it's it's really not very useful at all. That's a lot of damage. What's that exterior, Emma? I don't know what you're talking about. Invading hornet species? Are you talking about eat though? All right, here we go. Something good is gonna be in here. Well, you could see the hair too easily. It looks empty. And you're like, there's nothing inside the box. And you're like, what? Come on. I don't know what to do. I did all that work. I got, I got, I don't know, pyramid head smashed off a rooftop. Oh wait, no, I'm wrong. There are a few hairs inside. It's something. I got a piece of hair. Okay. So it's like, you know, someone must have really cared a lot about that hair. But I realize now, when I didn't before, that it's because it's the last thing Joseph has. It's like the only thing he has to hold on to for his daughter, who he feels he's responsible for causing her death. So, you know, it, Louise, which he probably named the box after her because it's her hair. So much importance on that piece of hair. And he's like, now I'll protect you because it couldn't be for. And then, you know, not actually very, not very long from now, uh, you know, you have Maria who yells at you for leaving her behind. You were supposed to take care of me. You know, which is interesting because there's all this, you know, with Joseph and James, there's all this, you know, there's this relatability. There's this, you know, these parallels between them. Um, talking about weird controls, recently I could discover how to perform the kick in PC instead of stomp. That took me a damn while to figure out. Well, that's something I don't even know about. I don't know anything about Gessiel or Gessel. Um, there you could do a kick and a stomp. There's two different. I didn't know that. So here we go. You, I guess you have to think out of the box. You get it out of the box, right? <laughs> you gotta think. Uh, you gotta be unconventional with uh with how your puzzles. They they are riddles. A Asian giant hornet species. They've been called the murder hornet. Hmm. And no one really stops to think or thinks to stop <laughs> and look at the key but you know they don't let you examine it anyway patient wing elevator is written on the tag it was stuck in the bath pipe well that's a human ear that's a, that's a human ear rotted as a keychain i think i should do that good idea <laughs> well also there's this kind of i wonder if it has anything to do with uh that story uh of who was it was it edgar Allan poe who cut off his ear and sent it to his love or is that just made up i want the best something to do with that because well obviously they got a lot of inspiration from edgar Allan poe or was it someone else i knew it it was an ear in that drain oh did you you put money on it how much did you win uh, I was stuck in the bath pipe. Not a very, uh, con I, I, I don't think I've ever heard anyone call it a bath pipe. But, yeah. <laughs> See, lock is broken. Okay. Oh, there it is. Easy. Van Gogh, that's it, Van Gogh. Which was, a, um, you know, a very, very famous, uh, very famous, um, painter, artist, 
which probably inspired you know a lot of our art artists did inspire silent hill too so for all you know it could be so yeah he cut off his ear okay edgar allen van poe i like that name anthony <laughs> so we could take it down to the level to the floor we couldn't see And you think it's scary as it is? Well, just the way. How long has this stream been? God, I have a lot to get through. And gun bullets. Just some items to prep me for something. Something's gonna happen. So I wonder, you could do a stomp and a kick? Does it require like mashing the button versus holding it down? So you can actually influence that? All right, now here's some story. And now with that thought process that I started earlier at the middle halfway through the stream, I talked about how I kind of have this new theory where I think, you know, it's you know, James had to have known who Laura was. And uh, she does say, Huh, you know my name? Well, she's kind of like blown away, stunned. Because he like never really cared much to even remember her name. And she's kind of like, whoa, this is a whole new level right here. Next level shit right now. Maybe he's starting to give a crap about me. Hmm. Nothing. Okay, here we go. Next scene. Maybe you, too, can play with some teddy bears <laughs> while you watch this. Eat popcorn, play with teddy bears. Yeah, that's on PlayStation 2. I'm going to turn that light off. Uh, but since there there is no pressure sensitive on PC keyboard, you have to pull a weird button combo. I wonder if it's like you... Because, you know, here what they did to resolve that was they um, they made it so that you either hold or you mash the button. So if you rapidly tap it, you swing... You hold it, you do an overhead, or is it's is it the other way around? I know it's weird. It's kind of the opposite way I would expect. Um, it's let's see. Yeah, if you tap it, he does overhead. I think overhead should be hold. Behold! No, he does he does a different attack when you hold it. I kind of think it should be the other way around. I always get really confused, and I'm really bad with melee because of it. So here we go. <laughs> Laura? Huh? You know my name? Eddie told me. That big fat blabbermouth. <laughs> How do you know about Mary? What's the big deal? Why can't you just tell me? You gonna yell at me if I don't? No, I won't. I was friends with Mary. We met at the hospital. It was last year. You liar! Laura, I... Fine, don't believe me. Just as bad as, but bad as you always Last do. year, Mary was already... I'm sorry, Laura. Anyway, let's go. We can talk about this later. This is no place for a kid. There are all sorts of strange things around here. I can't believe you haven't even gotten a scratch on you. Why should I? There's a lot of really obscure wait, controls wait. In, in this There's game. something that... I gotta get. Later, okay? But it's really important. What is it? A letter from Mary. Huh? I want to go get it. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I just recently learned about the block. 
and it was because HD collection uh, made it so easy to block. I did it by accident. Come on, hurry up. Is it in there? Hello, A18 Katrina. How are you doing? Yeah, in the back. That's what it is, Gasil. What are you doing, Laura? It's yeah, the side swing. The I desk. remember. See, I was wondering about that. I knew about it. Oh my God! Thank you so much for that info. Laura. I knew it existed. What are you doing? Oh my God! It's flesh lips. Ha ha! I tricked you. Open the door, Laura. Why should I? I'm a liar, right? Want me to open it? Huh? Huh? Do ya? What's the magic word? Laura? Okay. I guess it won't open it. I think I'll just leave you like this. You snotty little brat! Open up! Why? You... You... God! Laura? James, you deserve to suffer. Well. Oh my god, ow! <laughs> owie, 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 let go! I wish I saved. Oh my god, no! They all wanna strangle me. Oh, what? Memos? Now's not the time to read, James. Okay. We gotta kill them. Yeah. But I don't, I'm still kind of let, like, I want to look at them. Because <laughs> I want to figure them out and what, I don't know what they are. Uh, what do they represent? Are they Pyramid Head's victims? I think they, they do look a lot like the, his victims in the painting we see later. Um, his victims are kind of in boxes. You see feet. So, you know, what is, what does it mean? You know, they kind of look like, uh, patients on stretchers and body bags, don't they? And about that attack uh, with, the, with the pipe, I knew I used to use a strategy where, uh, I would, de I would defeat Eddie, uh, with the lead pipe because you could swing it side to side. I'm gonna try it, but I know it, it, I couldn't get it to work. I tried it earlier. Let's see. No. Only on hard, I guess. Let's see if I can hit him with it. No. No! Ah! Ah! <laughs> Let's see if I can do the overhead swing. It's not what I expect. I expect to hold it down. There you go! Oh, this is fun! <laughs> oh, wait. Not anymore. Oh, there we go. Oh, man. This is fun. I love it. It's so satisfying. Oh, wait. Okay, now we try again. Oh, they're getting scared of me? Are they getting scared? No way! I wonder, they, they, I have never seen that, that they actually tried to avoid me. Oh! Oh, there's an attack. There's one right there. That you, uh, they do this, like, <laughs> kind of leap attack so they can get you from a distance oh i missed gotcha this all oh yeah thank you chris john take this this i'll take you out of well take this and that no i'm not in the feet I'm not in the feet, people. No, I'm not. No, no, no. No! <laughs> they smell. Stinky feet. Oh, no, no. No! Did that attack. I, I've been, like, playing so recklessly. Here we go. Yeah. How long does this take with the lead pipe? <laughs> wow. Right, exploding kitten? Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Wait, I hear the sirens in the distance. Bam! Bam! 
Joanne. Good night. And look, it's scared, I swear. I swear it's avoiding me. It is. I swear it's avoiding me. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's just weird. Maybe it's just weird. Weird. Weird behaviors, right? Hey! Oh my god. Oof! Boy, I don't remember them taking so many bullets. Kill. Wow. There, there's one left. You wanna you wanna die? Yeah. Put put your put some uh athlete's foot pattern, you know, you, they smell. Uh it's louder now. Emmy, okay, you, well, thank you so much for hanging out, Emmy, and lurking me. I didn't know you were looking for so long. Yikes. Rest in pieces. Next time. Next time, I'll wipe my feet on your face. Take this. This will teach you proper hygiene. Yesterday, exploding kitten. James. 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 Yeah, so here's an area that shouldn't exist a garden. And teleported over, sounded like, you know, Mary's voice, James, kind of like maybe calling softly. Uh, it sounded to me like this game, what I love about it is so, it's so interpretive, even the sounds, especially the sounds. Uh, you know, it sounded like she was being kind of wheeled in the, on a, on a stretcher or something. You could kind of hear the, like the, it kind of reminds me of Jacob's Ladder a little bit. Um... And, you know, maybe, maybe he was taking a trip, uh, you know, through his, his subconscious there. But this, this kind of, uh, the rain looks pretty all right. I don't know. Wasn't the best anyway, but the HD collection didn't make it any better. Um, yeah. What's weird is this looks like the, an outside, but it's on the inside. And, uh, it's one of those illogical things. It's, it's an indoor garden. But it's also shown on the map to be much bigger than this, um, which is kind of crazy. Fable 3, sounds good. Uh, I, I've never really been big into any of the fables, I tried. More like a drug trip? I guess, I don't know, drugs make it easier though. Let's see. Let's, uh, you know, none of this makes sense, but let's continue forward. Well, there's a part of a hallway here that's kind of gated off there. Well, thank you. I do need to save. Let's see. Shotgun shells, but this right here is really cool. Also, the shadows look better. They did really improve this, uh, this enhanced edition. Vastly improved because the shadows look even better. Uh, looks like they fixed the lighting engine. If, if it looks more like it should. Um, but, you know, I don't know. What is this? I don't know. It's up for you to decide, I guess. It kind of looks like a uh, shrink wrap around the fan. It could be anything. I'm going to say it because I really need to. Um, do it here. <sighs> Got a headache and I think the, you know, the fact that I, I lost so much sleep just kicked in really bad. It's like time to get some more rest, I think. But we got the hospital to get through. Hmm. 
This seems like a really bad spot to kind of leave things on, but actually, it's a good spot. Hmm. It's not a it's not a place that I normally leave things though. I wasn't planning on ending the run here. There's so much to experience here. And it kind of it's like, you know, stopping in the middle of a chapter, I think. I don't know if I want to do that. Because you got to get through to the end. I'm thinking. Probably not. Want to continue? Whoa, I want to grab that real quick. <laughs> Let me grab it and then I'll go. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, this room's interesting. I like the music too, it's different. Captain Crunk, hi. Way to crash the stream. <laughs> Hello, crashing in on me. Um. I really like the design of the uh, nightmare hospital. It's like fantastic. It, it, you know, like there's, it doesn't make sense that they wrap so much in sheets. Um, what's up with all the sheets? These look like they've been kind of soaked and molded. They're molding at this point. They, they like, there's so much water. Um, and water's kind of a theme of depression. And, uh, you know, he, his nightmare kind of is a lot of, it's a lot of uh, mold mildew. Uh, black mold and and water damage and organic stuff growing everywhere In this room, it's just loud crashing Someone has to keep it down But I like that I, I like the random sounds they add a lot to the imagination and uh, What's this door? I kind of like to try every door because well got to be thorough or a lore run and you never know maybe maybe one of them will be unlocked randomly just one day I'll walk I'll be like oh, and then there will be like a whole nother game and it'll be like the un unannounced Silent Hill 5 by Team Silent and I'll go through that door and I'll be like oh my god it's Silent Hill 5 <laughs> and not homecoming not that I know a lot of people do play the game probably hope you know holding out for that <laughs> there's a lot of people I'm sure keep it down keep it down ah, hi lavender <laughs> hi welcome to the stream ah okay so there are variations of the nurses as you can see you got the ones that look like they're more moldy and more like water. They look water damaged too. Like everything around. You know, even the even the monsters are too. Uh, but these are, I they tend to be more aggressive I've noticed, but I'm not really sure. But then you got, uh, well, they're both. They're both very, the dark ones are, are not good. Ah! And, right, like, it does help to have your flashlight off. But if you don't, if you have it on, uh, when they spot you, well, it's too late. You know, you turn it off, they're still gonna know you're there. You gotta, you gotta go into the room with the flashlight off before getting their attention or they will remember you're, you're there. <laughs> um, but eventually they'll, they'll forget. Yeah, the nurses have bacon nips. <laughs> Hey, Double Beast, Bacon Nips, both of ya. Dry cell battery. Got the basement storeroom key. Right, painted arms. Now, Ketahajime, I think, said something in my last kind of playthrough um, about how um, it may be inspired by the Evil Dead. Or is it, is it the Evil Dead? Or is it something else? Or or Day of the Dead? But maybe I I, I know you're listening. Um, it kind of looks like uh what the cover? I think you had a picture last time, so it may be that they are uh it's like a uh an under layer of 
of paint. It is painted. Um, but here's the thing. Um, it's underneath the tiling, which has been destroyed, damaged, and torn away. And then on top of that, it ha there's a sheet, a sheet, a white sheet covering the wall that has been ripped. And uh, the imagery of it is really interesting. Because it kind of, like, to me, I see a lot of motion. Like, the hands are ripping the sheets away. They're like, Ugh! Ugh! tearing it down. Part of the wallpaper is torn. I can see something drawn on the wall beneath. Are those hands searching for something? Or are they just a sign of pain? <laughs> the interpretive nature. I have in! It's a four month sub. Nice. I have alerts muted if you guys don't know. They're muted just for a lower run, so I don't get interrupted. I know it does, it, it's like, you know, I'm interrupting myself enough as it is. Hi, Sil Silomitas, good to see you. Thought there were tiles there? Yeah. Sometimes these games, you know, you, it deserves um, a more thorough look at them. Um, they put a lot of detail into it. But I like this, he's kind of sitting there going, hmm. Maybe they're looking for something. Or, hmm, maybe. But you know what? If you're really good at, um, I guess, connecting the dots, I, I'm, you know, <laughs> patterns, right? Connecting the dots. If you're really good at that, you may look at this and think of, because he said that, it made me think of him. Assign the pain. And then I thought of that monument, and I'm like, what does that monument mean? You know, the one that was talking about how their hands... 67 people drowned, and their hands are searching, or, 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 you know, like the little Baroness myth, the story. Maybe because that story, for all you know, could have been imagined, just as the prison was later. It could have been imagined, and this inspired that story. Their hands reaching up from the lake. You know, it's really cool. Uh, you know, when you think about it. Hey, hey, hey! There's a piece of paper on the bed. And uh, I think I'm going to stick with that theory that this memo and all the memos of the patients are all, all of them are the same person. They're all the one who is a parallel to James and his descent into madness and James and his eventual descent into madness if he uh if he continued along the path he's in or on and I think it is uh Joseph who is also the one behind the Luis boss box um Evan Salamido says but what about the arcade college students bongo you mean the Silent Hill arcade I have it installed. I'm going to stream it one day. Maybe soon. I don't know. But it's just a fun little shooter. Thank you for the follow. Is it Batu Han? Batu Hank? I'm not really sure if it's all meant to be said like that. I was locked up inside the basement's basement. It was so small and dark and I was so afraid. Well, thank you, uh... Newman Nums? Newman Nums. <laughs> Numa Numa Nums. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. That game's fun? Well, I, I don't doubt it. It's like a little shooter. I mean, like, what? how can you go wrong? Yes. No. That's right, notes. Ah! Uh, there. I dropped my precious ring. But I will never, ever go back there. Never. And, you know, this this kind of stuff leads a lot, you know, leaves a lot to the imagination. And you kind of imagine, what did he see? I mean, really, was it, was it really that bad? Ah! Run! 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 <laughs> Run! Sorry, the, the nightmare hospital really, really scares me. 
You don't think it could get much scarier than it was, and it does. <laughs> Alright. Look at this. Oh, we have to show that off. We did last time. Feels like I've done this already. We have to kill these. All right. So there is a door here, which is kind of, I don't know really much about it. I really don't have many interpretations, but here we go. It's locked. There's a painting of a woman on a door. Oddly enough, the hand part of the painting is actually 3D and sticks out. Nice! Is this... Oh, this must be a movie poster for Silent Hill Revelation 3D! Good movie, right? <laughs> is there a different version of Silent Hill that exists for each of its inhabitants at the same time, like a multiverse? Yeah, pretty much. It's not a <laughs> multiple dimension, though. Uh, mosquitoes, it's... You know, my theory on it is that it's just manifesting, um, you know, a, it manifests one psyche upon the town. But, you know, it's kind of a metaphorical. It's more metaphorical than literal, but, you know, you could think of it that way. You know, everyone sees the world in a, in a different way. And, uh, basically what's happening is their, their psyche is being manifested onto the world. Um... And Silent Hill helps bring that out. Um, so yeah, it manifests their subconscious desires, the doubts, the fears, their, you know, everything's being manifested from the sub subconscious. Um, and Silent Hill has the power to do that. Yeah, you're right now. It's interpretive, so you could kind of, like I said earlier, like Silent Hill has the problem where like, you know, a lot of the fans like to inject their own, because the game's relatable, right? You know, there's a lot of stuff we can relate to in this game, but a lot of fans really like to inject their own kind of, I don't know, their, their own kind of relatable stuff into it, like, you know, sexual frustration is one of them. <laughs> fans like to inject stuff into the game and, and see things that are not there. But that's kind of interesting because that's Silent Hill too. That's kind of a, a thing with Silent Hill. You know, is it really there? Well, you know, Angela may not be seeing his monsters. Um, you know, uh, maybe James hasn't been seeing Angela's things, you know? She's seeing the world differently, he is too. They're both very different in how they see the world. And uh, also, you know, like they're all different. Everyone's different. When it comes to this game, Laura doesn't see anything. She doesn't see monsters or anything. Because, well, you know, she's. Well, a lot of people do say she's innocent. She's a child. But a lot of it has to do is she has no baggage. She has no, um. She's still kind of. She's not in denial, is the big one. Because Silent Hill's about denial. And uh, the five stages of grief. It's like art. So it goes through those stages. Denial is the first stage. Second stage is anger, but we, we don't know. We probably haven't seen that stage. He's already been through it. But for the most part, the anger stage, you could see it as, well, that's the Joseph. Um, that's, that's seen through Joseph. But also, it's kind of seen through Eddie. Um, and then you see the, um, the third stage, which is, um, which is uh, bargaining. That's right. The third stage is bargaining, and, um, and, you know, you do see a lot of bargaining throughout the game, but it's not really a focus. But the fourth stage, depression. And that's what we're falling into right now. In that stage of the game, we're in the, the depression stage of the game. Um, but you'll see it more later. Just a little bit later, you'll see more of that. <laughs> Whoa, I got a follow from Kaminari Sato. You know, you know, uh, the Sato. <laughs> All right, but if you take a closer look at this, well, it's not just one woman in red. Look closely. Look, just back up a little bit. Back that ass up. 
Back that ass up, James, and take a looky looky at that butt. Well, there's one butt. I gotta get a better look, though. There we go. Look at that curvature <laughs> of that woman there. It kind of remi reminds me of a Rubenesque kind of painting. It's, it kind of like, uh, she's kind of, she's shaped. Well, shaped. Well, you got the green, woman in green here. You got the red. You got the woman in blue right there in the bottom right. Let's look closer then, uh, if you can't see it. All sorts of these women are surrounding this door. What does it mean? What does it mean? I don't know. <laughs> I've never really put much thought into it. Um, but if you look even closer here, well, there's quite a few women. There's there's one right back there in kind of like a uh, light blue, maybe gray. Uh, perhaps this shape right here on the edge is another woman. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, six possible women here. There's one in green down there. And, uh, what is, what is this all about? And then you can see the hands kind of sticking out right there. It's in 3D, baby. Yeah. More 3D gimmicks for me. And the tiny, tiny little lady. Where? Tiny lady? You mean that one? No, that one's not tiny. Let's see, um... And it's kind of cool. I don't know what it means, but ah, whatever. <laughs> I've never really thought about it, but it kind of reminds me of, I guess I said last time, I said kind of reminds me of Disney princesses. You know how they are all color coordinated. This game does kind of, does have Disney references in it. Um, I don't know. You know what? They look like angels. You know what? I think they are because like Joseph does say the angel of the door. Doesn't he? he? He calls them angels. I think that one at the top does have wings. I really do. I think there's wings on it. An angelic painting. Kind of reminds me of a lot of uh, art that I've seen of angels. It really does. Usually angels are depicted uh, with flowing, flowing dresses. Um, and long hair. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're angels. But I really like this room because it's ASMR. That's right, ASMR to the max. And you guys came here right because I was in the ASMR category, right? Yeah. Here we go, baby. Well, anyway, it kind of sounds like a respirator or a, sorry, not that, uh, what is it called? Uh, I guess a respirator is the name for it. Kind of sounds like the iron lungs, the ones that breathe for you. It's Jay. Hey, hey, it's Jay. Welcome to the chat. <laughs> iron lungs. It kind of uh, gives you the sense of someone who's ill, extremely, extremely ill, uh, that, that, you know, it's what it's doing is it's manifesting his his uh, doubts, his his insecurities. You know that that thought like of oh man, you know that Maria's pretty hot, right? <sighs> you know I I could I could totally do her. But then he's like, you know, I went through three years of this shit. You know what if she gets sick? What if she gets sick too? And you know, you just like, ugh, I don't want to, I don't want to go through that again. There are empty medicine bottles here. Is this what Maria was taking? Is Maria sick now too? And this is Maria's room, but it's the nightmare. 
It's kind of his his nightmare. It's the uh, nightmare version of it, and she's not in here anymore. Maria's not here. Where could she have gone? Hey, welcome, Alexandria Artiste. Uh, yes, yes. I'm coming in to Fungo saying Maria's totally hot, and I could totally do her. And I was like, okay, party. Mm, it's time to party. Party, 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 James. It's time to party. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, I would totally do her if she was here, if she was here, if she was here right now, I would totally do her. Okay. There's not too many interesting rooms outside that one. They're all locked. Jeez. This one's pretty interesting and it has a memo in it. Which is why I came back. Handgun bullets ample. There's a scrap of paper on the ground. Just some doodle. Huh? Something is written on it. She's just an angel. No one knows. Only I can see the lady of the door. They cannot walk along her bridge of thread. They fall from the weight of their crimes. Like bloated and ugly corpses, their sins. She devours them. Sin and sinner alike, she saves me. She is an angel. Well, that person's obviously delusional. That's Joseph. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, what's really cool about this is, well, one, he says, only I could see the lady of the door, and I'm like, well, I guess there must be something really wrong with me. Um, bridge of thread, you know, bridge of thread. It's like walking on, uh, it's walking on a tightrope, you know, something that could easily snap and you could fall and die. Uh, you fall from the weight of your crimes. Well... James, you should take a look within yourself. You, you are self-reflecting, but not enough. James has, you know, that weight of crime. Um, like bloated and ugly, ugly curse. She saves me. She is the angel. So it, uh, Joseph does call her an angel. And, uh, you know. You know, she. She devours. The sins. So what it's saying is basically you got to go through that door because in, in a sense by going through that door she is devouring you and that's you know if you're a sinner she will devour you and that's well uh, that's how you have to progress no though it's not obvious it's not obvious that's how you progress but that memo is kind of a that's what it's for you see this and you go only only one wait you know, I'm not supposed to be seeing this? Like, seriously? That's not supposed to be there? Let's try the other rooms. Hmm. Oh, I like this room. Or hallway. Can I go in here? I can't, can't I? No. Uh, here's an important room later, but not now. You might know. Nothing useful. Wait, isn't there like a... Oh, wait. Is that Silent Hill 3 I'm thinking of where there's a save on the ground? Okay. This way. Die! I gotta take a look at some. Yeah, they are stronger. They're harder to kill, the darker ones. Okay, so yeah, this is kind of one of those illogical what things like this right here. What is this? You could think it's a supporting pole or beam or whatever, uh, support for the building, but well, it's it's kind of going up through the floor above. Uh, though, I think we are on the third floor. Well, it's obvious it's going through the roof. Through the roof. 
He doesn't comment on it as far as I know. But it looks kind of like the trunk of a tree, but it's wrapped up. Illogical. But, well, the mind. Sometimes it, it really don't make much sense. How the mind works, but... It works. At least mine is still working somehow. <laughs> Chat is so quiet. I guess people really like this stuff. I've noticed, uh, you know, you know, people aren't like hype hype you know you you see a big difference Montana between high, you know when people are really really hype and high energy versus when they're kind of just chilling kicking back not too hype I do see both ranges I do see a lot of both <laughs> right I'm gonna save here just to be safe I always say that actually you know what I'm not gonna save here I don't need to I won't die I say that now I heard something. Animate Zach. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, this is hard stuff to do. I've always been so compelled by this area of the hospital, this hallway that's blocked off. Why? Because it curves off and you can't see. I want to see what's over there. And also that sound that we kind of heard, it just stopped. There was a sound and I've always been so intrigued. And there's this kind of like dead spot on the, on the wall there that kind of, it, it just feels like I can get sucked right in. Is that black mold? Well, I didn't really think of it that way. I didn't know what black mold was. It would make sense. But back when I re really, like, it was just so... I just wanted to know what's back there. And, uh, well, there is a whole area. There's the boiler room, pump room, storeroom. Yeah, it, I guess you could say it's interpretive, bro. Like, if it's a child or whatever. Uh, whatever you want to think, I, I thought it sounded like a squealy little piggy. A piggy. <laughs> oh, we're in the basement now. But you'll hear it. It plays usually after this. If I if I leave now, maybe. Let's see. It, it usually plays after uh, Maria shows up. On the PC version of the game, not on the PS2 version. And I don't know why that is. Um, I asked the I asked the person in charge of the enhanced edition why. Um, and, uh, um, uh, the person who was here in the chat, uh, said it's because, uh, the, the programming of sound effects in the game, um, they're programmed to like an RNG, random number generator. Um, basically the volume is on a control switch that goes up and down, up and down, up and down, and it randomly decides where to play. And some, you know, it gets stuck on the bottom. On the PC version of the game, it gets stuck on the bottom and it, it ends up not playing because it gets stuck. Just the programming glitch for the most part. I think it's a glitch. So, you know, after this scene, it seems to work again. That's how all the sound effects work in this game. That's, that's why uh, there's a lot of instances where you'll get a sound that plays on one playthrough but doesn't play again or, or a sound that you haven't heard on multiple playthroughs that'll play on like your fifth. And you'll be like, what? And you'll be like, I've never heard that before. And it'll be mind blowing. Mind blown. Because you learn, you end up learning new things about this game every playthrough. And, you know, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't end even with the sound effects in, in the RNG. I like this kind of, uh... Oh, by the way, Spider, thank you for letting me know. Spider1246. Um, that's amazing game design. Yeah, they, they put a lot of programming code into this engine, but they stripped it out for Silent Hill 3. A lot of it got stripped out, and then even more got stripped out. All that programming language got stripped out for 4, um, like the lighting engine and stuff. But it's all like really intricate and advanced programming. Um, um, that's why I, I think the team, the team Silent... Uh, they're one of the most, uh, they, they designed this engine, which I feel like is probably one of the most advanced engines, video game engines, ever. 
because to this day you know a lot of people still really don't understand it and how it works which is why you know um you know the mod project leader of enhanced edition had to pull together a lot of had to reach out and talk to many game developers by the way many you know maybe those who are professional those who just you know do mods for games reached out to a lot of people who don't even play silent hill just to solve the mystery of a lot of this programming so there's like red handprints all over the shelf and they're bloody and smeared and it's like well it kind of suggests especially with the sign uh kind of half blocked that you have to push it i don't know if it's just kind of like one of those visual things that tell you what you need to do but or if it's something else i wish i knew what ito was working on right now well there's a lot of very talented game developers you know that were a part of team silent that are not putting their you know their talent to good use anymore like owaku who's making who's still working for konami as far as i heard uh making kind of like you know what are they dating dating games kind of like smut basically dating games for japan cell phones that's what he was last reported doing and it's like owaku really oh this guy is a genius who is a like a po a poet who who is now doing that you know you know i think the genius of subtlety were those two sato owaku those were the ones and uh they were they weren't involved uh they weren't involved after three um yeah it's very impressive it's on the playstation 2 like i mean this is how were they able to do that well here's the thing you know that people say now that we have less limitations than ever oh you know, video games are are like you know you can make the most amazing thing it's amazing technology is great right now well no it's not because well it's the limitations of the hardware that really caused them to put such thought into the code because if it weren't for that well they, they had to optimize the hell out of this engine so it would run so they had to really put a lot of thought into memory usage and code and how the game handled everything loading and all that so limitations are a good thing because we have less limitations than ever that's not good no we have to kind of figure out a way to get around stuff it, it causes us we have to be more creative to get around our limitations this is why you hear that quote you know the enemy of art is the absence of limitation who i think it was orson wells who said that i agree seeing there are red head prints on the shelf okay Oh, Jesus! Mary? <laughs> oh, Maria. It's you. I thought you were... Sorry. Anyway, I'm glad you're alive. Anyway? What do you mean, anyway? <laughs> you don't sound very happy to see me. I should be yelling I was at her. killed back there. Why didn't you try to save me? All you care about is that dead wife of yours. I've never been so scared in my whole life. You know what? Totes did that on purpose, Christian. Less about me, could you? Well, I do want to fuck you. <laughs> no, I just. Then stay with me. Don't ever leave me alone. You're supposed to take care of me. <laughs> so, what about Laura? Did you find her? Yeah, but she ran away. We've got to find her. I know, right? You Shimona virus. You really care about her. I 100% agree. It's I've so sad. I just feel sorry for her. 
She's all alone. And for some reason, I feel like it's up to me to protect her. Well, thank you for the random quote, Ayasura. By the way, Ayasura, uh, um, you, you should definitely, uh, you're gonna, um, whenever I say I need a random quote of wisdom, you should post it. Mmm, <laughs> can I? We need something smart right now. Random po- Uh, random- Random quote of wisdom, please. And no, not my quotes. Th those aren't wise. <laughs> and more limitations, right? Shimona, like, I 100% agree. Code is sloppy nowadays. Uh, it's like, why? A game that my computer can fully handle, like Resident Evil 3 Remake, why does it run so badly <laughs> when Resident Evil 2 Remake was just fine? Because, well, whoever got a hold of that engine and made Resident Evil 3 Remake, they didn't optimize it all too well. Um, they didn't really intend for me to be play uh, my computer and my system and my build, uh, the way it's, uh, you know, kind of operating. They didn't really anticipate um, whatever driver conflict or whatever, I don't know, bug, buggy code, sloppy code. That's what it is. So, um, yeah, she kind of gets on you. And what you do see a glimpse of with Maria here, yeah, they were really good. They had to be creative with reflections, and now they don't even try. Um, they had to figure out a way to do it, and they did. Uh, and they had to optimize it so it didn't lag the computer or the game down or the console or whatever. So it didn't lag. Um, but now they're it's like, you know, less limitations than ever, but we most games don't have reflections. But yeah, she comes out of the door just you know, right away she's like, I was scared. And then she's like, I'm angry. And then she's like, I'm sad. And then she just goes through all those emotions with within a, a short span of time, which is kind of you know, projecting, you know, he's kind of, it's just kind of uh, showing a lot about like how, you know, the kind of state of emotional state of Mary and, uh, you know, the distress and the, we do hear at the end of the game with the long hallway, um, you know, when you get to hear her and uh, their interactions, which we assume is real, um, you know, that really happened to James. We, we do understand why she kind of goes through all those emotions all within a short span of time. And you just think, oh, women, right? <laughs> but no. And then she, like, seems to really care about Laura because Mary. Because, well, because he knew Mary cared about her. And if my theory, I feel like my theory is correct, Maria is a manifestation of James's memories of Mary. Not of Mary, but of his memories. Which goes, it goes along with, uh, well, it goes on along very well with Silent Hill 1 and 3, which has a character manifested from the memories of another. Here we go. What is this? Is this a scary, is this a scary, scary basement? It doesn't look all too scary. There's just a little bit of blood. Itty bitty little bit of blood. Got a copper ring. I mean, that's something. Copper. Copper's worth something, right? I can go pawn this, right? Can I, you think I can go pawn this? Let's see. Um, maybe we should take a look at it. Um, look at the detail, though. I love the the wood and and the way like you don't see repeated textures in this game. And this is something I compliment Silent Hill for. Um, you know, all the, all the first three, the first three, not four, but the first three Silent Hill games, what I really liked around the time you saw a lot of games do this repeated textures to save memory. Uh, it saved memory. Um, also it just looked really bad, especially when you zoom the camera out and you can see all these, this pattern that looks just God awful. Well, Silent Hill one, two, and three made sure that everything kind of had a unique texture. And I don't know, I don't know why them and no one else can, you know, around the time in, in nowadays you see a lot of repeated textures. I don't know why modern games, but like the variety of the, of the textures here, 
you know, no, no spot really looks the same. I can't really pinpoint, um, you know, like this texture. Oh, it's used over there. Um, you know, the, the, yeah, I got that texture is used over here on this wall. No, it all looks so different. I can't really say like over here. There's like pieces of board that are pulled up. Pieces of board that are pulled up and underneath you see concrete. Um, you see cracked concrete. You see like that blood on there. Uh, you see like splits in the board that are very random and unique. Uh, you see like water, like a water stain here, right behind me. It's a darker spot on the on the on the floor. What you know, this crazy detail, like, makes it really sells the horror too. It sells the illusion that this is a real place. It's not very hard to suspend your disbelief and believe this is real. Look at this. Look at this little odd detail, like having you know this this stuff you don't see in games. You never did the run then, you, did, you don't now, really. Um, maybe maybe Final Fantasy VII, but, you know, that game's immaculate. It's not about the, you know, dirtiness of the graphics. That's that's the, what's beautiful about it, how dirty it is, and how unique and random it is. There's a unique door scratch pattern on the ground there that that really shows, that it gives you a sense of this, this, is, this is lived in, this place is real. You get the scratchy scratch marks on the door or on the floor from the door yeah hi Luke Cage uh, did I agree you I hope you're doing really well blah, blah, blah. so yeah there's all that crazy crazy detail which is not exclusive to this area which is and whatever you want to believe this is this the sound effect it's fine you know it's all fair game but I always thought the screeching sounded like a pig. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess because pigs are cute. But I think it's bugged. Yeah, I think it's bugged no matter what because it's not playing anymore. I think it gets stuck. Like like the programmer said. Um. So once it loads the area, it plays once and gets stuck. And it only plays once, but it's supposed to play non-stop and never stop. I think it is a pig sound effect, though. Because, you know, they used a lot of animal sounds. Secure so Yamaoka used a lot of animal sounds. And uh, I've dug into uh, the sound effect library of, the, of all these games. Just to understand it a little bit better. Uh, just to be like, man, how did he create those creepy, creepy sounds? I had to know. Oh, wrong floor. Damn it. Oh, well, you got this. Hi there, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to another exciting edition of Trick or well, Thank you for gifting that sub to me, sir. Here you either answer the question The veil's first. Yeah, the veil's oh, curse. Thank you, animates there. And our lucky, or should I say, unlucky challenger today is Jane. And who Jane said? Thunderman! Who said Silent Hill never breaks the fourth wall? <laughs> That's it. Three Lakeside Amusement Park. Okay, quickly. I choose Fantasyland. <laughs> witnessed a gruesome murder a few years back. A brother and sister were playing in the road when they were attacked and chopped into pieces with an axe. Born flesh, smashed bones, splattered <laughs> blood, <laughs> and finally. What a terrible tragedy. What a gruesome end to such innocent lives. What was the name of the murderer who committed this vile act? One, Walter Sullivan. Oh. Two, Scott Ferris. Oh. Three, oh. Eric Gaines. 
It's gotta be Walter. Now for our third and final we know question. now. South of the lake is a deserted old neighborhood called South Vale. From there to Pale Vale, the central resort area northwest of the lake, there's only one road you can take. Just one road, no more. <laughs> the third and final question is, what is the name of that road? One, Bachman Road. Two, Rindell Street. Three, Nathan Avenue. Well, that's the last of our questions. Have you got it all figured out? When you know the answers, head to the storeroom on the third floor to collect your prizes. But be careful if you're wrong. <laughs> well then, everybody, thanks for tuning in. See you again sometime. What was that? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Uzbek! Hello. And thank you for the compliment. I appreciate you. Um, oh, well, so basically what the trick or treat game show is, is how well have you been paying attention so far? <laughs> that's what it's doing. You know, that's the, that's the great part. Uh, but it's like, you know, if you've been paying attention, you will know these and you, you should be rewarded. Because you have to be paying attention. If you really want to understand this game, pay attention. <laughs> Maybe I should do my own thing. Welcome to Fungo TV. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> On the new exciting edition of Lore Run. I don't know. Here's today's guest, you. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Yes, I see it now. Okay, so uh, I think this was one of the changes of the Silent Hill HD, uh, the the enhanced edition. Um, what they did was they added this cord. I think. Yeah, they added the cord to connect the refrigerator. I don't know if that was something intentional. I mean, like the developers wanted to do. I don't know. But either way, it just. I think what it was was. Uh, you know, like the sign at the beginning of the game, if anything. Um, you know, thank you, Uzbek. You've been watching this whole time. Well, thank you. Yes, this game is admirable. Chapped in the pieces! Anyway, yeah, this cord and like the sign at the beginning of the game. You know, they're not meant to be, I, I don't know, like logical. Maybe, you know, they're all, everything's kind of influenced by James, but things aren't supposed to make sense. Um, you know, like the large numbers, you know, between towns, but, you know, also the fact that this refrigerator has, um, you know, an ambient lighting within it when you open the, when you open the door. When you open the door, there's a light, but there's, no, there, I don't think there was a cord connecting the fridge to any, like, I don't know, power. But it's like, you know, like there's all sorts of stuff that don't really make a whole lot of sense in Silent Hill. But when you try to apply logic to a game that's like an art, it's like a painting that's like, you know, meant to be interpreted. Something that's, you know, kind of as convoluted as so someone's psyche, you know, someone's, you know, it, it's like, you know, you try to apply a logic. It's just, it's going to irk you, you know, it's just like, that's not going to make sense no matter how hard you try. And I think this chord was added to the enhanced edition like the sign at the beginning was changed um because there's no cord and there's a light on in the fridge it don't make sense but it's like yeah it's like yeah it's not supposed to but here we go opening the refrigerator for for verge there's something that looks like a refrigerator will you open it? yes best best scene ever you can't open it yeah maria give me a hand here come on you're supposed to be the big man around here. How's a little girl like me supposed to help? <clears throat> What's this? Not very cute, is it? Here, James. You take it. Mm, thanks. Hmm. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Kind of sounds like Bill Clinton there. Whoa, hey, Tina Bow, how's it going? How are you doing? 
Um, hanging fridge from PT? Actually, it does. Hmm. I never thought of it. The frozen in time. <laughs> so, there's the ambient lighting. Well, I guess it just wouldn't make enough sense if there was no cord. Well, you know, there's plenty of stuff without any logical power source. Um, good, thank you for asking. Long lore run. I'm gonna need lots of sleep after this stream. Uh, last two days, 20 hours of lore. <laughs> um, and then I have probably another 20 hours of lore to do. So that's why I'm probably gonna split it up and do four, four days and two days this weekend, two days next weekend to do this. So I'm gonna continue it. Um, and that way I could kind of get some videos up on YouTube of it and, you know, maybe we might see more people. It's been pretty good though in views, but we might see more. How do you know I'm not still the big man around here? <laughs> yeah, that's something interesting though. I didn't even think to go look. Um, uh, but the fridge, you can go try it before you get Maria. And he says, uh, uh, and he says something like, I don't know. I can't. I can't. What does he say? I, he says I can't. I can't do it by myself. Which could be metaphorical and literal. They do a lot of that in this. Um, can't do it. I can't do it by myself. You know, it's too hard. The, you know, he needs Maria to move on, which is the metaphorical, I think, intention. He he does. It really doesn't feel like he's strong enough to move on. Which is interesting if that was if that was the intention. Hello, Skonag Skonoggle? Yeah, is, I guess it is an HD version, yeah, it's the enhanced edition. I'm gonna make that a command before next weekend. And I will. Uh so that people could go download it. Uh there's lots of update videos on YouTube. Um they they you could go watch their YouTube videos, they talk about it. They talk about I think adding this cord right here. And look at the lighting though. You gotta appreciate it. I think there's more good than bad. That's the thing. It's like, you know, the, the creative changes are very, very minute and don't really... I mean, like, how it affects you, like, Silent Hill is all about, you know, the... Uh, the impression it's making on your subconscious. And not necessarily the stuff you're, you're really noticing, but how it makes you feel uncomfortable. Uh, the stuff that don't really seem right and don't fit and don't really feel right. But you just keep going, you know, you don't really stop to think about it. You're just like, ah, oh, this, I'm so really dreaded out right now. You keep moving. You know, the, the fact, the absence of cord here would be kind of one of those moments. Um, and we don't know what the creators were trying to do with all that stuff. Uh, for instance, you know, um, you know, a light, you know, there's a can of light bulbs in the game like what you know that doesn't make sense why why put light bulbs in a can <laughs> well that doesn't seem like a good way to ship them but yeah they you open you use can opener to get a light bulb what so yeah it's that's supposed to make sense and it's that stuff that's just like weird uh that that makes you feel uncomfortable stuff that you think about like the can of light bulbs and then the stuff that is meant to work on your subconscious maybe like perhaps the sign at the beginning of the game uh, you look at it, you see a large number for the miles, and you go, oh, that seems like a long ways away. And then you just go, oh well, and then you just keep moving on. You just, well, man, that feels like it's gonna be a long, a long trip. Um, yes, I would recommend the PS2 version of the game, but there's no really good way to play it now. And, uh, CRT TVs are the way to go, and those are hard to find. And they aren't really that good. <laughs> you can find big CRT TV television set to play standard games on. And uh, that would be the way to play the PS2 version. But, you know, this is actually commendable. This is really good, too. Uh, you know, here's another thing. This game wasn't intended to be in HD, was it? Um, so the fact that they, they're they kind of, you know, stretching it out and making it, uh, you know, making it 16 by 9 versus 4 by 3. Well, that's changing the original intention, too. And perhaps, you know, the sides weren't really, you know, this. They designed the game in such a way that you, you know, they knew that you were supposed to be seeing just what you were seeing on the screen. And they didn't design the game for you to be seeing the extra stuff on the sides. No, there's not really a big difference between versions of this game, which is kind of really crazy. 
usually you do see differences, but Silent Hill 2 doesn't really... It's, it's you know, like the versions that all countries receive are, are all pretty consistent, pretty, pretty much the same. Um, it's crazy that it was pretty much polished, pretty much finished, be, you know, by the time they're ready to release it everywhere. Um, there's nothing in the refrigerator anymore. A hideous smell is coming from inside. Yeah, you know, like, you know, there was food, it was used, uh, you know, um, the food seeped out and leaked out and it, it's growing mold and, and crap all over the inside, which also suggests that the refrigerator doesn't, is probably not cooling. But the lights on, well, you know, most refrigerator lights are powered by battery. And this dialogue right here don't really suggest that the refrigerator is powering, um, is, is actually on as far as the refrigeration. So, you know, it, it makes less sense to me that there's a cord attached to it. And, you know, we're talking old refrigerators, not modern. They used, they used a battery for the, for the indoor light. Hey, Nutty Blue, thank you for that follow. Ew, stinky. <laughs> I own the Japanese version of two, three, four. Really? <laughs> I've, I've, I've been, I've always wanted to own those copies. I've always wanted a Japanese copy of those games. Too bad. I think I got, I really do. I remember getting the Japanese copy of Silent Hill 3. I think I might've sold it though. Yeah, I think it did. Hey, so kit channel. Welcome. I didn't see you till now. So here we go. We're gonna go to the lady of the door who swallows, or sorry, devours the sins. The angel of the door. Um. Yeah, PT shouldn't have been canceled. I agree. I agree. Let's go noggle. So let's take a look at the rings. Covering. I found it in the basement of the hospital. It's engraved with a picture of a spider. Oh, it's one of those spooky Halloween rings. I get it. Spooky. Oh, I like I have this ring. Ring from the refrigerator. It's engraved with a disgusting, bloated face. I understand this. Oh my god, I understand these rings now. I just realized. Stupid me, I understand it. You know what these rings represent? There's two rings. This ring represents Mary, who is dead. This ring represents Maria, who is like a spider. I get it now. And how that really fits in there, everything, I don't know. Because they do that again at the end, by the way. This is the halfway point of the game. You get two items to open the door, right? One represents Mary, one represents Maria. At the end of the game, when you defeat the two pyramid heads, you get two eggs. One represents Mary, one represents Maria. And that's how you get through the doors. Same thing. It's kind of like a, a parallel foreshadowing. It's poetry. It works. <laughs> Yeah, lead, like burden. That's another thing. Thank you, I, sir. So lead is like bur burden. You know what? During my other lore runs, I asked people what, what they m might have represented. No one really told me. Um, so copper represents, you know, not, not, it, copper isn't the most phenomenal metal. It's, uh, you know, but it works as a metal. Perhaps that's what it means. You know, Maria might offer a solution. So copper, I don't know. I don't know what that said, but it unlocked the door. And now we can go through.
Yeah, it conducts electricity. Oh, here's a good one. Who is the door woman? I don't think it's anyone. I think it's an angel. Yeah, one is shiny. Oh, yeah, that's right. Copper. That's a good one. Ketahajime. Why is, uh, well, I would think brass would be shinier, but copper is really shiny, too. Copper is shiny and new, I guess. Lead is dull. You know, he's looking at a kind of a, a more a more positive future through Maria, which is what he's thinking at this point. You know, this is a manifestation of psyche, right? And at the point he is, at this point of the game, of his, or at this point of his uh, five stages of grief, he's starting to see, you know, a possible future, like a good positive. You know, I could, you know, I could probably be happy now. You know, things are getting better, maybe. And just like the person on the rooftop, right? Things started to get better before it got worse and they jumped off. <laughs> well, things feel like, you know, it's a manifestation of a psyche. Things that might be getting better before they're getting worse. So. That's usually, that's kind of what he had to go through with Mary for three years while she was sick. Things always got better before they got worse. They got better again. It was just a roller coaster, which is kind of what this game goes through. And why Maria dies. And he has to grieve again. And then she's back and he's hopeful. And then there's that promise of sex. <laughs> and then she dies. And then... Lots of emotions. Anyway, there's a note on the ground. The handwriting is hard to read. I took the director's key. The one to the museum. I hid it behind the praying woman when I went out for the day trip. I picked it up, but I did not steal it. I'm not a criminal. So, what is this? Denial! So, what's happening is, he's seeing the stages of Joseph's journey. You know, as he's descending into madness. Uh, he's seeing that. And Joseph wrote this. He's saying, I took it, but I'm, I'm not a thief. Well, if you took it without someone's permission, that makes you a thief. That's, I mean, that's why... Didn't your mama ever tell you anything? So I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, right, junkyard dog? <laughs> That's right. Let's go noggle. Did you ever play these Souls games? Of course, yeah. You may know me on YouTube from the Bloodborne lore series or Dark Souls lore. Um, I, I was... I, uh, actually, I'm more well known on YouTube for that, strangely enough. Um, I, I just passed the million views. On on a on a couple of videos, crazy, I know. Uh, they did so well even after the time. Uh, do they? Do you think there is things lost in translation? Both being Japanese, mistranslations are bound to happen. Not really, no. I don't think so. Not this game, no. And people try to say that, but I don't think so. I really don't. I think that they were. Uh, fluent enough in English that they kind of knew what they were doing. Why? Oh, why is the dialogue just so perfect? And I feel, I feel like, um, you know, they did have a translator who was Jeremy Blostein, which I also did a... Well, I didn't really do it. I, th I thought I did some interview with him, but I didn't. Anyway, Jeremy Blostein, uh, you know, he, he can be credited for a lot of this stuff, too. But they, they knew English pretty well, at least a few of them. A really skinoggle. So, so the most important thing about this is you're kind of seeing uh, a patient of Brookhaven Hospital who broke out, broke out, and stole a key. Broke out. Uh, you saw the descent in the madness. Someone who is a parallel to James. Someone who is uh, who is grieving. Who is um, someone who is in denial and someone who uh, obviously who lost someone. And feels like they're responsible for the death. Uh, but you also, this person kind of descended into delusional, uh, delusional state. Which you could say James is delusional too. Because like this stuff shouldn't be here. Maybe he's, it's all in his mind. So you're seeing that. And you're kind of seeing that it's always one step ahead of you. So it's like you're, you're taking the same steps as that person. You're following that same path. So, thank you. Hey, typical Ace97, thank you for the follow. Ooh. Oh, this, this hall. 
No, I don't like this staircase. And Skonagel, what? Thank you for the follow too. Um, but right, off topic, I've been playing the crap out of Dragon Quest. I never really got into Dragon Quest. And you're teasing me. I want to switch. How do I get a switch? They're sold out on Amazon. <laughs> and I can't really get any, any switch. I can't go anywhere else. Oh, by the way, we should save here. Because this is a good place to save right here with that that same perspective this part's great it's great because it's it's one of those uh downhill moments for him emotionally maria i don't know where we are maria <laughs> Offer me comfort. That's the girl's job. Um. Oh, you, you thought you followed me already. I'm scared. More scared than you were. I don't know where this leads. You look at the map. I don't have a map of this area. We're in uncharted territory. We're under the lake. We're under the lake, guys. Oh, my God. We're gonna head into Rapture. <laughs> Bioshock. What? Just got mine on Amazon. What? Look again. Did they get it in stock? Oh, thank you, notes. <laughs> well, too bad. I'm broke. All right, <laughs> moving forward. I'm gonna do this like this. What? Huh? Oh God, Jesus! Oh Jesus Christ, no! Oh God, no! Ah! 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 Oh, this is how you do it. Right here. I'll push this along. <laughs> oh, thanks, Spearman Head. Oh, you're giving us a ride. Oh, that's so nice of you. you... <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I didn't know Pyramid- Oh god! Jesus, he didn't want to help us, no. The Pyramid Head is not here to help. He's just, like, confused. <laughs> oh boy. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, this is taking a while. Can you teach it to wheel? <laughs> this needs to be a loop. Oh my god. <laughs> what is this? If this isn't highlighted, this is a clip. I don't know what. People don't know what entertainment is. <laughs> Thank you, uh, quesadilla. Oh, shit. Well, it's done. I'm over. It's over. Dead. <laughs> it didn't go on that long. All right, here we go. This, this is a really short scene. In reality, oh, why is my arm so close? <laughs> In reality, this is very short. Um, I'm going to do this again. Um, oh, my God. Lord runs drive one mad. This is my descent into madness. Oh, I should do the board. Quesadilla, good idea for sound command. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, it's we're almost there, Maria. How'd she die? I didn't even hear her die. 
All right, we're going back. <laughs> this is too much. Done. Okay, we're gonna run faster. <laughs> oh, jeez. But this scene is really so important. Let <laughs> the players sympathy with James's words. The players really want to save Maria. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Slow down. Oh my god. Is this gonna happen again? <laughs> <laughs> you get on the elevator, she's gonna die anyway. <laughs> Open up. She's gonna die anyway. Oh my god. Oh, that's why I hate this scene so much. I hate this goddamn scene. <laughs> well, laughter than tears. Wait, there's laughter and tears, now it's just tears. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't take the scene seriously now. It's not as impactful. Anyway. <clears throat> Hi, Miles Levitt, welcome. Yeah, it's very somber. So he just fell into a state of depression. Um, that's what you're experiencing now. He just fell right into depression. Um, he kind of was, you know, had that high moment. <laughs> um. <laughs> but I can't get over what just happened. It's too funny. It was worth it. Maria's life was not in vain. Let's see, um... All the doors are locked. There's only one door we can, we must go into. Um, <sighs> Rip Maria Raiketa Hajime. <laughs> um, and Maria could have had a good look at my spear, <laughs> but now she's dead. Um, and it's sad. Right now you're supposed to be sad. So feel it. Um, books about medicine, the town and the region are lined up here. I don't have the time to stand around reading all this. Okay then, fine. Whatever you say, James. So basically, um, yeah, this is the point of the game that kind of goes along with that five point, that five stages of grieving. The Kubler-Ross theory, um, which is just a theory, a game theory, and it's, you know, the five stages of grieving, well, it, it's ups and downs, like, it, it's like a cycle, too, that never ends, which is why Maria, is, it's not gonna be the last time she dies, especially when I have to take, escort her, um, Magdalene, yeah, Magdalene, um, and it stops playing here for some reason, but I'm gonna play it, uh, my version of the, of the song, I'm gonna play it. Because, uh, well, I like I like to play it whenever I get the chance. I'm um, going to my projects, my music. Oh, yes, it's really so important. Where is it? I don't know where to look for things. I got to organize. Here we go. This one right here is my remix of the same song. And since there's some music here, why not? It was made for the Silent Hill 2 movie at YouTube project I did. So, the depression is one of those stages, and he's he just hit it right now. And this part of the game really shook my heart deeply. Yeah. Shake people's heart deeply. Akai Sobo, you just missed up. The best part of this lore run. In fact, might be the worst, worst part of this lore run. Because it really changed the whole mood. But yes, hi, welcome. Did you see this fan-made Silent Hill 2 movie? I thought I did it. 
Oh my god. So, <laughs> are you talking about mine? Anyway. This, this part right here really talks a lot. Here's the thing. Uh, because, you know, he's... His psyche is kind of showing the ups and downs of what he had to go through with Mary. Here's the thing. He's starting to think about it. M Mary's death. Because he ha hasn't really thought about that. He said it earlier. He hasn't thought about it. What happened to Lisa and Senla Juan really messed me up. Really? I was talking about that. Lisa and Maria have a lot in common. Um, so now he's starting to think about it. And he's starting to question the events of everything. He's gotten to the point where he's like... He's starting to think about it. And that's important because, well... He needs to, to get better. And it does talk about it now. Like, the, these memos here are really well placed. And, uh... The most important thing in this game, besides the spiral writing key that's description, um, that, you know, the, the key that you pick up and use and you don't really get time to look at it, but there's an examination. There's an examine option on it. You go look at the key, and it says, Tis thou which leadeth thee to purgatory, which I knew was important in some way, I just couldn't understand it. But now I do. You know, you denial to that doubt. You, you deny something, you go around in circles like a spiral. Writing key. That's why it's a spiral. You, you, it's like going around in circles of purgatory. You never get better. You deny it. You don't get better. Which is kind of what Ernest was doing. It's what James is doing. He's not getting better because he's not accepting the truth. And this is one of the, the second most important memo in the game. Right here. Which is why I'm going to focus on it. Beautiful music, yes. All right. He who is not bold enough to be stared at from across the abyss is not bold enough to stare into it himself. Yes, if you're not brave enough to traverse the abyss, right? If you're not brave enough to take that step into the unknown, you're not brave enough, brave enough, uh... Okay, so... If you're not, <laughs> if you're not brave enough to be, uh, it's just saying, if you're not brave enough, hmm, to be scrutinized, yeah, that's what it's saying, if you're not brave enough to be, see, I haven't really, I haven't really analyzed this one yet, I know it's the second most important one, yet I have not really, I have not really analyzed it until now, so I, I think I'm starting to understand it, too, um, so if you're not if you're not brave enough, it, okay. So what it's saying is if you're not brave enough for to tell someone or for someone else to see the truth about you, to see your the truth, what you did, you know James did when he killed Mar Mary, he killed, he suffocated her. If 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 James is not brave in that enough. To, uh, to, uh, to let someone know what he did. For someone else, he's, he's afraid enough to tell someone else about what he did. Well, he's not brave enough to accept the truth of what he did. I guess. Something like that. But the next one is really important, too. The truth can only be learned by marching forward. Moving forward. So, yeah. You have to march forward through the abyss which is kind of uncharted territory and abyss, which is, you know, the the unknown. You have to venture into the unknown, which is what he does across Toluca Lake. There you go, you're witnessing it. He takes a boat across Toluca Lake into the unknown when he starts to question things the second time. When he takes another life and he really starts to question because he sees he has the power to take a human life. And then he's like, oh yeah, I might have done that before. Um, this time, you know, it's talking about how you must march forward through that figurative fog in the literal one later. Um, to get better, you have to be brave enough to be stared at from across the abyss. Um, interesting. Not brave enough to be, you know, for a spectator. Maybe, maybe even a stranger to even know about what you did. No consequence, right? Well, you're not brave enough to accept it yourself. 
Follow the map, there's a letter in the wrench. Nice. I can't wait to find out what, what that letter says. Maybe it's from Mary. Well, maybe that's what... Maybe it's from Mary. Maybe that's what they're trying to do here. It gives you that... Oh, a letter! Another letter! Mary writes a lot of letters. <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, she can, she can go on and on. I love those letters. I copied them onto my map. Got the hospital lobby key. And this... I don't know what you're talking about, ADM. Because, well, isn't like this whole thing imagined? <laughs> what, when does he? It's like, what What part is it he's imagining? Well, it's like this whole thing. Maybe it's not in his imagination, but it might as well be. So I don't know what you're talking about. Does he imagine it? Well, I guess you could think of it as that part of the game which is the labyrinth well it's basically he's taken a step into his own psychol in his own brain like imagine if your brain was manifested like the neurons and, and the connection synapses whatever it manifested into a whole area well what would it be you know that's what it is that's what it is right there yeah hi alexandra thank you for the host Silent Hill 2 is one of the most genius games. And, uh, mo more so directed to Shimona Virus, uh, comment. And what'd you look up, ADM? <laughs> I'm so confused by that. It's all a delusion. All of it. But, you know, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily a delusion because Silent Hill has the power to manifest one's psyche. So, you know, it is happening, like, to, for all intents and purposes. It's all, it's all happening, but here's the thing. A way he's seeing may not necessarily be what another person is seeing. And, uh, well, right here and right now, you know, it's a, you know, physical manifestation of his, of his mood right now. Right? He's, he's very moody. He's depressed as all hell. Well, I mean, he just witnessed some someone who looked a lot like his wife dying, and he had to think about that, that 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 grief again. He had to he had to really think about it. And the first three Silent Hill games are all genius, but this one, this one, is a is so genius when it comes to the psychology aspect. Um, Silent Hill Four would be pretty genius, I would say, but it's like a hidden genius that people don't really give much credit and don't think about. But this memo's good. So, you know, now he, he saw that death. He's it drudged up some bad memories that he don't like. And he don't feel good. And he, he's looking for something to make him feel better. He doesn't like this. You know, he needs a band-aid solution right now. So, you know, he's gonna take a step out. And remember when I said that the fog, I think, is a literal and figurative, like, you know, fog. Uh, but, you know, here's the thing. Metaphorical. Uh, it's the fog of his own mind. I feel like the fog is a representation of just how lost they are. In their own heads, they're lost. Wandering, trying to find that truth, trying to find that band-aid solution. And, well, now after this, he's starting to come to terms with everything. And now the fog is gone. Maria's dead. I couldn't protect her. And Laura has run off somewhere. Once again, I couldn't do anything to help. Mary, what should I do? Are you really waiting somewhere for me? I, or is this your way of taking? I'm going to find Mary. It's the only thing I have left to hope for. Or is this your way of taking TV overlay? <laughs> Take Or is this your way of taking He's starting to question 
Oh, is this your way of taking revenge? Why would he why would he be on that train of thought? He's on that train of thought because now he's like, oh sh yeah, that's right, I killed her. Oh crap. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. Well, that fog has lifted now. Yeah, that's right. They could do fog at night. They could do fog at night if they wanted to. No, they could do fog. But no, this part of the game, it's gone. It's gone. Where's the fog? I thought it was one of the most important things. The environments are too shown clearly too much. <laughs> too much too shown clearly. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Man, I thought he was saying this. The fog is really one of the most important. Things to show the environments clearly is not necessarily good way. Unless the it if it's the narrative. <laughs> uh, wait, no. <laughs> I didn't know what to do there. Unless it fits the narrative, in which case. Yeah, it's a good idea. But then again, the darkness obscures. The darkness is obscuring it. Yep. So, you know, the environment isn't shown clearly. <laughs> the darkness, but he's still in the dark. That's also a metaphorical thing, right? Now, James is more in the dark than ever. Like, he's kind of like... So, yeah, the states of the town are, are go along with the states of his psyche, which also fits... It fits with Silent Hill 1. Remember Alessa, her state, the state of her psyche? That's my lore run interpretation, anyway. Uh, I've, I've made that discovery. Uh, the state of the town goes along with her sleep cycle and the state of her psyche. Technical reasons? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. That is a, yeah, technical limitation, but I think a lot of people took that and ran with it too much. Like, the technical limitation thing, yeah. They wrote their narrative around it. So, that's, you know. I, I usually, I think, so what? <laughs> I think so what? Yeah, kill two stones, but I think they wrote their narrative around it like pfft. They're like hey, we have this limitation of pop-up and pop-up kills the immersion. Well, what do we do? We can mask it with fog Yeah, fog. Oh, there's a lot of great movies with fog. In oh, yeah, the mist I like that novel by Stephen King the novella. Oh, we could do something with that. Oh, the fog by John Carpenter you know, like, you know, opens up so many narrative possibilities. Oh, I hate fog, you know. You know, when you, you're kind of confused about something, it's like you have a fog in your mind. You know, Japanese, um, I guess culture is a little bit more poetic. But I have your